The Superior Court Clinton County line of judicial district is not in session. The Honorable Judge Scott McAfee. Fighting him forward. Now I'm going to Thank you all. Please be seated. Morning, Ms. Taylor. You good to go? All right. All right, we are on the record with 23 SC 188947. Defendant Roman's motion to dismiss and disqualify filed January 8th, adopted and supplemented by several co defendants. So, first, if we could have counsel for the record identify themselves, starting with the state, and then we'll go through the defendants in the listed order. So, good morning, Your Honor. I'm Anna Green Cross for the state. Morning, Judge Adam Abadi for the state. Morning, Your Honor. Andrew Evans for Nathan Wade. All right. And beginning with uh, from the order of on the notice, beginning with former President Trump. Morning, Your Honor. Steve Sadow and Jennifer Little for President Trump, and he waives his presence at the hearing. Thank you, Mr. Sadow. On behalf of Mr. Giuliani. Adam Stott for Mr. Giuliani. He waives his presence. Well, Mr. Meadows. Your Honor, Jim Durham on behalf of Mr. Meadows. All right. Thank you, Mr. Durham. On behalf of Mr. Clark. Harry McDougall, Your Honor. Mr. Clark waives his appearance at the hearing. And let me go back to Mr. Durham. Mr. Durham, does your client also waive his presence as well? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. Did I catch that from Mr. Giuliani? Okay. All right. On behalf of Mr. Chile. Richard Rice and Mr. President Lillitz and our client waives his presence. Thank, thank you. you. On behalf of Mr. Roman. Morning, Judge Ashley Merchant and John Merchant on behalf of Mr. Roman, and he waves his press. Mr. Schaefer. Good morning, Your Honor. Craig Gillen and Anthony Lake for Mr. Schaefer. Mr. Schaefer is present in court today. All right. And Mr. Floyd. Aaron McCullough on behalf of Mr. Floyd. And then we also have Ms. Latham. Good morning, Your Honor. William Cromwell for Ms. Latham. She waves her presence. And did we get that, Mr. McCullough, also as well for Mr. Floyd? Just making sure. Okay, thank you. Oh, Mr. Floyd is here. Okay, I see Mr. Floyd is present as well. All right. Uh, one more parent, Sandy Monroe, on behalf of the Fulton County District Attorney's Office. All right. Anyone else present who believes... They may need to be on the record or address any issue coming up in the proceeding. Seeing none. Judge, I'm here. Dave Banks. Um, I've been subpoenaed as a witness, but I also represent Christopher Campbell. Um, so. All right. Thank you, Mr. Banks. Ben will show for, for Terrence Bradley. We're under everybody in the All right. And, sir, could we have you spell your name for the record? M-B-I-M-A-L, last name C-H-O-P-R-A. All right, in terms of just a little housekeeping in terms of presenting the evidence uh, this morning, uh, my th thought was, as witnesses are called, this being uh, Mr. Roman's motion, that mm, counsel for Mr. Roman would be the first, and any witness that they call... Uh, then in order of the list of defendants, uh, there would be the opportunity for additional direct or cross-examination, however you want to characterize it, and then the state on the tail end of that. So uh, with that, I will turn it over to Ms. Merchant. Is there anything that we would need to take up before calling the first witness? Judge, we would invoke the rule of sequestration. All right. So to that end, pursuant to Rule 615, I would ask that any witnesses subpoenaed or expected to testify at the hearing today that they should remain outside the courtroom until called, and that they shouldn't discuss their testimony with any other witness or watch any kind of live proceeding or recording of the testimony until the evidence is, excluded, uh, is concluded or they're excused from uh, being called today. Are there any exceptions to this rule? None from the state. Any from the defense? No, thank you, Judge. Okay, Mr. Abadi. Yes, Your Honor. And uh, prior to starting uh, any testimony, um, the state would just like to address, um, I guess, some housekeeping matters, some issues with the court as it relates to what was represented um, during the previous hearing uh, as it relates to uh, 
witness testimony, uh, specifically the testimony of the uh, former uh, law partner of uh, Nathan Wade, uh, that would be Mr. Terrence Bradley, and what uh, or what the state would like uh, the court to understand and realize that is that in preparation for this hearing um, in speaking to witnesses uh, in uh, doing the additional research as relates to the comments that were uh, represented by a uh, counsel, specifically uh, counsel for uh, Mr. Roman, uh, Ms. Merchant, that uh, we've been able to determine that the claims that the defendant has asserted and did assert and during the last hearing on Monday are not only legally meritless, but are factually unsupported um, by the statements that Ms. Uh, Merchant made to the court. Um, what I would say are they're patently false. Um, they are uh, egregious misrepresentations of uh, what is uh, believed that Mr. Bradley would say or even knows. Um, what I would uh, bring to the court's attention in my speaking with uh, the defense counsel for uh, Mr. Bradley, um, Mr. Chopra, is that um, anything that he, any knowledge of anything he would have would be protected under the attorney-client privilege. Um, he would assert that. Um, and that privilege has not been waived uh, by Mr. Wade. More importantly, the representation was made to the court that Ms. Merchant spoke to Mr. Bradley and that Mr. Bradley represented that he had firsthand knowledge from speaking to the several witnesses um, that he would be able to impeach with the statements she represented, um, that there was a relationship prior to um, Mr. Wade being appointed um, special prosecutor and that um, there was issues with cohabitation that he would be able to directly impeach um, those witnesses. That is patently false. And speaking with Mr. Chopra, um, those are misrepresentations that are not true. They are um, for the purpose of harassment and undue burden uh, to the district attorney. And we'd ask to renew our motion to quash. And uh, the only hearing we should be having to the hearing as it relates to sanctions for um, the defense counsel's lack of candor that's required by not only statutory law, the professional rules of responsibility and case law. And we uh, ask that we move into a hearing that re it, that is related to the sanctions due to the misrepresentation and flagrant um, falsehoods that have been spread throughout the world um, in, in an effort to affect this case and to keep it from moving forward. Um, with that, Your Honor, um, that's our request. So just small matter of housekeeping. Yes. All right. <laughs> Ms. Merchant. Um, Judge, at first, the witnesses haven't been sequestered, so I just ask that they be sequestered before we argue this or have any more argument. I know Mr. Wade is still here, um, so we just ask that he leave since he is under subpoena. Um, that let's let's start there, Mr. Body. Well, I, I would agree. When testimony starts, that the rules of secret rules of sequestration um, would require Mr. Wade to leave. But that we haven't started testimony. This is argument. He's lead counsel for the case, and he has every right. Uh, to be sitting at the table. Okay, Ms. Merchant. Let's hear from some witnesses, Judge. Let's actually hear some sworn testimony under oath. Um, I have made proffers, and it just seems like all we're going to get is objection after objection because the state clearly does not want any witnesses to take the stand, doesn't want the truth to come out in front of this court. This is a very important issue, and we need to have witnesses. I have a good faith basis. You will learn I have a good faith basis. And Mr. Bradley is not my only witness to this good faith basis. It is just happens to be the evidence I proffered at the hearing when the state first tried to keep all of the other witnesses off the stand. I was forced to proffer certain testimony to get over the hurdle to um, refute their motions to quash. I did that. I used Mr. Bradley's testimony to do that. He is not the only witness that can state there was a relationship prior to Mr. Wade being hired. Um, the first witness that I'd like to call is Robin Geerty, not Mr. Bradley, no privilege issues. Let's start with her. Your Honor, we have um, additional argument or matter to be brought up. If we want to do it like I just stand up and, and with relation to what's just been said by Mr. Abate, or are you only hearing from this merchant at this point? I just need to know the court's protocol on that. Sure. So I think at, at this point, we just need to take these issues one at a time. And as you've joined the motion, I think defense counsel would have the opportunity to weigh in. But at, again, at, at any point, if uh, I'm just hearing the same thing over and over again from each separate defense counsel, I'm going to reserve the right to say thank you. 
I, I appreciate that. Right. I only ask for the opportunity to be heard on the invocation of the attorney client privilege and the burden being on the uh, individual raising the privilege to prove that a privilege, in fact, was in existence before we get to simply look at the claim. That's what I asked the question. Sure, understood. So, Ms. Merchant, I do want to put it back to you, though. The uh, issue raised by the state this morning is that the essentially, as I would summarize it, the good faith basis that you did put forward on Monday um, did not exist, right? So why wouldn't we start with Mr. Bradley and see where we go from there? The good faith basis does exist. So you basically have them saying it's not true and me saying it's not true. So we both, they think they have a good faith basis. I think I have a good faith basis. I have a huge good faith basis for everything that I put in every single motion. Um, that's going to come out. The reason I don't want to call Mr. Bradley first is for hearsay objections, quite frankly. Um, oh, yeah. And, you know, normally we don't have to disclose how we're going to present evidence. Um, I'm okay doing that here. But based on the rules of evidence, hearsay, and privilege issues, what makes the most sense, and we've spent a lot of time thinking about this, which makes the most sense is for us to have Ms. Yearty testify. And if you want me to proffer what I anticipate she's going to say, I talked to her last night. She's going to say that there was a personal relationship that began in October of 2019. She's going to testify to that. And she has personal direct knowledge of that. It's not hearsay and it's not privilege. She's going to take the stand. She's terrified, but she's going to take the stand and tell the truth. And then I plan on calling Mr. Wade because at that point I can overcome their motion to quash and bring Mr. Wade, bring him to come. Then I can go through privilege issues with him and then I can have Mr. Bradley testify and we won't have to have an objection to every single question I ask Mr. Bradley, an objection to hearsay, an objection to privilege. So that's how I plan on presenting the evidence because it makes the most sense. And I think I'll be able to overcome any privilege objections. But we can talk about that when Mr. Wade takes a stand. All right. Mr. Avati, uh, any last words on starting with Ms. Yurdy and going from there, taking it a witness at a time? I mean, uh, no, but my I guess my final response would be that, as Your Honor pointed out, during the last hearing, Ms. Um, Merchant's entire representation uh, for good faith was all solely based on uh, Mr. Bradley. In fact, I remember the court saying that the star witness presented or provided by the defense is Mr. <laughs> Bradley, and you asked the specific question, Ms. Merchant, will Mr. Bradley, does he have firsthand knowledge from these people, each one of them, you named the lawyers plus the investigators, as it relates to the claims uh, that were made? And her answer was yes. I can definitively tell you the answer is no. And Ms. Merchant has not spoken to Mr. Bradley, according to his counsel, B.C. Chopra, who is you know, outside and can represent to the court the things that I've represented. And he has maintained and represented that everything that she plans to go into or ask is protected by attorney-client privilege. And the only point of this process and this procedure um, as it relates to uh, the motions that were filed is to create a spectacle and to create harassment to the district attorney of Fulton County. And we'd request that the only hearing we move forward is the sanctions for counsel's lack of duty of candor to the court and to uh, counsel. All right. Well, I think you certainly put her on notice if that is actually the case. But at this point, I have someone saying yes, and I have another person saying no. And so I think that conflict in the evidence that we noted on Monday is still exists, and that's where we are. And we'll see what uh, how the evidence presents itself. So with that... Ms. Merchant, are you ready to call your first witness? All right. We call Ms. Yearty, and I know Mr. Partridge had emailed the court, and I actually quite frankly couldn't keep up um, about a Zoom, so I don't know if she's on Zoom or in person. She's under subpoena to be here at 930, so she may be on Zoom. I'm not really sure. Ms. Partridge, or, uh, sorry, Mr. Partridge was joining us by Zoom, but Ms. Yearty is here in person, right? Mr. Partridge, I believe, represented that his client would be more comfortable if he were here in person, and that due to his conflict in Richmond County this morning, couldn't occur until this afternoon. I think that is a reasonable request, but not the state's business. Um, the witness is here. If her, if her attorney is able to join right now, um, perhaps that can be something that is addressed with Mr. Partridge in the court. But uh, I want to alert the court that that was the representation that the witness would prefer not to go forward without her client present. And that's certainly a reasonable request. Sure. I think the latest I'd seen, though, that was that Mr. Parcher was going to be able to join by Zoom. Okay. 
Right. I didn't, I didn't know that he had recognized that <laughs> Mr. Partridge had um, affirmed that, but perhaps that was a email this morning that um, I missed. Yeah, I, um, I don't know either, um, but the state seems to know that Ms. Yerdy is here, so I guess she's not appearing right now. Is Mr. Partridge here? We'll find out. Yes. All right, so just for everyone's information, uh, we did convey the Zoom link to Mr. Partridge this morning. Uh, I think the last exchange we'd had is that he can join us by Zoom and apparently is elected not to do so. So I don't really know what else we can do with that. He was noticed of the hearing, we provided him a link and we haven't heard from him at all. So I think we need to go forward. All right. Your Honor, before we go forward, we have uh, business documents that were certified and filed yesterday evening. Uh, sorry, filed this morning, emailed to opposing counsel yesterday evening. We wanted to make sure that this was part of the record before any testimony was taken before the proceeding. Uh, the proceeding commenced this morning. All right. And so in your mind, this satisfies Fulton County's uh, subpoena in this case? Okay. If you could you can hand that to Ms. Merchant and... We'll take it from there. Okay, and I don't know. I need a review page just to submit it. I have an original for the court. Uh, Ms. Monroe, uh, if you could just provide it to Ms. Merchant, and if you could just stay on call, we'll let you know if we need you again, okay? Hello. All right. Will we bring in Ms. Yurdy? I didn't say she's Oh, I'm sorry. I thought the state said that Ms. Yearty was outside or they'd seen her or something. So um, may John Merchant step out, please. Okay. She's under subpoena to be here at 9 Thanks. May I text her lawyer? Yeah. yeah, and just one of them? Yes. And then name? Okay. 
What's that? Yeah. Z O. Try to call Mr. Partridge, Judge, and that went straight to voicemail, and he messaged and said he was taking a plea in Richmond County. All right. Did he say where his client is? All right. And this is the, uh, was this a former or current employee of the DA's yeah. office? Okay. And her return's been filed. She's just looking at I know that she did not want to come without her lawyer here, but I said, I instructed them that she was still under subpoena. Yeah. All right. Well, Ms. Merchant, do you have any other witnesses available? Well, we have Mr. Bradley. Um, we can have him testify. Um, but again, we're probably going to have a lot of objections with um, privilege. And so I'd much rather call this hearing first. But I know that Mr. Partridge threw a wrinkle in that this morning by having a conflict that nobody's going to tell. Sure. So. But I can put, I, what I could do is I could call Mr. Bradley and then I can bring him back. Exactly. I think you can always, you can always recall him. We can ping pong back and forth if we need to based on uh, hearsay issues. But at least we can use this time until Mr. Partridge chooses to join us. Is he on the Zoom by chance? Um, or not Mr. Partridge or Miss or um, Miss Yuri on the Zoom? No, not that we're aware of. No, okay. Just wanted to check because I don't. All right. So I suppose call your next witness then. All right. We call Terrence Bradley to stand. If um if we don't hear and I, I don't want to have the sheriff go pick anybody up or anything like that, but if we don't hear from um Mr. Partridge within an hour or so, um we may need to Miss Yerdy. Understood. Thank you. Thinking uh, is someone getting Mr. Bradley in? Yes, right. I believe. So. I believe so. That's what I'm saying. Oh, the sheriff's didn't go. Up. Okay, sorry. Normally, I'm sorry. Are the sheriffs? In, when I call a witness, will the sheriffs not sound for them? Uh, I don't know if they're going to know where they are. So I think it'd be best if maybe someone from your team, and they're not going to know what they look like either. Not a problem. Sure. Right. He's outside. Yeah. I'm <laughs> <laughs> He's coming, Judge. Thank <laughs> you. 
I do. Terrence Bradley, T E R R E N C E Bradley, B R A D L E Y. Your Honor, as Mr. Wade's counsel, before we start, we have a question from the chambers to talk about a 35 privilege to call the Why does that need to be in camera? Um, does it necessarily be, well, there's statements that could be made. It could be prejudicial, sure. uh, whether they were covered or not, whether he's going to break the... So at the time a question is asked that you think implicates some of those statements, object, and we'll handle it. Ms. Thank Merchant. you, Judge. Thank On behalf of Mr. Bradley, and I apologize, this is not our proceeding, but it might be helpful to have a brief sidebar as opposed to something in chambers, at least so that we could let the court know our position <laughs> rather than having to restate it repeatedly. And Judge, I've carefully crafted my questions to avoid any privileged information. Um, but if they think that I'm invading that, then I welcome an objection and I'm happy to address it. Let's see how it goes. And again, Mr. Bradley, I'll ask if you can just give a pause in between each question to allow counsel the opportunity to object before answering. Thank you, Judge. Did, was the witness sworn or do I need to persuade the witness? I believe he was. Great. Thank you. I'm sorry. Good morning, Mr. Bradley. How are you? Good morning. Um, not happy to be here, I'm assuming. I am not. Okay, I understand. Thank you for being here. Um, Wasn't by choice. <laughs> right. Um, so you were subpoenaed to come and testify in this case. I was. Okay. And But you and I have spoken previously about um, relevant facts surrounding um, Mr. Wade and as well as his relationship. No, we have not. We have not. We have not texted about those facts? Through a third party, um, you were giving some information, you and I shared text. Our text were more so about my health, um, more so about um, <coughs> if I was okay with what was going on, um, that I would not be, um, whether or not I was gonna be subpoenaed or not, and that, um, Emphatically, I would not have been sitting in this position as being called as a witness. So that's what my text chain show. Um, so no. That we've never talked about um, Willis and Wade having a relationship. Not directly you and I, no. We talked about my health. Okay. We talked about... Um, as I stated before, um, other things, but not this, no. Okay. Um, did you text me about um, Wade and Willis taking many trips together? 
I'm not, I'm gonna, I object. Well, Brown, so. there's been an objection. One, I'm going to object as it relates to attorney client privilege. Two, I'm going to object because I haven't seen the text message that she's attempting to impeach uh, the witness with. Uh, and two, he has made all of his representations is that he's had zero communications as it relates to the issues that um, Ms. Merchant continues to ask about and that the only information that she has from him is through a third party, which would be hearsay. Ms. Merchant? Um, judge, it's not hearsay. Um, we've had these conversations. If I need to take the stand, I will. Um, if I need to put my phone into evidence, I will. So the first objection was to uh, privilege on behalf of the state. Oh, I'm sorry. I did not respond to sure. that. Thank you, Judge. Um, privilege is only communications that are made in furtherance of legal advice. There's been no showing that whether or not they took a trip to California or took a trip or that Mr. Bradley and I talked about that, um, either in person or by text, that that's privileged. That's not, I'm not asking for any communications that Mr. Wade might have made to Mr. Bradley in furtherance of any legal advice. All right. And Mr. Abadi, uh, I believe as the one asserting privilege, it would be your burden to show the necessary foundation there. Is that something you want to avoid here, the witness on or take up here on this specific question? Well, no, I'd also object to foundation grounds. She has not um, provided any foundation that he would have any knowledge of what she's uh, requesting he answered. His answers were he had no knowledge. And now she's she hasn't laid the foundation in order to continue to ask the same question over and over. Miss Merchant. Judge, on behalf of Mr. Bradley, we do object. This falls under the privileges afforded under 1.6 of the rules. And the attorney client privilege is not something that Mr. Bradley can waive. Only Mr. Wade can waive it, regardless of any information or communications being proffered by the client. Mr. Wade would have to waive them in order for Mr. Bradley to continue to testify about any of this relationship until it's been established when that privilege should have begun. Sure. And so far, though, I haven't heard anything about a relationship, about an attorney-client relationship, about a privilege ever attaching. And I think that's going to need to be established before we can actually determine the scope of it and whether this falls inside or out of it. So I think either Ms. Merchant can take the lead if she wants to, but uh, my understanding was that generally has to fall on the person who's asserting the privilege. Except for the attorney is not authorized to violate that privilege or else he has in fact violated the bar rules which we have an opinion regarding uh, from someone in the state bar of georgia all right that's why i thought perhaps the sidebar might be important rather than my interjecting well i still want to kind of see how we can go so miss merchant uh it sounds like you're going to need to lay a little bit lay a little bit more foundation to see whether this actually is uh is going to fall under privilege or not that's, that's not a problem, Judge. And, and what I can do, um, I was just told that Ms. Yerdy's in the waiting room, um, but I can, um, if the state wants to read my text, if Mr. Bradley wants to read them to refresh his memory, I have absolutely no problem with that. Um, I have my phone here and they're welcome to do that. But I'll, I'll talk about some other things and then maybe um, if they're going to have a lot of objections to privilege and hearsay, what I can do is I can lay a foundation with Mr. Bradley, get him off the stand, put Ms. Yerdy up, um, and then Mr. Wade so we can get through the privilege issues. That might make the most sense. Thank you. Um, all right. Let's talk about something not controversial then. When did you and Mr. Wade first meet? Um, probably 1998. Okay. And um, did you all have a firm, a law firm together? We did. Okay. When did that firm start? Um, probably, I think it was 2010. We started um, exclusively working together as a firm, operating as a firm. Okay. And were you all actually incorporated as a firm? Uh, not initially, no. Uh, he had, um, I, when I um, passed the bar and I hung the shingle in 07, um, I think he had been practicing um, a few years prior to that. He had his own firm. We had two separate firms. Okay. At some point, did you all incorporate, though, together? We did. Okay. Do you remember about when that was? Um. I do not at this particular moment, no, ma'am. I'm sorry. Okay. Um, do you remember if it was administratively dissolved? I've been made aware that it's been administratively dissolved. Yes, I left the firm around two years ago. When did you leave the firm? Um, August of 2022, I think it was. August of 2022. Okay. Or it was either August or September of 2022. Okay. August, September. Let me make a note. So at... Um, 
in October 2019, were you all incorporated as a firm? I think we were, maybe. Okay. Yes. And when Mr. Wade filed for divorce November 1st or 2nd, um, 2021, were you all incorporated as a firm? We should have been. Uh, I'm thinking that we we were. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, when did Mr. Wade come to you to file the divorce action in Cobb County? Your Honor, I'm, that's, that's privileged information. The, 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 the timing and the beginning of the privilege, I don't believe that is uh, overruled. So the timing was around 2018. Okay. Um, and it was probably December of 20, uh, 2018. I remember it specifically because I was building a house um, and I noticed that he wasn't wearing his ring. I asked him about it. I had invited him to the house because I was having a, not a housewarming, but people over. Uh, and he wasn't wearing his ring. I inquired about it. From there, we discussed um, what would happen. Um, and we discussed the divorce and what would happen. What would happen with the divorce? What would happen over over to me representing him for the divorce and when when he would want to do it, yes. When did he retain you? Well, um, my memory would be 2018 okay. when he um, <coughs> consulted with me about the divorce and told me what he would like to see done and when he wanted to do it. Okay. Um, do you know when Fonnie Willis and Nathan Wade met? Specific dates, no. Um, I know it was sometime at a conference. Um, Municipal court conference? Correct. Okay. Um, and um, October 2019, um, if, if it's been represented in, in the state's pleadings before, that that's when they met. Does that sound familiar? If that's, if that's what they're saying, then absolutely. I know it was at a conference in 2000. I mean, it was at a conference. I don't, to the, if you say it's 2019, I'll take you at your work. Okay. So it was at, a, you, what you're sure of though, is it was at a municipal courts judges conference. Yes. When they were both municipal court judges. Yes. Okay. So it's fair to say since she became the district attorney, she was no longer a municipal court judge. So it had to have been before that. That they met? Yes. Yes. And um, he was teaching a class at that seminar, as far as you know. I'm going to object as to leading at this point. She has him on direct. Was he teaching a class at this seminar? To my knowledge, he was. And was Miss Willis, to your knowledge, attending this seminar? Your Honor, I'm going to object. He has no personal knowledge. He wasn't present at the, at the, at the municipal court training. But they put it in their pleadings. Like, we are going to be here all day. Um, <laughs> we are going to be here all day. All right. Uh, if you can establish that he would have some personal knowledge, then, then that's a fair question. So if you just need to preface it with that, then that's fine. Thank you. Um, are you aware of when their uh, romantic relationship began? Your Honor, I'm going to object. That relates to privilege. He says that he began rep representing uh, Mr. Wade in 2018. He met Ms. Willis in 2019. That's clearly within the bounds of attorney-client privilege. I think there's a, I a understood, Mr. Abadi. So I think, Ms. Merchant, you need to qualify that. Uh, question. Um, thank you. I'm not asking you to tell me what Nathan Wade told you in furtherance of legal advice. Okay. So I want to be very clear. If he told you something asking you legal advice, I'm not asking you about that. I'm asking about what you observed, what you saw and what you knew outside of what he told you when he was specifically seeking legal advice. Okay. This is too far afield. I apologize. I'll not object again on behalf of Mr. Bradley. He's asserting that there is an attorney client privilege associated with this case under rule 1.6 for him to draw any inference, make any statements or any other proffer of information after this relationship began between attorney and client December of 2018 would be improper, and he would, in fact, be violating the rules of ethics as they with the bar license. So the way the question was phrased was just saying, what did he personally observe outside of the relationship, not involving communications? How does that fall within attorney-client privilege? Whether we like it or not, when we have a client, there are a number of items associated with that relationship 
between attorney and client that come within your purview and that leads you to further action, leads you to further investigation, further questions, develops your strategy. We can't talk about Mr. Wade on any level. It would be inappropriate. The divorce was filed sometime thereafter. During that entire interlude, any of these issues could, in fact, have formed the basis for their relationship to remain privileged. Ms. Merchant. Judge, his observations are not privileged. That's not what the privilege law says. And I can I can read you the attorney privilege, attorney client privilege attaches where? And this is the law, this is the rule. There's an attorney client relationship. The communications in question relate to the matters on which legal advice was sought. And the communications have been maintained in confidence, and there's no exceptions to the privilege. First, on number two, the second prong. This was not in furtherance of legal advice. That's not in furtherance of legal advice. What he witnesses as a human being is not in furtherance of, of legal advice. Unless, I mean, and, and if he witnesses them together, it would get rid of the attorney-client privilege because Ms. Willis is there. Um, additionally, though, exceptions. We can go all day about exceptions to this. Fraud to the court, that's an exception. Mr. Wade, we contend, has filed a false affidavit with this court. That is fraud to the court. If this witness has direct knowledge that that is not true, then that's an exception to attorney-client privilege. All right. Um, Ms. Merchant, if you could re-ask that question, again, qualifying it as, if it's, I think you qualified it as anything that, outside of anything he learned or was told as a result of his representation. It was just any observations he made, which, in my mind, as you phrased the question, would have included before December 2018 when this first consultation occurred. Uh, I, th I think if you can go step by step, uh, we can handle this. And, and Judge, I would just ask permission. Um, we gave the state notice under 611 that all of these witnesses do not want to be here. They are adverse witnesses. I understand. Yes. Th so I'd like to have Lee Wayne to be able to cross them. Thank you, Judge. Um, all right. Mr. Bradley. Yes, ma'am. In... Um, do you have knowledge that their relationship began in 2019? I do not have knowledge, but again, I have consulted uh, with the bar um, as late as yesterday at four o'clock. Um, I am not here to... Your testimony is that you do not have independent knowledge. I, I cannot, I was advised by the bar that rule 1.6 of confidentiality applies and that I cannot reveal anything that I saw or learned. And that if the court is asking me to do that, that an immediate certificate of review should be asked. And so I'm not here to um, misrepresent to the court or to say anything inappropriate or, or anything. I am here because I also have a law license. And I'm not trying to lose that. And so, Mr. Bradley, can you finish that thought? As saw or learned, just period, without qualification whatsoever? Judge, I'm going to refer to what I was told by the bar, that Rule 1.6 of confidentiality applies, and that I would be asking for an immediate review by the Supreme Court. Sure, but applies to what? Any communications is what the person at the bar told us. Any communications? So, he, like he did, he did not qualify. If you talk to Mr. Wade, that's covered. Well, Judge, I, I don't know. Um, he didn't go into those specifics, um, but this is what was told. I was sitting there uh, with my attorneys, and this was what was told to us rule, to state that Rule One Point Six applies, um, and we gave them the scenario. And this is what they told us to do. And this is what I'm doing at this particular point. Judge, and we have no knowledge if the bar was aware of the affidavit that Mr. Wade filed, um, but that significantly changes the privilege. Um, he waived the privilege when he put that in the affidavit. So that's one of the reasons I wanted to call him. That's a waiver. He put the relationship in the, in the um, when the relationship started and put the relationship in his affidavit. He put a lot of information in that affidavit that would waive certain amounts of privilege. So he disclosed this relationship. So basically what we've got is we've got Mr. Wade being able to say what he wants about this relationship, but then we're not allowed to ask questions to qualify that. Um, so that's that's not how it works. They either get to, to admit it 
or they don't. It's either privileged or it's not. We're just talking about a relationship, though. How does that open the floodgates to anything he's ever told an attorney during representation? It, it doesn't, and I'm not asking him that. I'm asking for his knowledge. They were law partners, and as, as I go through the questions, I think he has knowledge of things that is not something that Mr. Wade specifically told him. I also think there's a fraud exception to a lot of this, even if there was a privilege, but I don't think there was for most of it. Your Honor, but he's already represented that he has no knowledge about that. I don't think we've actually gotten anything to that extent yet. Uh, I think we're still <laughs> making our way through it, which is uh, I think he's taking the position that he's not willing to share anything Mr. Wade ever told him, period which that's a, a broader representation of attorney-client privilege than I've ever heard. And uh, I think that's what we're trying to parse out is if there's a, if the relationship starts, I've never heard anything that said everything before that point is privileged. Do you have something that I should know? Yes, sir. That's fine. These questions aren't being established. It was 2018, December. The last question was directly related to a point in time after that during which the relationship between the client would have been already established. He has a, an opinion from the state bar of Georgia. If he's going to be required to testify, we need to be ordered by the court on any of these issues. And judge, I understand how delicate this is. You can phrase it in a thousand different ways to try to make him say something, but you can't unring a bell that he puts out into the universe where he has violated that privilege. We're, we're going to get to go back six months from now and say, oh, well, we shouldn't have said that. <clears throat> it, it's not acceptable. It violates hundreds of thousands of relationships in this state that we rely on in order for the justice system to function. This is an attorney-client privilege issue. We've done all the diligence we can as far as looking up the relevant laws, the relevant information. We do not have a waiver from the client. The, the client is present. Whatever. Uh, there's there's no question I, I, why we're not barreling ahead is because I recognize the privilege. What uh, what we have to determine is actually what that privilege, the scope of it, and when it started. And I don't think we've even gotten close to that yet. I apologize, Judge. I thought December 2018, Mr. Bradley testified directly that that is when the retainer and the divorce proceedings were beginning. The issues being brought up by the state have to do potentially if I've been. So we have we have a starting point, right. uh, but does that necessarily uh, foreclose anything from that point onward? If they started talking about something else entirely, post divorce, of course not, Your Honor. But during the pendency, it would absolutely curtail that, especially as it has to do with observations, attendance at um, functions together, or other realizations that Mr. Bradley came into during the tendency of his representation. And to parse, it, to parse it out would put Mr. Bradley in an untenable position because his reputation means everything. Okay, Mr. Sado. John, I think we're talking about two aspects of <coughs> arguably the attorney-client privilege. There's the attorney-client privilege, which is controlled by case law and statute which deals with communications and purpose. I don't hear that being the objection. The objection is that there are confidential matters under 1.6, which in some form or fashion mean that once you start a relationship with an attorney-client, that everything from that point on is confidential between the two of them. There's no such case law in Georgia that deals with confidential information of that time. Attorney-client, yes, confidential information, no. And I believe what's being argued by counsel for Mr. Bradley is that he has received, of course, we don't have anything in writing, but we, he's received some oral advice that under 1.6, confidential matters cannot be gone into, which is, according to them, everything that occurs between Mr. Bradley and Mr. Wade from 2018 forward. There's no such law that protects such confidences, only communications made in earnest. And if I'm mistaken, I apologize. But I think what we're being told is I don't have to say anything at all about Mr. Wade once I have an attorney client relationship with him because it would be deemed confidential. And if it's deemed confidential, I can't talk about it. And there's no such case law to that effect in Georgia. There is no bar rule to that effect. 
The only thing the court has to do is say, are we talking about attorney-client privilege or pure confidences or confidential information? And once you decide it's confidential information, you order uh, Mr. Bradley to testify, and then it's up to his counsel to decide whether he wants to have his client held in contempt after you've ordered him to testify. And Judge, yes, that's you, an overstatement. We have not said that he can't testify to anything. The specific question on the table is what observations do you have from Mr. Wade and Ms. Willis from that point on? Now, they, the defense and their teams, have made an allegation of some impropriety. That same impropriety could be related to a divorce proceeding on every level. We're not here to say we're not talking we're here to say we're not talking about things that came into his knowledge associated with his representation during the divorce. I realize there's an evidentiary standard. And then I realize that there's the cornerstone of what we do, which is the bar rules, the state bar rule 1.6. We violate that and the whole thing comes tumbling down. We're not saying that you can't ask about, did Mr. Wade enjoy a beer at a ball game? That wasn't the question. The question was specifically relating to some impropriety that they are trying to dig into. That is privileged information. And more importantly, Mr. Wick, uh, Mr. Bradley has said twice now that he has no independent knowledge as it relates to what she's referencing. She, he has said it two times. So uh, there's not a good faith basis for her to continue to probe into this area because he said he has no independent knowledge outside of the attorney-client privilege. All right, Ms. Merchant, last word. Yes, Judge. Um, Judge, Mr. Bradley, if ordered he's here by subpoena if ordered to testify he it's, it's not a issue with the bar um my question was not about attorney client privilege i'm being very careful not to ask anything that mr wade asked in furtherance but i've been informed that robin yardy is on the zoom and so if we want to start back on our original plan we can call miss yardy and have her testify and then put mr wade up and we can go through the privilege issue with him and then we won't have to have all these objections or else i'm, I'm happy to continue questioning Mr. Bradley. All right. So, Mr. Mer Ms. Merchant, you're saying that uh, your understanding of the evidence that you plan to present that these issues are affected by Ms. Yurdy in terms of the scope of the privilege and the relationship? No. I think, uh, no, let me, thank you for letting me clarify that. I think that Ms. Yurdy is going to give me enough to get Mr. Wade on the stand. Once I get Mr. Wade on the stand, because they filed a motion to quash, and you said I had to present something before I can put Mr. Wade on the stand. So once I present Ms. Yurdy, I can put Mr. Wade up on the stand. And then I can put him up before I call Mr. Bradley. And then I may not even have to call <coughs> Mr. Bradley at that point. All right. Uh, sorry, who's I'm on, I'm on Zoom, Your Honor. Attorney okay. Durante Parsha, Judge, uh, on behalf of Ms. Yurdy. Your Honor, when we were here for the motion to quash earlier this week, it's my understanding, as represented by defense counsel, that Mr. Bradley's testimony is, uh, so to speak, the bridge that was built to involve my client, uh, Ms. Yardy, into this, this matter altogether. Now it seems as though that is being usurped. And now she is being the, quote unquote, foundation for defense counsel's uh, presentation this morning. So we do object to that judge and would renew our motion to quash the subpoena because this is completely contradictory to what we uh, had via the hearing earlier this week, Your Honor. Judge, may I respond? It's okay, Ms. Merchant. Okay. Um, Mr. Partridge, as I recall, that did not apply to your client as much. The uh, original motion to quash that you filed said she had absolutely no knowledge about anything. What Ms. Merchant proffered, and what I didn't hear you saying was not the case, is that at some point Ms. Yurdy lived in a residence and shared a residence with Ms. Willis and potentially Mr. Wade at some point. So I think she's directly involved in the center of this. I don't think that really needs much in the way of foundation. Um, and, and Judge, so. I apologize, Your Honor, to, to talk over the court. That, that information, however, Your Honor, is my understanding came from Mr. Bradley, and that information was incorrect, as I informed the court early this week as well. There was never any time that Ms. Yardy and Ms. Willis lived together. Uh, there was a sublet of a condo that Ms. Willis resided in that had absolutely nothing to do with that of Ms. Yardy outside of Ms. Yardy subletting it to Ms. Willis. Ms. Yardy actually moved into a different residence uh, per our conversation with Ms. Merchant yesterday, 
that that is exactly what it is. So there was no overlapping or any time that they stayed together, nor does Miss Yardy have any information as it relates to Mr. Wade staying at that condo as well with that of, of Miss Willis. So again, Judge, I, I'm renewing. Okay, no, but don't need to hear it again. Miss Merchant. Judge, luckily I don't have to tell the state or them everything that I plan on introducing a witness for in response to their motion to quash. She has a lot of personal knowledge and when we had a motion to quash, I had to get over a good faith basis, and I presented that to the court. I did not spend four hours going through everything that this woman's going to testify to. She has personal knowledge. Is she actually here? I think she's on Zoom. It's what I understand, Mr. Partridge. Mr. Partridge, is your client with us? She's, she's on the Zoom platform, Your Honor, since I'm in Richmond County on, uh, via my conflict. But she is on the Zoom platform at this time, Your Honor, in the waiting room. I believe she may have been admitted. I see a Robin on my screen. I'm assuming that that is my my client. Michelle. All right, and Miss Merchant, you want to examine her by Zoom? That's fine. All right. We will waive Mr. any Abadi. Sixth Amendment objections to sure. her. That's fine. My only objection would be was the representation at Monday's hearing was the good faith basis was based on what uh, she learned from Terrence Bradley, and we know that is false. It's not true. So there is no good faith basis, and we would renew our objection and to quash the subpoena. That was not in regards to Ms. Yurdy. It certainly was. I, I, it was at like the 20-minute mark in the hearing. Judge, she has personal knowledge of this relationship. It's not what was represented on Monday. Personal knowledge came from Mr. Bradley. She has no good faith basis to explore this fishing, fishing expedition as it relates to Ms. Yurdy. This is a blatant mis- All right, Mr. Abadi. Uh, Ms. Merchant. I do believe that when we went through the motion to quash, there were, you grouped them into two categories, and each one of them we said that they were going to be impeached by Mr. Bradley. There, there were, well, we took Ms. Yurdy outside of Fulton County, Judge. So we talked about Fulton County differently um, than Ms. Yurdy. You took Ms. Yurdy out separately. She was different than Fulton County because there wasn't other issues. And, and again, so we're arguing a motion to quash. I responded to their argument on the motion to quash. Do, did I tell them that she's going to testify that she's known Miss Willis for years and that her middle name is Latrice? No, I didn't tell them everything she's going to testify to. I don't like if you wanted me to, I could have. But that has nothing to do. There is a witness that contradicts what they have said in court. And they're doing everything they can to keep her off the stand and keep the truth away from this court. They filed a motion to quash. I showed a good faith basis. If my good faith basis is Mr. Bradley or Ms. Yearty or texts I've seen, it's still a good faith basis. There's no law that says I have to tell them every single good faith basis I have ahead of time. If we did, we would never have trials. All right, Ms. Merchant. Uh, Appreciate the argument of counsel. I think uh, the standard on a motion to quash and a subpoena is not one where we're required to completely flush out and litigate every reason a witness may be relevant. And so we'll take these one at a time with Ms. Yurdy. Uh, I'll deny the motion to quash. And if, if your um, election, election and to proceed in your presentation of the evidence is to call her, then that's what we'll do. Thank you, Judge. So, Mr. Radley, you may be excused for now. Thank you. But subject to recall. We will call Ms. Yurdy. Would you like me to swear her judge or how do you want to do it? I think we need to make sure. There we go. Deputy Scott, if we could swear in the witness. Ms. Yurdy, can you hear us? Yes, I can. All right. Raise your right hand, ma'am. You swear a firm to the testimony you should get a court. Will be the truth. Whether the truth will help you? Yes. Would you please state and spare your full name for the court? Robin Latrice Yurdy. Th- thank you, Ms. Yurdy. Um, thank you for being here. Can you can you tell the judge um, when you first met Ms. Willis? Um, in college. Okay. So 19, probably 90 or 91. Okay. And have you been friends since 1990 or 91? Yes. Okay. Um, when was the last time you spoke with Ms. Willis? 
um, March of 20, March of 2022. Okay. Um, from 1991-ish till 2022, were you what you would consider good friends with Miss Willis? Yes. Um, and did you all share personal information regularly? Yes. And um, did you even come and work with her at the DA's office? Yes. Okay. And um, when she needed a place to stay, um, did you let her stay at your apartment? Yes. I'm, uh, it was a condo, right? Condo, yes. Okay. Do you remember approximately when she moved into your condo? Um, it was April of 2021. Okay, great. And um, you know that Miss Willis and Miss Wade met at a conference in October of 2019? I'm going to object to that, Your Honor, without a foundation for how this witness would know that. If Miss Merchant can establish she has personal information of that, then um, certainly that's something the witness can testify to. But if it's she heard Understood, it Ms. Ms. Cross. All right, Ms. Uh, Merchant, if you could lay the foundation. Do you have information that Ms. Willis and Mr. Wade met in October of 2019? I'm going to renew my objection, Your Honor. Information is not sourced to personal information. If the question can be rephrased, then that may address my concern. So, so Judge, I, let me, I just want to make sure that I understand. So they've objected to me calling Willis and Wade. It's just, it's just a matter of foundation. If you can just rephrase. Do you have knowledge? Of when Willis and Wade met. I'm going to object again. Personal knowledge. Uh, overruled. Thank you. Do you have personal knowledge of when Willis and Wade met? Yes. She told me that they met at a conference. I don't know what conference. Okay. I'm going to renew my objection, Your Honor. Clearly, this is not firsthand information from this um, witness. It's hearsay that was... Uh, but she said she told me. Yes. It's it's statement against interest, Judge. If Ms. Well, just, Willis... Just pause. I'm oh, sorry. Okay, Ms. Yes. Cross. The representation of the witness, the testimony of the witness was that Ms. Willis, District Attorney Willis, had a conversation with her. There is no statement against interest. District Attorney Willis is not a, a party opponent in this case. The information that the witness has testified to came from Ms. Willis, and there's uh, we have a hearsay objection to that. Why wouldn't she be considered a, a party opponent in this context? He's... A representative of the state, Your Honor. This isn't private litigation or civil litigation. Obviously, the the, the course of where this is, um, Ms. Willis is not on trial. Ms. Willis has not is not a party to the litigation outside her obligation to pursue criminal charges for the state. Ms. Merchant, I Judge, guess I guess it's, it's it's evolved into a hearsay objection. Yes, Judge, and um, we plan on calling Ms. Willis to the stand. She's under subpoena, so hearsay will be cured. Uh, if there is a hearsay objection, as to far as that issue. But we do still think that it's a statement against interest. Um, Ms. Willis has filed a document that states that they met at this municipal court conference. So I'm, Your Honor, <laughs> I, I think maybe I can streamline a little bit. State will stipulate that District Attorney Willis and uh, Mr. Wade met in October 2019 at the judicial conference that we've been talking about. There's no reason to get it secondhand from this witness. We'll, we'll, that's that's true. All right. You accept the stipulation, Ms. Merchant? Yes. All right. Am I permitted then to, to ask questions about that since it's now not hearsay? Uh, if it's just to a stipulation, if it's just to that basic fact, I, I don't think we need a question, but if there's a follow-up that okay. you think is admissible, go for it. Ms. Yerdy, um, you have personal knowledge that Ms. Willis and Mr. Wade began their romantic relationship soon after this time that they met at the municipal court. I'm going to object to that question. That certainly is a leading question. No foundation has been laid for how this witness would have personal knowledge of that. And until that's happened, the state objects. Judge. I, I think you can do a yes or no and then follow up with how she knows it. Thank you. Um, do you know if Ms. Willis and Mr. Wade started dating in October of 2019? I don't know if it was October of 2019. Could it possibly be November of 2019? Could possibly. Okay. And when we spoke, you said it was shortly after the municipal court conference, though, correct? Yes. Okay. So you know that their relationship, their personal relationship, began shortly after this municipal court conference? Yes. And when I say personal, romantic? 
Is that is I just want to make sure we don't get in an argument over what personal and romantic is later. When I ask you personal, do you take that to mean romantic? Yes. Okay. And do you understand it that their relationship began in 2019 and continued until the last time you spoke with her? Yes. And you were essentially her best friend during this time, right? Not best friend, good friend. Okay. Good friend, okay, close friend. And so would you frequently socialize with her? Yes. Um, and you saw her at work every day? Yes. So you had a chance to see them interact together on a personal level? Yes. Okay. Um, and so from everything that you saw, heard, witnessed, um, it's your understanding that they were in a romantic relationship beginning in 2019. Yes. And um, when you left the DA, oh, I'm sorry, let me ask you. Um, you said that Miss Willis came to live with you in April of 2021. I'm sorry, April 1st, 2020 or 2021? She didn't live with me. I never, I never lived with her. Okay. I'm sorry. She took over your lease in April, April 1st, 2020, correct? No, 2021. 20, okay, I'm I had it both ways, so I'm glad you clarified. So when she took over your lease in April 1st, 2021, it's your understanding she moved out of the house that she was sharing with her father and started staying at the condo? Yes. And is it your understanding that that's because she needed to have her own space? Yes. Away from her father? Yes. Okay. Okay. Um, when you left the DA's office, was it, um, were you fired? No, I resigned. You resigned, okay. Just one moment, Judge. <clears throat> um, can you tell us why you resigned the DA's office? Um the number of things that was happening a number of things that were happening is that what you said ma'am yes okay what what was happening that you that caused you to resign um it was a spiral of things so um i guess the the last straw is i was, I was put in a department that I knew had no knowledge about something happened and I didn't like it. They didn't like it. And that was it. Okay. Did you have any falling outs with Miss Willis? Well, we never spoke after that. You never spoke after that. Okay. Um, and so you're, you know, without going into all the, the painstaking details, there is no doubt in your mind that from 2019 until 2022, um, Miss Willis and Mr. Wade were in a romantic relationship. What's the question? Um, you have no doubt that their romantic relationship was in effect from 2019 until the last time you spoke with her. No doubt. Okay. And that's based on your personal observations and, observ and, you know, speaking with them and seeing them together and things like that. Yes. Okay. Yes. No other questions. Thank you. The other uh, the other folks may have some questions for you, Mr. Yardy. Sit down. Uh, if it's more than a couple questions, then sure. But if not, it's only a couple questions. okay. I think can the court reporter hear me okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Ma'am, let me be very specific. Did you talk with Miss Willis about her romantic relationship with Mr. Wayne? Yes. Did Miss Willis tell you on more than one occasion that she was engaged in a romantic relationship with Mr. Wade prior to you leaving the district attorney's office? Did she tell me or did I observe? Let's, I'm staying right now with the tell me. Yes. Did she tell you that in the year of 2020? Yes. In the year of 2021? Yes. Are you certain that Ms. Wade told you, I'm sorry, Ms. Willis told you 
about the romantic relationship with Mr. Wei prior to November 1st of 2021. Yes. Now, did you also have observations of Mr. Wade and Ms. Willis together prior to November 1st of 2021? Yes. And are those observations, were those in a social setting? Yes. And did you observe them do things that are uh, say common among people having a romantic relationship? Yes. Such as, can you give us an example? Hugging, kissing, just affection. All, all, of, all before November 1st of 2021, correct? Yes. That's all I have. Mr. Stocks. Ma'am, did I understand you to say that, that there was a period of time when you and Ms. Willis lived together? No. No further questions. Mr. Durham. No, nothing for me, Your Honor. Mr. McDougall. Nothing, Your Honor. Mr. Rice. Good morning, Ms. Yardy. Um, are you, were you aware in 2021 of any trips, social trips that Ms. Willis and Mr. Wade took together? No. Are you aware of any social trips that Ms. Willis and Mr. Wade took together in 2022? No. And are you aware of them in 2020 or 2021 spending the evening together overnight? No. No further questions. Mr. Gillen. Uh, no questions. Sir. Mr. McCullough. And Mr. Cromwell. No questions, John. Ms. Cross. I do have some questions. Thank you, Your Honor. Does Yurdi, we haven't met before, is that correct? Correct. You're able to see and hear me okay? Yes. All right. I want to start with a couple things. Now, I think you've made it, it clear that you never lived, and we'll call it the South Fulton address, the South Fulton condo that you were leasing. You never lived at that address with the District Attorney Willis, correct? Correct. And never at any time? Never. All right. You never observed or have any information about District Attorney Wade and District Attorney Willis and Nathan Wade living together, correct? Correct. You don't have any information about that? No, I don't. Anybody said that that information was sourced to you, then that's incorrect. That's incorrect. Did District Attorney Willis pay rent at that establishment, at that condo while, you, while she lived there and you were living elsewhere? Yes. Who paid the rent? She did. Nathan Wade ever pay the rent? No. And you never told anyone otherwise? No. I didn't answer, I didn't hear your answer there, Ms. Yardy. Did you uh, ever tell anyone otherwise? No. All right. So let's talk for a second about your time at the district attorney's office. You were disciplined several times in the district attorney's office during your employment there, correct? No. You weren't written up ever for poor performance, Ms. Yardy? Once, not several. One time you were written up for poor performance where you counseled several times about your performance in the district attorney's office that was subpar. No. Did the district attorney tell you that your performance was insufficient and that you were going to be fired? No. That never happened? No. Maybe when we went at the end? Mm. What's the question? The question, Ms. Yurdy, was did the district attorney ever counsel you on your poor performance in the district attorney's office uh, prior and inform you that you were going to be fired? Mm. I don't really know how to answer that. I'm looking for the truth. I, I, I don't really know how to answer that. I mean, uh, a situation happened that wasn't my fault. And I, I either was going to resign or be let go. So you understood that that was the situation. You could resign or you could be let go. Correct. Yes. You were not welcome to stay. No.
and the conversation where you were informed that you could resign or you could be fired, uh, that conversation was not the first conversation you had with the district attorney about your poor performance in the office, correct? Well, it was kind of a spiral, but no. Yeah, it was. Whatever the situation was. Oh, excuse me. Questions are fine. Understood, Mr. Stano. Understood. Ms. Cross. Ms. Yurdy, the circumstances of your leaving the district attorney's office uh, ended your friendship with the district attorney Willis, correct? Yes. Y'all haven't spoken since? No. <laughs> All right, I want to talk about the representations that you made here um, this morning, Ms. Yurdy, about any relationship between District Attorney Willis and Mr. Wade. I want you to tell me what was the first time any, let me ask it this way. You said that District Attorney Willis personally informed you of a romantic relationship. Is that what you testified to? Yes. And when did that conversation that you purport to have uh, to recall, when did that happen? I mean, I don't have a month or, or a day, but where were you? Just talking, just talking in general. Your Honor, we'd like to keep this witness under um, subpoena, but that's all the questions I have right now. All right, thank you, Ms. Cross. I Cross time. I mean, redirect. I'm sorry. All right. On those points only. Yes, just those points. Um, the state asked you a lot about um, when you were let go, when you resigned. Um, did something happen as far as um, purchasing that you didn't feel comfortable with, purchasing things through um, the county for Miss Willis that caused you to, to not be comfortable working there anymore? No. Okay. Um, and I didn't tell you how to testify here today, though, right? Right. Okay. And everything you've testified to is from your personal knowledge? Yes. Okay. And um, you've told the truth here today? Yes. Okay. Um, Judge, I believe she's only under my subpoena, and I'm fine releasing her from that subpoena. Oh, not yet. oh I'm sorry. By, sh by show of hands from other counsel, starting with Mr. Sado. Your Honor, I believe the door has been opened now to ask this particular witness about statements that um, Ms. Willis made to her. Um, she brought it up on cross-examination on a couple of occasions. Did Ms. Willis say this or inform you of that? So I'd like to now ask her questions directly about what Ms. Willis told her about the romantic relationship. I think we'll take those one at a time, question by question, and we can address those to see. I don't, I don't know about a complete opening of the door. We'll, we'll see where we go. First time that you spoke to Ms. Willis about her relationship, romantic relationship with Mr. Wade, do you happen to remember what Ms. Willis said? In essence, not word for word, but in essence, what she said. No. Do you remember the first time she told you, in whatever words were used, that there was a romantic relationship? No. Is this the kind of conversation that you had with your best friend uh, ongoing over a period of time in which it was common knowledge to you that there was an ongoing relationship between Ms. Willis and Mr. Wade? What's the question? Yeah, I'll ask it again. Is the nature of your then relationship with Ms. Willis such that you were having these ongoing conversations, that is best friend type conversations about her relationship with Mr. Wade? I don't remember. Okay. Without getting any further in too much detail. Is there any doubt at all that Mr. Wade and Ms. Willis had a romantic relationship, as was told to you, prior to November of 2020? Uh, she, she was already asked that question by Ms. Merchant. I just didn't know whether that needed to be. She said, and she said no, no doubt. Okay. All right. Uh, any other defense counsel by show of hands? Seeing none. Uh, uh, last recross from Ms. Cross, anything else? Uh, not this time, Your Honor, but we've asked yeah. the witness remain under subpoena and subject to recall. Judge, she's under my subpoena, and I'm releasing her from my subpoena. So if they want to subpoena her, they are welcome to do that. Ms. Cross. <laughs> uh, I would prefer that the court keep her under subpoena. I think sure. um, given the representation of Ms. Marchant, given how she intends to proceed today, that this witness may uh, 
they need to be recalled. All right, uh, understood. Um, in the interest and in knowing that we may have to bring witnesses back and forth, uh, I think it's in the interest of effective presentation of the evidence here. Ms. Yurdy, you are still going to remain under the auspices of your subpoena. And so please stay in touch with your attorney. We may need you to rejoin us on Zoom at some point today or tomorrow. Understood? Okay. All right. Don't discuss your testimony with any other potential witnesses, all right? All right. All right. You can log off. And Judge, I'd ask, just can Mr. Partridge stay on for just one moment? For what reason? Um, the state had made some allegations that I misrepresented some things to the court, and I, I'd just like the opportunity to clear that up, that Mr. Partridge is the one that told me that they lived together for a month. They've, they've called me everything but a liar today, and so I just think that it's appropriate for everyone to know where that information came from. All right, Ms. Merchant, I think you've uh, made your position clear. That's, uh, I don't think we want to need to get sidetracked on that. All right, uh, Ms. Merchant, you can call your next witness. Judge, may I be excused as well, please? All right, take care, Mr. Partridge. You call Mr. Wade. All right. Ms. Cross. Your Honor, the motion to quash Mr. Wade's subpoena uh, was held in abeyance uh, waiting for the representation. I, I believe that the good faith basis that Ms. Uh, Merchant represented on Monday, I think that that's clearly not accurate. I understand the testimony that's now in the record. Um, Mr. Wade is... Uh, available, but we maintain that at this time that the motion to, to quash probably sh um, should be granted, but understand the court's ruling. Uh, well, Mr. Cross, I, uh, I'll, I'll say yes. On Monday, it did seem like the focus was that Mr. Bradley would be the, the, the hook that makes every witness potentially relevant. And we really haven't been able to explore that uh, on the privilege issues that we'll likely have to tackle again later. But for now, uh, as it the evidence in front of the court at the moment is that we have a witness who has said this relationship may have predated the affidavit that Mr. Wade filed. I don't see a way around um, the relevance of his testimony. And so I'll deny the uh, state's motion to quash uh, the subpoena of Mr. Wade. Ms. Merchant. You swear I'm coming to the text once you get for the medical disability. I do. Please see. Please state and spell your name for the court. My name is Nathan Wade. <laughs> N-A-T-H-A-N-W-A-D-E. Good morning, Mr. Wade. Good morning. Um, prior to filing this motion to disqualify, you and I were friends, correct? Yes. And in fact, I supported you when you ran for judge in 2016. You did. I wore your shirts. My kids wore your uh, shirts. Mr. Mr. Merchant, signs. your personal opinions have no relevance. Okay. Uh, and I, uh, I mean that in the best way. That's All completely right. fine. I Let's get to the point. <laughs> Thank you. No, no, no. I, Totally fine. Thank you. Um, you filed for divorce from your wife on November 2nd, 2021? Yes, ma'am. And um, in that divorce proceeding, did you file um, answers, things such as interrogatories? I did. Okay. And so interrogatories are where you're responding to things that basically answers that the other side is asking? Yes, ma'am. And um, 
I've got your complaint for divorce. I'm just going to mark it for the record as defendant's exhibit two. Um, the first interrogatories that you answered, those were December 27th, 2021. Is that right? They're about. Yes, okay. And in those, um, you were asked different things, but those are sworn. You actually swear to those. You verify them, right? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, and so that verification is where you're swearing under oath that everything in it is true? Yes, ma'am. And let's see. The um, You were asked if you had any documents re which relate to the purchase of gifts by you to any person other than the defendant with whom you have or had a relationship, romantic relationship, from the date of your marriage, correct? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And you responded under oath that you didn't have any documents to that. That's correct. Um, you, again, responded to an interrogatory. You updated those responses on May 30th, 2023? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And you actually sent those directly to opposing counsel in the divorce? Yes, ma'am. I think so. Um, but in that one, you answered none again to that question, correct? Yes, ma'am. So May 30th, 2023, you said that you didn't have any documents showing any purchase of anything with someone that you had a romantic relationship with. I believe the interrogatory was, was gifts. Okay. Not anything, gifts. And I, and I have it if you want to take a look. Um, I'm going to mark, okay, so, so just for the record, I've got your complaint for divorce marked as number two. I've got the verification and the interrogatories from 2021. I'm going to mark those as three. And then your May 30th, 2023, I'm going to mark as four. Um, Judge, may I approach the witness? You may. Thank you. That is what I marked as four. This is what I marked as three. Okay. Thank you, Judge. All right. If you take a look at what I marked as two, three, and four. Just see if you recognize those. I do. And um, are those, that's your divorce complaint? Um, and then your 2021 interrogatory and your 2023 interrogatory, correct? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Are they a fair and accurate representation of what is filed in that case? Yes, ma'am. I'd move to admit those into evidence. And is this is two, three, and four? Um, it's two, three, and four, yes. All right. Any objection from the state? The divorce? I don't think it's on the No objection to three and four and subject to Ms. Merchant's representation that two is a filing of divorce. I just don't the divorce complaint. I don't have that in front of me, but subject to that representation, no objection. All right. And by show of hands, any objection from other defense mm -hmm. counsel? Seeing none, defendants two, three, and four. Uh, this should be Romans. Well, we'll just call them two, three, and four, admitted without objection. Um, so that interrogatory that you filed in 2023, that's the one where you said no, that you didn't have any documents um, relating to the purchase of gifts um, that you had a romantic relationship with someone, right? Number, which interrogatory are we talking number about? Number four, 2023. Which number in the interrogatory? Number four. So, which number interrogatory are you referring to? It's defendant's exhibit number four. I, I have defendant's exhibit four here. Uh-huh. Which number interrogatory are we referring oh, to? Oh, which, like, which number out of the questions? Yes, ma'am. Um, hold on. It is number 20. 24, 25, 26, basically, all of us. Does it have a number 24? Can you point me to it? Yeah. Oh, which one's you? No. Oh, this one. Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry. Um, it's supposed to be number. <laughs> I guess they're all numbered one. So number one, number one again, and then the third number one. 
Perhaps you can find the page number or something. So he the didn't put page knows. numbers on. It's, he didn't put any on. We filed it at all. I don't know how to tell you what number one, because when you've responded, you put number one on all of them. You so. just point to it. This one. This one, I'm talking about this number one where it's tapped. There's two number ones that are tapped. Okay. And there's no page number, but I did the second page. All right. They're asking if you have any receipts for restaurants, hotels, bars, things like that. The first number one? I believe it's the second number one. The second number one? Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. So it asks you if you have any receipts for things like restaurants, bars, hotels, things like that, where you accompanied a member of the other sex romantic partner, correct? It says identify any and all occasions. Okay. Which... And so, that's right with you. It says to identify any and all occasions where you entertained a member of the other sex, okay, who's not in related to blood, mm -hmm. and including dining, drinking, restaurants, bars, pubs, hotels, all of that. Okay. And what was your answer to that? None. None. Okay. So May 30th, 2023, you prepared, you prepared this document. I did. Submitted it. I did. And it says none as far as entertaining a member of the opposite sex. It does. Okay. No hotels, no bars, no restaurants. Correct. Okay. Um, you again updated that. Let's see. You updated it on December 22nd, 2023. And I'm going to mark that as defendant's number five, and I have copies. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And then you updated it once again on January 26, 2024, correct? Yes, ma'am. Okay. There's that one. May I approach the witness again, Judge? Is that what you're marking as defense exhibit six? Yes, Judge. I'm marking um, number six is the January 26, 2024 interrogatory. And then 20. All right. Let me do that one. Okay. And then number five is the December 22nd, 2023 interrogatory response. All right. Are you tendering those at this time? Yes, I am. Judge. All right. Five. Any objection from any counsel to defense exhibit five and six? Yes, sir. no objection. Thank you, Ms. Cross. Seeing none others. Luckily, I have time <clears throat> for you. Um, so now that you have those, let's just talk about those for a minute. Um, those were verified, so sworn under oath. Mm -hmm. Okay. And one of them was December 22nd and then of this last year. So last December. And then one was just recently submitted in January, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. Um, in May, May 20, what, let's see, May 10th, 2023, Judge Thompson heard a motion to compel in your divorce case as well, correct? Yes. Okay. And you were actually held in Willful contempt. Yeah, I'm going to object to the relevance of Ms. That. his credibility um, is relevant, Judge. And if he was held in willful contempt for failing to provide answers and documents, I think that's relevant to this court. How is that a prior false act or crime of conviction or anything else allowed for impeachment under the rules of evidence? I, it, I'm not offering it as a prior bad act or something like that. I'm offering it towards his credibility, Judge, which you get to determine. Um, if he's made misrepresentations in these pleadings, um, you're, to, you're here to determine whether or not he's telling the truth or not. So if another court has held him in contempt and that's part of the divorce proceeding, I think it's relevant. But just contempt generally can be for many different things, Like, a, but a failure for, to produce is not necessarily a false act, right? Right. And he's welcome to explain that. Your he may not have to. Ms. Cross. I, I object to the relevance of that. That's clearly not an, a proper impeachment uh, we're going pretty far afield into divorce matters that don't have any direct relevance to anything that's pending before the court. Let's look at the relevance of that and make further. Uh, All right. Exploring. Not seeing uh, that being a proper grounds for impeachment uh, sustained. Okay. Let's talk about this December 22nd, 2023 um, verification. I tabbed it for you. Um, again, they asked you if you had any documentations showing 
proof of this relationship, proof of any relationship, correct? I'm going to object to the phrasing of that question. I don't believe that's an accurate read of the interrogatory. All right, let's be precise, Ms. Merchant. And, and you, p please read it. I want to make sure I'm accurate. Please read it. Which, which number? This one actually has a number. I tabbed it for you, so you should be able to open right to the page. Um, it's number 22. The question specifically is if you have any tangible evidence of any nature in your possession or control or any other person or entity which relates to any manner of your activities to any person with whom you've had a sexual relationship during your marriage. Tangible evidence is notes, cards, letters, photos, films, recordings, documents, tapes, video recordings, receipts, invoices, and other tangible evidence. Yes. Okay. And you answered that you did not have any documents to that effect, correct? Correct. And um, that was on December 22nd, 2023? Yes, ma'am. You updated those responses again after the motion to disqualify was filed, though, correct? When was the motion filed? January 8th, 2024, when I filed the motion to disqualify you and alleged that you had a romantic relationship with Ms. Willis. Yes, After that, you updated these responses, correct? Yes, ma'am. And so your new responses, you now changed your answer from that you didn't have any of this to you're asserting the privilege under 245505, correct? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, and both of these are under oath? Yes, ma'am. You also updated your response to the question about spending time with someone other than your spouse for dinner, drinks, things at restaurants, bars, hotels, or the other person's home, correct? Yes, ma'am. So in December of 2023, you said no to all that. And then in January, after I filed my motion, you said privilege to all that. Fifth Amendment privilege. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, and I, just to be clear, was it? Sorry, I'm going to object the characterization of Fifth Amendment privilege. I think it was a statutory privilege, and that's why quite just, different. That's why I was just about to ask him. So that privilege covers infamy or Fifth Amendment privilege, correct? So it was a privacy privilege is what I updated my response to do. Once okay. you filed your motion to... Uh, intervene mm -hmm. in my divorce action. Um, I then figured that you were in talks with my uh, former wife's uh, divorce lawyer. Okay. Um, and because of that, um, I asserted a privacy privilege because I didn't want the uh, proceedings of my divorce to bleed over into the proceedings in this case, which is the case that obviously you're involved in. So your answer is in December of 2023 that you didn't have any documents about any travel that you took with Ms. Willis. That wasn't true, though, correct? They didn't have any regarding Ms. Willis. A romantic partner. They asked you for documents regarding a romantic partner. So I'm sorry, I, I let me rephrase the question. They asked you for documents about travel with a romantic partner in December 2023. And you under oath said you did not have any of those, correct? I did not. Okay. And they asked me about gifts. I've right. never purchased a gift for Ms. Willis. And they asked you about receipts for dinner, receipts for drinks, hotels, bars, and restaurants. And you said you did not have any of those. I did not and do not have any receipts for any of those things. Okay. And part of the civil discovery, they say that even if you don't have it in your pocket, if it's within your purview, you got to get it and give it to them, correct? Your Honor, I'm going to object again to the relevance of the, the questions about the scope of civil discovery. I think she's asked him about statements he made in pleadings. Um, the answers are already in the record. And um, All right. To the extent you're trying to establish a prior uh, mistruth, uh, Ms. Merchant, uh, I'll allow you to ask a few more follow-ups, but if it's not there, we have to move on. Thank you. Um, so in... 2023, December, you said you didn't have any receipts. I do not have any receipts. I did not have any receipts. But you did travel with Ms. Willis in 2023, correct? I did. And you traveled with her in 2022, correct? I did. And you traveled with her in 2021, correct? No. So you only traveled with her in 2022 and 2023? 2022 and 2023 is what I recall. That's what you recall? Yes. Okay. Okay. Um, so you just don't remember if you traveled with her in 2021? 2022 and 2023 is what I recall. Is yes. what you recall. My question is, did you travel with her in 2021? I'm not recalling any travel in 2021. So it's not yes or no, you just don't remember? 
I'm not recalling any travel in 2021. So you did not travel with her in 2021. Your Honor. Oh, this has been covered. Let's keep going. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> let's see. You um, you filed an affidavit in this case, correct? I did. Okay, and I marked that already. I gave it to the state um, as number one. So that's exhibit number one. May I approach, Judge? You may. Thank you. In that affidavit, you swore under oath, correct? Yes, ma'am. And in that affidavit, you swore that, um, well, first of all, do you recognize the affidavit? I do. Okay. Did you sign the affidavit under oath? I did. And you gave this affidavit specifically to refute the allegations that I had raised? Yes, ma'am. Nobody forced you to sign this? No, ma'am. You chose to sign it? I did. And you signed it on purpose? To, to admit into court to I refute did. allegations? I did. Um, you signed it specifically to prove that you were not in a relationship with Willis prior to November 2021, correct? Correct. Okay. And you were a lawyer when you signed it? I was. And you're still a lawyer today, correct? I am. When were you barred? 1999. Okay. And um, you believe that your relationship with Ms. Willis is subject to attorney-client privilege, correct? I'm going to object to that, Your Honor. I don't think that's factually correct. I don't think that's a relevant question, and I don't think it's appropriate to question this witness about the scope of his attorney-client privilege. Um, he's got an attorney who can speak for him for that, but questioning the witness, I think, is inappropriate. All right, so a lot to unpack there. Uh, <laughs> the question is simply, that: does he believe there's a relationship that exists in terms of attorney-client privilege between him and Ms. Willis? Was, was that accurate, yes, Ms. Merchant? It was. I asked okay. if he believed his relationship with Ms. Willis is subject to attorney-client privilege. Okay, I don't see why a yes or no would be barred. I, I'm, I'm, maybe I'm not mis Maybe I'm not understanding the question. If, if the question is, does Mr. Wade and District Attorney Willis have an attorney-client relationship? It is not. There's no foundation for that. If the question to the witness is, does his relationship with District Attorney Willis impact? his attorney-client relationship with his divorce attorneys, uh, that I don't think is an appropriate question for that, for that witness. First, if, if, uh, first, I believe is a proper phrasing. The second, I think there's been a representation that Mr. Wade preserves and doesn't waive anything. And so I think asking him particular questions in order to potentially uh, backdoor a waiver is inappropriate. And that's, that's, that's my objection. All right, uh, if we're just trying to again assess where a privilege does or does not exist, and we're not actually getting into it, uh, I think that's, we can establish those, you know, uh, parameters. But uh, Ms. Merchant, can you rephrase the question based on that concern and we'll see where we are? Yes. Um, do you believe, you, that your relationship with Ms. Willis is subject to an attorney-client privilege? Not if you and Ms. Willis have one, but do you believe that that relationship is subject to, to one? I, I'm gonna to object to that question as it's phrased. In what context? Uh, any conversation with his attorneys is privileged. Uh, that, that I think is, is clear. What's not clear to me from that question is, is that is Ms. Merchant asking in the context of your communication with your attorneys, is that, is that? or outside that context, is it? Right, um, and, and Ms. Merchant, I think we need to figure out what what are we getting at with this? I'm, really I'm just trying to figure out if he thought that their relationship is subject to an attorney-client privilege. I mean, it's been asserted, I think it's gonna be asserted, and that's, that was all I was asking. Um, I mean, the, the actions themselves wouldn't be an issue, it's more communications. Someone saw, someone saw them, someone had knowledge of it. Is that attorney-client right. privilege? I want to. All right, know. well, I, I guess I would find this legal opinion on this isn't isn't relevant. Okay. We can deal with that as it comes up. So sustained. Um, in 2022, um, in this affidavit, you swore that you and Willis developed a personal relationship. Yes, ma'am. Okay. And you said that that didn't that didn't develop until 2022, correct? That's correct. Okay. And that's different from what you said in your pleading in May 2023 in the divorce case, correct? No, ma'am. In May 2023, when you were asked if you had a um, if you'd had any affairs, essentially. And you said none. That's correct. Okay. So in May, you said you had not, in May 2023, in the divorce case, you said you had not had a personal relationship, an affair, a romantic relationship with anyone. That's correct. But you told this court in the affidavit that you did have one that started in 2022. So that would have been ongoing at 2023. 
So here I think there's a distinction, if you'd allow me to explain. Um, the interrogatory um, asks the question during the course of your marriage. Um, my, or or my, to date. It actually says, I'm going to request that the witness be permitted to answer. Mr. Wade. So my marriage was irretrievably broken in 2015, ma'am, um, by agreement. Um, my wife and I agreed that uh, once she had the affair in 2015, that we'd get a divorce. Um, we didn't get a divorce immediately because my children were still in school and I refused to allow them to grow up without their father at the time. So we waited. We waited until the youngest graduated and we dropped her off at college and then filed for the divorce. So if you're asking me about the interrogatory as it relates to having uh, the 2022 relationship with District Attorney Willis, I want to say because my marriage was irretrievably broken, I was free to have a relationship. So the question, though, was if you had had a relationship. And in 2023, you said you did not. And that I, is different than what you said in this affidavit, correct? No, ma'am. I said during the course of my marriage. So in so 2015, you believe that you, let him finish, Ms. Merchant. So in 2015, my marriage was irretrievably broken. So I did not have a relationship with anyone during the course of my marriage. Um, and in that interrogatory, they asked you if you had any receipts for travel with someone of the other sex up until the time you were answering. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. And you said that you didn't. You've already testified to that earlier. But in this affidavit, you said you swore that you had travel expenses and shared expenses on travel with Ms. Willis. Again, during the course of my marriage, I had no relationship or uh, receipts. I'm not asking about during the course of your marriage. Your Honor, I'm going to ask the, the witness to be allowed to answer the question. Yes, continue. I have no problem with them answering. Okay. Um, as it relates to receipts today, I don't have any receipts, ma'am. So you don't have any travel receipts um, available to you for any travel that you did with Ms. Willis? I don't have any receipts, no ma'am. Um, no receipts that, so, so you're, you used your business credit card for these trips, correct? I used my business credit card for everything. Okay, I, yes, you did. Um, you used it for your kid's tuition? Yes ma'am. Used it for personal travel with Ms. Willis? Yes ma'am. And you have receipts from those business credit cards that you have to file with your taxes, correct? No ma'am. No, I, I, I file this statement. I turn over the statement and whatever is there on the statement, the accountant looks at it and the accountant says, OK, this is personal, goes over here. This is business, goes over here. Here are your taxes. So you have those statements. We'll call them statements instead of receipts. You have those statements, correct? I have the statements. Yes, ma'am. But when you answered the interrogatory under oath, you said you did not have anything to show the records of I travel with Ms. Willis. I answered the question. I had no receipts, ma'am. You had no receipts, but you had statements. I ordered the statement, yes, ma'am. You did order the statement. I did. Okay. And um, so, so we're just talking to semantics between invoice and statements or receipt. I'm sorry. I'm going to object, Your Honor, to the um, argumentative tone of the question. I believe it's been asked and answered several times. All right, sustain. Um, in let's see. You also in this affidavit said that no funds paid to you for compensation as your role as special counsel was shared with Willis, correct? That's correct. Okay. Um, and that you never cohabitated with Willis, correct? That's correct. Um, by cohabitation, does that mean that you never spent the night with Willis? I spent the night with her during but, travel. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Okay. And so when, so I just want to qualify your term, your use of the term cohabitation. That means you didn't live together. That's correct. But you did spend the night together. Yes. When was the first time you spent the night together? Your Honor. Um, <clears throat> that's the subject of his affidavit, Judge. Right, but it might not be the subject of this hearing. So the question is the nature and extent of the relationship. And so if they just spent the night on a single occasion, I don't, I, I would need, I don't think we're going to document in detail every single time that happens. And I don't intend to do that, Judge, but I think what is relevant is when the relationship started. And that's what you had indicated on. Well, why don't we start with that question and go from there? That question. And that's what I asked when the first time he's, he spent the night with her was. That's, that's what I that's, asked. That's a different question, isn't it? 
Okay, so let's not talk about when you spent the night. When did your romantic relationship with Miss Willis begin? 2022. When? In 2022. Early 2022. So you were appointed in November of 2021. Yes, ma'am. And your relationship started early. What's early? January? February? Around March. Around March. But you two met at an October 2019 um, judicial conference, correct? Yes, ma'am. And um, describe your relationship at that point then. Which point? 2019. So I was at a judicial conference to teach a course, if you will, um, to newer judges. Um, I did that in 2019. Um, as I was exiting the conference, um, another judge was standing outside who was a friend of mine. I stopped and exchanged pleasantries with, with her. Um, and standing, talking to her at the time was then Judge Willis. She introduced us um, at that time. We shook hands, exchanged business cards, and I got into my vehicle and left the conference. So that meeting was probably three minutes. Okay. When was the next time you talked to her? Didn't talk to her again probably maybe a month or a month and a half had gone by. Okay. So you talked to her November maybe? Maybe. On the phone? On the phone. Okay. How regularly did you speak with her in 2021 on the phone? In 2021? I'm sorry, 20, 2019. I'm so sorry. 2019. How frequently did you speak with her on the phone? 2019, after the meeting, I probably talked to her two or three times. She would have questions. Um, I was the district rep for the particular district that I sat in. Um, okay. And the judges would, when they would have questions, they sometimes would go to the rep. So she was outside of my district, but um, she would call me. She felt comfortable calling me to ask me the questions. I don't know if you know the the racial makeup of uh, the certain benches, but it wasn't very diverse. So she felt comfortable calling me for advice. Um, and she did that. And we had also in common that she was starting um, a private law practice at the time. And I'd already had mine up and going. And we talked about balancing the demands of the the bench with that private practice so we didn't we didn't talk that often but when she had questions uh, mostly legal issues that would come up she would call me i just want to make sure because my question was just how many times and you said two to three times right yeah. okay and in 2022 how frequently did you speak in 2022 this is um, before you were appointed i'm sorry perhaps miss Marches, uh your timeline, 2022? I'm sorry, 2020. 2020. How frequently did you speak in 2020? 2020, it was um, more, more frequent than, than 19, um, obviously, but... More frequent. Can you tell me approximately a month how often you think you spoke with her hmm. on the phone? Your Honor, I'm, I'm going to object to the granular detail. Um, I, I think... Uh, Mr. Wade can certainly answer however he wants to, but if we're going to go through every time we spoke on the phone, as opposed to generally characterizing the relationship, it would um, be more detailed than is necessary. Judge, I'm not going to go through every time they spoke on the phone. I'm asking for generally how frequently they spoke. I think at that level, that's fine. Overall. About how frequently did you speak in 2020? Per month? Per... It, I mean, if it was two or three times that entire year, you can tell me that. If, if oh, no, it no, was no. more than that, then you can quantify it by month. No, no, no. We, we spoke on the telephone often. I mean, I don't know how many. I couldn't give you an a, a amount of time because you remember COVID happened and the world was shut down. But um, so we spoke on the phone more than 2019, definitely. Okay, let's, let's qualify it. Before her election in 2020, how much, how frequently did you speak? You mean as she was campaigning? Before the election. 
before, yes, as she was campaigning, before she was elected. It's, it's two different animals. Um, as she was campaigning before she was elected. Okay, so during the course of her campaign, um, we didn't talk as much, obviously, because she was busy. Fulton County is a, a large jurisdiction to cover. Um, so we didn't talk a whole lot, but she did know that I'd gone through the election process. So when things would come up um, that and, she and had questions about, she would call me and ask me. So and just sometimes to be fair, I'll, be I'll only some, know it. Ms. Mercer. Judge, actually, he's not so, asked and answered. And I mean, I don't mind him explaining, but I just wanted to know how many times. I mean, if we talk about every conversation they talked about, I- We right. gotta, gotta let him finish his sentence right. and then if you need to redirect him or have me direct him, I can. Mr. Wade, you can continue. Yes, sir. So, so sometimes it would be like a three-second call. She would go, have you, during your election, have you ever seen this? And I would say, no, but here's what I would do. And we'd hang up. Um, she had a lot of professionals working for her, but um, she trusted my judgment, so she called me. And it, you know, be brief conversations, but okay. she called. So my question was, how frequently did you speak with her prior to her election? I, 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 <laughs> frequently? Infrequently? More than 2019, um, but it wasn't a, a everyday thing, no. In 2021, before you were appointed in November, so January to November 2021, it's the only time I'm talking about, how frequently did you speak with Ms. Willis on the phone? In 2021, then it became frequent. Frequent? Yes. But you did not work at the DA's office at that point, correct? I did not. Um, so the affidavit that you submitted, um, you showed on it, you submitted one record that showed that Ms. Willis had paid a couple hundred dollars for one flight, correct? Say again? The affidavit that you submitted to this court mm -hmm. showed that Ms. Willis had paid for one flight several hundred dollars. Is that correct? Mm, no, ma'am. I think that, are you drawing a distinction for her paying for a flight or for her actually booking a flight? Because there, there's, those are two separate things. It's, I will re-ask re it. Okay. The affidavit you filed in this court, mm -hmm. you alleged that Ms. Willis paid for one flight. Paid for one flight, correct? No, ma'am. You, you did no, not allege she paid for one flight. No, ma'am. What I, what, I what I allege is that our travel was split roughly evenly. So where you see I have booked a flight or I've paid for a flight with my credit card, what you don't see is that she covered her own flight re reimbursement to me. The flights so that... The flights that you see here are the flights that she would have booked with her own resources or to her own car. And there's one flight, correct? One flight reflecting that, that she you actually booked. Flight. Ms. Merchant, let him finish and then you can redirect him. One flight that she actually booked, yes. The other flights I booked, she paid for. So... The affidavit, you submitted one flight that she booked and paid for. Yes, ma'am. Your Honor, I'm, you. I'm going to object to the phrasing of that question. The line in the affidavit is not as Ms. Merchant is representing it. It said examples of the District Attorney, District Attorney Willis purchasing plane tickets for she and I with her personal funds were attached as an exhibit. Mm -hmm. It certainly did not represent that it was the only example of the District Attorney purchasing flights for uh, Mr. Wade or for compensating um, other travel. All right. Understand, Ms. Cross. I think that's something you can, it's now on the record, but also something you can take on Cross. Thank you. And, and just so everybody's clear, all I asked you is your affidavit, you submitted proof of one flight that she paid for and booked. That's all I'm asking. <laughs> Correct? With the explanation, yes, ma'am. Okay. That's all I needed. Um, you said in the affidavit that you roughly shared travel, though, correct? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So this roughly sharing travel, you're saying she reimbursed you? She did. And where did you deposit the money she reimbursed you? Oh, it was cash. She didn't, she didn't give me any checks. 
So she paid you cash for her share of all these vacations. Mr. Schaefer, you'll step out if you do that again. Yes, ma'am. Okay. And so all of the vacations that she took, she paid you cash for. Yes, ma'am. And you purchased all of these vacations on your business credit card, correct? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And you included those in deductions on your taxes, correct? No, ma'am. No, you did not. No, ma'am. Okay. Um, we'll get to that in just a minute then. Let's see. Um, so the only thing that you have actual documentary proof, not cash, is this one receipt that you attached to the affidavit? Is that correct? Your Honor, I object to that question. That is a mischaracterization of the assertion that is in the affidavit. I'm asking. So then he can deny it. <laughs> I think he can fend for himself. Ms. Merchant. Is this the only written proof that you have of a trip she paid for? That I have? Yes. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So you submitted the one piece of written evidence that you have that she paid for something. Everything else is in cash. Is that accurate? No. That's not accurate. Okay. Please tell me, what other receipts do you have then that show that she paid for things? I don't have them. Okay. okay. So this is the only receipt that you have to show that she paid for travel? That I have. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Okay. In your divorce case, you filed a domestic relations financial affidavit, correct? Yes, ma'am. Okay. The first one you filed was in January 2022, right? Thereabout. Yes, ma'am. And those are under oath? Yes. Okay. And um, you also filed corporate taxes in 2022, correct? Yeah. Okay. And um, tell me about your, your business. Are you, do you have a partnership or are you a solo practitioner? As it stands today? Yes. So today um, I have a separate PC, my law partner, has his own separate PC. Okay. So, but we're under the same umbrella, under the same roof. So we share expenses, we share income, and we split it. So are you a partnership? We are a partnership in the sense of we share expenses, we share income. Are you registered with the state of Georgia as a partnership? So the WBC firm that included myself, Terrence Bradley, and Christopher Campbell, we were registered with the mm -hmm. Secretary of State as a partnership right. um, for a short period of time. Um, when yeah, this is all, though, right, in 2023? Yeah, I'm going to object to the witness answer his question. Mr. Wade, did you have something else to add there? I did. Um, when uh, things happened and we excused Mr. Bradley from that partnership, it left... Christopher Campbell and myself. So now you have two separate PCs under the same umbrella, mm -hmm. um, sharing expenses and income. Okay. So let me just narrow down my questions then. Are you registered? And have you been registered at any time in the state of Georgia as Wade and Campbell? Wade, no ma'am. You've never been registered as a partnership. As Wade and Campbell, no ma'am. Wade and Campbell, yes, thank you. But as Wade Bradley Campbell, yes ma'am. Wade Bradley Campbell was registered on April 1st, 2021 and administratively dissolved on September 8th, 2023, correct? Yes ma'am. Okay. Other than that partnership, you have always <laughs> been registered as law office of Nathan Wade. Yes ma'am. Not with Chris Campbell. Correct. Thank you. So the affidavit that you filed in your divorce case, the first one in 2022. I think I'm up to number seven. I'm going to just show you, give you a group of exhibits so we don't have to go back and forth. I'm marking the 2022 as seven. I'm marking the 2024 as eight. I'm marking the, um, the, credit card statements as nine and your taxes as 10. I've got to object to taxes um, because of the relevance of them at this point. Uh, the relevance of this entire business structure doesn't seem clear to me as either impeaching or relevant to the issues at the court's 
uh, under the court's consideration. But insofar as we're talking about tax returns and other things like that, certainly that uh, should be redacted. And uh, I, I would object to the relevance of it. I agree they should be redacted. I don't agree to the relevance, um, but I haven't tried to tender them yet, Judge. I'm just marking them right now so that everyone can follow. All right. And what is uh, the eventual relevance that you were getting at here? Um, well, I'm going to ask him because one of the things that we have to show in this case is a personal and financial interest. So, and he's talked about how he was reimbursed for these things. And so I have a, I have a right to go into the veracity of those statements. All right. <clears throat> um, so let's see, seven, eight, sorry, nine. And then, all right, so right now I'm just going to show you what I've marked um, as these exhibits. Yes, Martin? Mm -hmm. May I see what you're showing? Oh, yeah, of course. They're all from the um, USB drive I gave you. Oh, I have a copy, not other than the drive I gave you. And I'm just so good. May I approach Judge? You may. Starting you what I marked as seven, eight, nine, and ten. All right. Any problem for your reference? All right. So, um, so these are sworn. The, the I'm first going to ask you about the domestic relations financial affidavit. These are sworn. They're filed under oath, correct? Yes, ma'am. And the most recent one that you filed was filed on January 26, 2024. Yes, ma'am. So a few weeks ago. Yes, ma'am. And in that one, you said that you made $9,500 each month, correct? Yes, ma'am. You said that in 2022, well, in 2022, in this case alone, isn't it true you were paid $303,000, over $303,000? I was paid? Yes, in this case, Fulton County, by Fulton County. Ah. Uh. I see where you're going. So. <laughs> and, and Judge, I just asked our, him to answer the question. If he wants to explain it, I've got no problem with right. that. Mr. Wade, just listen to the question asked and, and just ask, answer the question asked. And if, In 2022, isn't it true you were paid over $300,000? No, ma'am, that is not true. You were not paid over $300,000 by Fulton County? No, ma'am, I was not. Okay. How much were you paid in 2022 then? So what I was beginning to explain was. Fulton County wrote a check to my firm. Okay. What happens at that point is the checks are then deposited. As you have the bank statements, you see that. And then they are dispersed between the three of us. So there was Mr. Bradley, there was Mr. Wade, and there was Christopher Campbell. A third, a third, a third. So when you ask me if I was paid $300,000, the answer is no. I got a third of that that went to my personal firm. Now, once the money was distributed to my personal firm, obviously the expenses come out of that, and I get, at the end of the day, whatever the profit is. So I did not get $300,000, no ma'am. And let me just clarify, my question was not, did you put in your pocket $300,000? My question was, was the law firm of Nathan Wade paid over $300,000 in the year 2022? Again, <laughs> a third of that came to the law firm of Nathan Wade. So you're saying that the law firm of Nathan Wade did not receive checks from Fulton County government over $300,000 in the year 2022? That's a different question. Um, a, a third of the 300000 came to Nathan Wade. Okay. Again, I'm not asking what went in your pocket. I'm asking, were, was the law firm of Nathan Wade paid over $300,000 in 2022? 
I'm just asking the answer several times. I know, but I think okay. we're dancing around the, the point there. So final time, Ms. Merchant. That's fine. I can move on, Judge. Thank you. Um, so you said that they were dispersed amongst all of you. Um, or put into an account with all of you. So it's your testimony that for 2022, every check you received from Fulton County government went into an operating account with you, Bradley, and Campbell. No, 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 no. That's not what I testified to. Um, so the, the, the way Bradley and Campbell firm um, es established um, an account mm -hmm. when we decided to purchase a building in 2022, at that point, every piece of income that came into the entity went into that account. Okay. And then after expenses were paid, it was split a third, a third, a third, right? Once that was dissolved, then the funds would go into a different account. Um, my account, one of my accounts. And then I would disperse the funds between now attorney Campbell and myself, one half and one half. Okay. Makes sense. It, it does. Let me, um, let me be more direct then. So the Synovus operating account that you had for Wade Bradley and Campbell. Yes, ma'am. The checks from Fulton County from January of 2022 until June 17th, 2022, those checks were deposited in that operating account. Yes, ma'am. Starting on July 15th, 2022, the checks you received from Fulton County up until May 26, 2022, all went into an escrow account that you had at Fifth Third Bank, correct? No, not all of them. Some not of all them, of them? Some of them, yes. So, so it's your testimony that some of your checks from July 15, 2022, up until May 26, 2023, um, some of them went into an account outside of Fifth Third Bank? You want to know, Jack, to the, the relevance of, of the financial transactions? How much money you made is, is highly relevant in this case. It's the personal financial business and where where the money was. And I mean, it's just to follow up on other things that he's testified to. And why is how much money he made relevant? Because he represented in a, in a it, it's very relevant. He filed an affidavit with the court saying with another court, he told another judge that he made $9,500 a month. That's what he swore to. And all right. So this this entire inquiry is just to try and is to establish that prior and consistent statement. Yes. All right. Um, I, I'll give you a minute or two more to okay. try that, but we're Great. gonna have to move on. Thank you. Um, so I know you're saying that you only got a third of the $300,000, but you were paid over, the firm was paid over $300,000 in 2022, correct? So, Ms. Merchant, it's not what I'm saying. It, 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 they're numbers, they're, they're there. It's, 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 the, it, it's the truth. The, the funds were paid. They were divvied between the three of us, going into an operating account, expenses paid out of it. Okay. At the end of that, the 9,000 figure is what you have. Yes, ma'am. And let's see. Let's... Um... Um, prior to when you filed for divorce in November 2021, um, you would use Mr. Bradley's credit card to pay for things with Ms. Willis, correct? I've and then pay him back in cash. I've never used Mr. Bradley's credit card in my You've life. never used his credit card? Never. For transactions to anything with Ms. Willis, out to dinner, anything like that? I've Hotels. never, I've never used Mr. Bradley's credit card. I've never used anyone else's credit card. Not even my father's, and we have the same name. Um, and you'd pay, pay back, if you ever did use someone's credit card, you'd pay back in cash, though, correct? Ma'am, I've never used someone else's credit card. Um, can you take a look at the bank records that I gave you? That's the largest tab you have. For the record, which exhibit is this? Um, it is exhibit, hold on, Judge. It's exhibit nine. It should be the largest section you got. Your Honor, before there starts qu yes, any questions from the, there, the exhibits haven't been tendered, and I maintain my uh, relevance objection. All right, let's see what the next question is, and maybe then that objection is going to be highly relevant. 
<clears throat> okay. Is that an accurate copy of your Capital One statements that you provided in Discovery to? Um, is that an accurate reflection of your Capital One records? That I provided in Discovery to whom? Um, to your divorce lawyers, or, so, or that you provided in the divorce proceeding. Is the, is the question, does he recognize it by sight? I'm I asking think, if it's his yeah. statements. Yeah. Bank I, statement. I think that is the question. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's, it's a thick document, but I, I believe you if you say that, that this, is, this is what my wife's divorce lawyer gave you. I believe it. Your name's on every page of that document, correct? On every page? Pretty much every page. It's not every page. No, it's not on every page. No, ma'am. They're all Capital One bank records. Sure. They are. Okay. Just take your time. Look through it. Tell me if there's anything that you think is not yours. No, no. They appear to be. Okay. Um, and those bank records show that you paid for travel with Miss Willis. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going to object the relevance of these documents and the... Um... Well, I think, are you tendering uh, Exhibit 9? I'm going to, Judge, and they're highly relevant to the, the whole Well, reason. you've asked them a question about the contents of them, and mm -hmm. they haven't been admitted yet, so why don't we start there? Thanks. Those show travel that you and Ms. Willis took. Well, well, so you're asking about the contents of something that hasn't been admitted yet, right? Well, I'm asking them if that's what it shows, because I know that they're going to object on relevance. Well, first we've got to say if it's, uh, you've authenticated it, perhaps, and before we get into other details of what's in it, I think I it needs to be admitted. I move to admit them. All uh, right. Object on relevance. On relevance. All right. And on that uh, overruled, Ms. Merchant. Thank you. Um, those records demonstrate that you paid for travel with yourself and Ms. Willis, correct? They, sh they should. Okay. And let's just talk about that travel. Okay. Um, the first trip is Belize in March 2023. Is that a trip that you took with Ms. Willis? Are you asking? Did you take a trip with Ms. Willis in 2023 to, to Belize. Belize? I did. Did you take a trip to California with Ms. Willis in 2023? I did. Did you pay for those trips on that credit card? I used the credit card to book the, the travel, but un understand. She that, paid you back cash. Well, let me say this. Let's take the Belize trip, for example, since okay. you started there. That was a birthday gift to me, so I paid nothing for that trip, zero. Okay. So the, the charges that are on your card, she gave you cash for? She did. Okay, so it, all of the charges. It's, excuse me, I don't believe the witness had finished answering the question. Oh, did you have more? I did. Okay. Um, I, I wanted to get into the, the charges on the, the, the card because so traveling with her um, is, is, a, is a task. You can probably imagine the uh, attention that that happens. So, for safety reasons, um, she would limit her transactions. Um, I mean, imagine trying to walk through an airport or sit at a restaurant or do anything. Um, so, th there was no, th there's no attempt to. Con conceal is a credit card. Everything is here. So, and, and that's not what I asked. Okay. Um, what I asked was the charges for Belize in March 2023 on that credit card. Those are things you purchased to go with Miss Way with Miss Willis to Belize. Those right? are those are things that we booked with my card that yes. she paid. Yes. Yes. So those show up on your credit card. They do. And you're saying that she paid you cash to reimburse you for all of that. She did. And she paid you cash for both of your portions or just hers? Both. Okay. So that trip, Belize, just Belize, she paid you for everything on Belize. The entire trip. Okay. So the food, tattoo parlor, all that stuff, she paid for. I'm going <coughs> to... I'm sorry, I didn't hear the question. There was no, there, there was no tattoo parlor in Belize. Man. The charges, there's a... There's a tattoo parlor on the charges. I, I'm not getting into what it was for. I'm just asking if everything that's on that card related to Belize, she paid you back for. She paid for, yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, let's talk about California in May 2023. You all went to California together. Yes. And you booked plane tickets. Yes. And her name was on those plane tickets. They were. 
And so I know you said that you were worried about security and things like that, but that was in her name. When she traveled, she had to use her name. Oh, so the, the plane tickets? Yes, ma'am. Mm-hmm. Okay. And you paid for those plane tickets and you paid for a hotel. So, again, the, the, the card, yes. You used your credit card, and I'm not asking about after what happened. I'm asking, did you use your credit card to book your flight and hotel to California? I did. And um, there's a lot of Ubers on there as well for California. Did you pay for those Ubers as well? Yes. Didn't we were in Napa. And you're saying that Miss Willis, are you saying that Miss Willis paid you back for that? Yes. Did she pay for the entire trip or did she pay for her half of the trip? The, the Napa trip? Mm-hmm. She paid for the excursions. So the, the, it, the expenses sort of balanced out. I mean, there was never, let me be clear, there was never a time when I would say, hey, I bought dinner. Dinner cost $25. You need to give me $25. Yeah. If, if you've ever spent any time with Miss Willis, you understand that she's a very independent, proud woman. I'd object. We're not- so she's going to... Oh. De- I'm overruled, Mr. Wade. So she's going to oh. insist that she carries her own weight. And it, it, it actually was a point of contention between the two of us. She is going to pay her own way. So let me re-ask the question to make sure that you answer it. A California trip that you paid for, you saying that she did not pay you back for cash. Instead, she paid for excursions, and you believe that was roughly half. You no, know, she gave me some cash, yes. She but what I'm saying cash. is the, the ex- everything that we did when we got into Napa, mm-hmm. she paid for. The trip that she booked on her credit card in Miami... Did you pay her cash back for your half of that? No. So you never paid no. her back for the ticket she bought for you? No, no. I would say I did pay her back because there were times when I would pay for dinner. Okay. She would pay for dinner. It would balance out. But in a relationship, ma'am, you don't, particularly men, um, we don't go asking back for anything. So you're not keeping a ledger of things that you pay for versus the thing that she's paid for, um, which is why I said that it, it was a point of contention because she was very emphatic and adamant about this independent, strong woman thing. So she demanded that she pay her own way. Um, but she's the district attorney of Fulton County, and she has to file financial disclosures, disclosing any gifts with anybody that she does business with in Fulton County, correct? I, I'm, I don't know. Okay. Um, let's talk about Tennessee. You booked a cabin in August 2023 and paid for a cabin in Tennessee. That's when you paid for it. I don't know when the trip was. Can you tell us about that? August of 2023? Mm-hmm. You booked a trip for $1,481.54. Are you, are you asking me, did I take that trip with Miss? Willis, or are you asking me? First, I was just asking you to acknowledge that that is correct from the records, that you paid for a cabin in Tennessee. Do you recall, and hopefully you can do it from your memory, do you recall paying for a cabin six months ago, $1,400.81 in Tennessee? Where, 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 Where are we now? What page is that? I'm just asking from your memory. Do you remember paying for a cabin in August? Your Honor, if, the, if he's going to be asked about a particular transaction... I think you can answer whether he remembers or not. <coughs> I don't re- Mr. Wade, I'm, I'm not asking you to go through a thousand pages of records. I'm asking if you remember paying for a cabin six months ago in Tennessee. No. You remember booking a cabin? I booked lots of cabins. Did you go to a cabin with Miss Willis ever? Ever. Ever. No. Never gone to a cabin with Miss Willis. No. Um, have you ever gone to Tennessee with Miss Willis? Yes. Okay. When was that? 
that was around 2022, early 2022. Early 2022? Okay. It was a, it was a, a, a day trip. Um, okay. So you didn't spend we a night? Would, so it was a day trip. Okay. We would drive there, have lunch, drive back. Um, the reason we would do that is because the attention, she couldn't get any peace of mind going locally. So we'd get in my car and, and drive to someplace off the beaten path and have lunch and drive back. Is that when you went to feigning goat with her? I think it's in Jasper, Georgia. No, that's that's in Georgia. I don't, I don't, I don't recall going to feigning goat with her. So the Tennessee day trip, day trips were not were only Tennessee. Yes. Okay. Did you ever do these day trips in Georgia? Do we drive anywhere in Georgia? Yeah, you were you of were talking course. about day trips yeah, we going drove, out, we, out, and I'm talking about outside of the metro area. Day trips that you were just talking about, these trips you were talking about, the ones that you were, I'm only asking about the ones you were just talking about. Are all of those in Tennessee? No, we drove to Alabama before. Okay, back. You drove to Alabama. Mm-hmm. Um, did you go anywhere in Georgia? North Georgia. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to object if she wants to direct his attention in some way to a time frame or a location, then I think it might be easier for the witness right. to accurately answer. Ms. Merchant, I think if you don't have the specific details yourself, mm-hmm. uh, we need to start getting into specifics or more maybe broadly phrased questions. Um, um, we it, can't just be... Is it is it fair <clears throat> to say that you've taken so many trips with her you don't even really remember all the places you've gone? So many trips? You're having trouble remembering going if you went to North Georgia or not. Were you asking me about specific places? And I, I want to be candid in my responses. So I have to jog my memory because these are places that I have frequented, but not with her. So I want to make certain that if there was ever a time that she accompanied me, that I was candid in that response. Okay. Um. Aruba, October 2022. And I've got um, business records sort of get for these judge. It might be a little faster. Um, but did you, did you take a trip with her to Aruba in 2022? Yes, ma'am. So that Aruba trip um, was, so there was a package deal there. We, um, my mother had recently retired and I, decided to take my mother on a cruise. Okay. Um, and the second leg after the cruise concluded, um, D.A. Willis and I went to Aruba. So that was all one one trip, if you will. Okay. So my question was, did you go with D.A. Willis to Aruba in 2022? I did. Thank you. <clears throat> and you paid for that trip using your business credit card, Correct. I did. Okay. And you paid for a cruise as well, correct? That That's the cruise I was referencing with D.A. Willis, my mother, and myself. Okay. And let, let, cause there's two cruises. So let's just talk about the first one. Okay. So the first one was, um, you took, that's the one with your mother. Yes. And so you introduced D.A. Willis to your mother, that trip. You all took a cruise together, the three of you. Yes. After the cruise was done, you and D.A. Willis flew to Aruba together and your mom flew home. Yes. And you paid for all of this with your credit card, on your business credit card. I did. And are you saying that Ms. Willis paid you cash back for that? She did. And now, no, but, but let, let me make this distinction, though. Um, because the, the number that you're looking at reflects the three people on the cruise ship. There were things that my mother and I did, um, just the two of us, that D.A. Willis didn't, didn't do. And, and, and I'm not attributing that. I did not. My math is not good, but I did not include anything with your mother um, on well, those. Can well, I show? Would, you wouldn't be able to see it because it's not separated out. 
um, it, it just shows a charge on the on the uh, on the account when actually it would have been something with my mother and I. Um, Judge May approached with exhibits ten and eleven. They're both certified business records from ones from Vacation Express, ones from H two. Thought ten was taxes. I'm sorry, eleven and twelve. Yeah, for sure. Okay. Thank you. And um, these are business records, Judge. They have the certification, so I need to admit them. All right. Uh, defense 11 and 12. Ms. Cross? Based on Ms. Merchant's representation that they are true and accurate as to the certification that was provided to her, um, we have no question. All right. Again, seeing no other objection, they're admitted. Um, so the trip, just the trip to Aruba alone, for you and DA Willis was $3,835.26, correct? Just Aruba. I'm looking for the um, the amount. She's questioning about 11 or 12. This one is 11. Yes, ma'am, $3,835.26. And then the Royal Caribbean for just you and Miss Willis was $1,269.70, correct? No, ma'am. Your mother's got a different line item on there. <clears throat> I'm talking about the cruise, the actual cruise cabin. I think you need to rephrase that as in the form of a question, Ms. Merchant. Did you pay Royal Caribbean for yours and Ms. Willis's cabin $1,269.70? Where are we? Which page? We're on the receipts. There's, there's just a few pages of receipts um, on exhibit number 11. Okay. I'm in 11. Can you direct me to where you are on ele in exhibit 11? Royal Caribbean. So we've got your flights on the one page, which I already asked you about for Aruba. And then, and just for the record, I blacked out their um, dates of birth. And then Royal Caribbean may be on, oh, it's small. It's hard to read. Um, very hard to read. So let me just keep it this way. You recall paying around $1,269.70 for Royal Caribbean cruise for you and Ms. Willis. You don't remember that? I, that, that? That amount seems kind of small. I, I don't I think it's- So you believe it was higher? Yeah. Okay. Um, while you were in Aruba, then you bought a cruise, a Norwegian cruise, right? And that was the New Year's Eve cruise? While I was in Aruba, no, ma'am. Um, the credit card documents that were ex um, admitted earlier show the purchase date when you were in Aruba, but you don't remember doing that in Aruba? I didn't, I didn't purchase a, a cruise while I was in Aruba. That may be when the cruise company decided to run the invoice, but I didn't, I didn't purchase a cruise in Aruba, no ma'am. Around the time you went to Aruba, you purchased a cruise for Norwegian for you and Miss Willis to take for New Year's, correct? Before I went to Aruba, yes ma'am. And that was roughly 3300 and. $87, the cruise to Aruba. I mean, the cruise to, I'm sorry, the, cru the, um, the Norwegian cruise. So that cruise was with my sisters. Okay. Um, and the, the number that you are, are seeing would reflect um, my buying dinner for my sisters and their husbands. Or I'm just talking about the cruise, the amount that was paid for the cruise ahead of time when you booked the cruise. I'm just talking about that. Okay. That, that was a little over $3,000. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So, and I understand you, you're saying you paid for other things, but I'm just talking about the cruise amount. And you paid for a Jeep and you paid for dinner while you were there in Bahamas. Yes, ma'am. That's the one that Miss Willis paid for a flight for, correct? That's one of the flights she paid for. Yes, ma'am. Actually, a, a document it paid for, not cash. I'm talking about a non-cash -tra transaction. That's what she paid for. You, you, you mean the one that I provided 
the the receipt for. Yes. Yes, ma'am. That's that. Okay. And um, so she booked that on her credit card and wasn't worried about, I know you said earlier that you were booking everything because she was worried about people knowing where she was traveling. She didn't have any fears booking that one though, correct? I'm going to object to the phrasing of that question is to speculate as to what was the motivation of the district attorney. If she wants to ask that that was the transaction, that he can respond that that was a transaction. Uh, Ms. Merchant, I think you can rephrase the question, but I'll sustain it on that current phrasing. Um, so she purchased that under her own name, correct? She did. Okay. Um, let's see. So I know we talked a little bit about the seminar where you all met. Um, isn't it true that you would go to Miss Willis's house in South Fulton County? I've, I've occasionally. Never, I've never gone to her house in South Fulton County. You've never gone to her house in South Fulton County? seen her house. The first time I even heard the address of that house was when um, one of the individuals in the, uh, the election fraud case somehow doxed it and it got out. That was the first time I'd even seen that address. Um, but you would go to the East Point condo, correct? What East Point condo? East Point, Hapeville, something like that. I've, I've never been to East Point with Miss Willis. You've never gone to you've never gone to a condo in either the East Point or Hapeville area with Miss Willis. Wait, that's different. I have gone to a condo in Hapeville. Okay, so Hapeville. Yes, ma'am. So you have gone to a condo with Miss Willis in Hapeville. I have. Have you spent the night there? Never. Never spent the night. Never. Is that the condo that was rented by Robin Yerdy? I believe it was. And um, other members of the DA staff were there as well, correct? Sometimes. I, I've, I've never been around other members of the DA staff at a, a condo in Hapeville. There's never been any security for Ms. Willis? Not around me. Um, did you ever ride with Ms. Willis with her security detail to and from the house? No. Um, you served on Ms. Willis's transition team, correct? Yes. And you were part of all of her interviews where she interviewed and re-interviewed employees? I would say n probably 98, 99% of them, yes. Um, is it fair to say you took an active role in these interviews? Yes, ma'am. But prior to this, you'd never worked at a DA's office, right? Have I ever worked in her DA's office? At no, ma'am. any ma DA's office. Any DA's office. No, ma'am. Um, have you ever managed a large law firm or a Your large? Honor, I'm going to object to the relevance of these questions. Ms. Merchant. He served on her transition team. And so, I mean, what we're trying to prove is that there's a personal and financial relationship and that it was improper. Um, and so, you know, whether or not he had experience to serve on this transition team, I think is relevant. Right. I think I already said that we don't need the evidentiary okay. hearing on that point. So that's sustained. Um, Terrence Bradley also received a contract for Fulton County, correct? Correct. You're asking me about Terrence? I asked if Terrence Bradley also received a contract for Fulton County. I believe that he did. And you were partners with him at that time, correct? I was. So under what you testified to earlier, you would get a third of that contract as well, correct? I would have. And Chris Campbell also had a contract with Fulton County. I believe he did. And so under what you've testified to, you would also get a third of that, correct? I would. Um they both had contracts for what are called first appearance, which is where they would appear on behalf of the district attorney to do first appearance hearings, correct? I believe they, I believe they did. Okay. And um, they also had what's called a taint contract. Um, they uh, both entered into them January 25th, 2021, correct? Filter, yes, ma'am. Taint or filter? Yes, ma'am. And that was for work in the anti-corruption unit? I don't, I don't know that it was anti-corruption. I, I think that it was uh, civil rights, maybe. And, and Judge, the, um, the DA's or Fulton County's come and I guess brought a certificate now, so um, we would move to admit the contracts. I've got those um, under that certificate. I was planning on doing it under the open records officer, but I believe now they've certified it. I do, haven't looked at everything they've certified, though, so. 
I'm going to ask right. that the document be um, looked at and confirmed prior to its tender. All right, Ms. Merchant, is there anything else? Uh, what other areas were you planning to cover on his direct other than these documents? Um, I'm planning on introducing all of the contracts and invoices, but be, I haven't had a chance to look at what Fulton County certified. Um, so I'm planning on introducing those and then um, not much. Can we do the not much? Hmm? And then we'll do the not much and then we'll get back to the contracts. Okay. Yeah, definitely. Um, okay, so this taint taint contract, um, and, and we're not admitting these right now, but if I represent to you that they say anti-corruption unit, um, can you tell us what a taint attorney for an anti-corruption unit would do? I, I didn't have a part in those contracts. Man. They were your partners at the time, though, correct? Oh, absolutely. Okay. And so you didn't have a part in those contracts, but you got a third of the contract payment. Oh, absolutely. Okay. So the taint contracts that Bradley and Campbell, who are your law partners— at the time, had for doing taint review, you got a third of those. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, you signed a confidentiality agreement with the DA's office as well, correct? I did. And I think I'm up to Judge 13. Marking that as number 13. No. May I approach, Judge? You may. Showing you a copy of what I marked as number 13. Um, if you could take a look at that and tell me if that is the confidentiality agreement that you signed with the district attorney office. It is. And this basically says you can't talk about anything that happens inside the DA's office, right? No. It doesn't say you can't talk about it? No, no, no. You said it basically says that I can't talk about anything that happens inside the DA's office, and that's not what... Are you tendering this exhibit? Ms. I Marshall? am, yes. Um, we would tender 13. Ms. Cross. Fail to see the relevance. So I'd, I'd lodge a relevance objection, but otherwise something else. Ms. Merchant, relevance to this? Judge, it's relevant to his testimony. If he signed an agreement that says he can't talk about things that happen in the district attorney's office, I think that's relevant to, to this. I also think... How? That he, because it's motivation in his testimony. I mean, whether or not he's going to testify to something. He's it's also not, been certified. I mean, it's part of the record as from what Fulton County gave us. Um, sure, but he hasn't said that that's preventing him from testifying in any way today, is it? Well, and I can ask him about that. Okay, yeah. Mr. Wade, is this confidential agreement affecting your testimony today? No, sir. Okay. All right. That's fine. Right. Um, the contracts judge... Um, and the invoices that I wanted to admit, I wanted to admit all of his invoices and contracts with um, Fulton County. I have them certified. I, I guess I have them certified through Fulton County, so I wasn't sure if I needed to do that. I just wanted to know if the state had an objection to those before. Well, they haven't had a, I don't think they've had a chance to look at them. So is that that's the sole remaining uh, exhibit in line of questioning here? Yes. And in terms of the follow-up questions, would it just be for him to say what's reflected in these documents themselves? If they have an objection to the certificates that Fulton County has given, I would admit them through him because he could recognize right, them. But assuming they're admitted, would there actually be anything substantive that he would add other than the documents themselves? No. All right. Okay. So subject to that qualification, do you have any other uh, questions of this witness? Uh, may I just have a moment? Sure. Thank you. Is it possible actually we take a <clears throat> quick break? We're getting there. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. And, Your Honor, we certainly had the opportunity over lunch to take a look at these documents and work out whatever we could. Um, did you discuss your relationship with Ms. Willis in social settings? Help me understand your question. Did you discuss your relationship with Ms. Willis in social settings? No, I heard the question. I just, I just need to understand what you're asking me. Like, uh, like what, what relationship when... Your personal relationship with Ms. Willis, unqualified, I'm sorry. Did you discuss your personal relationship, your private personal romantic relationship with Ms. Willis in social settings? No, ma'am. You've never discussed it in social settings? No, ma'am. Um, did you ever discuss it in front of Robin Yurdy in a non-social setting? No, ma'am. Ms. Ms. Willis is a very, as am I, uh, we're, we're private people, not our relationship wasn't a secret it was just private so n not at all I, I wouldn't have discussed my relationship with with miss yurdy or anyone else publicly okay i actually did have some questions just about the um the invoices if we want to just 
These are the documents that you're referring yeah, to? Yeah, they are. It's all of his invoices. And, I mean, and what kind of questions would these be other than the invoices say what they say? It just that, yes, that they say what they say. All right. Just talk about them. That's fine. No. All right. Thank you. All right. At this point, uh, we'll take a break. I'll ask uh, the parties to take a look at what did you, had you marked that as a defense exhibit? Um, I have his contracts and his invoices that I'm about to mark. Um, so before he leaves me, I just want to make sure that the state doesn't have any objections. But those are marked as? They're about to be marked. Um, at exhibit 14. 14, 15, 16, 17, and 18. All right, so 14 through 18. So let's state take a look at those. I will take a look at those and see if I can um, right. match them up with the certified documents that were presented. All right, and then we'll address whether they are tendered for the record when we come back. And from there, then we would turn over to the remainder of defense counsel and then the state for any uh, examination as well. So to that end, uh, let's take 45 minutes. We'll be back at one o'clock. Mr. Wade, uh, you're still under oath and I'd ask you not to speak um, with any other witnesses about your testimony or about any testimony that's already occurred. Yes, sir. All right. We'll be in recess. <clears throat>
We're ready to proceed, Your Honor. I don't have to say you can handle your part. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, and you even got the screen protector back. More important. All right, ready, Miss Taylor. All right, we're back on the record. And Ms. Cross, did you have enough time to review the production of documents provided by Fulton County? I did. Ms. Merchant had marked defense exhibits 14, 15, 16, 17, and 18. And so far as exhibits 15, 16, 17, and 18, there's a document that I recognize, and I don't have any objection to those. Uh, they clearly came from Fulton County. However, that's exhibit number 14 contains several items that did not come apparently from Fulton County. And I'm standing next to Ms. Merchant to show her. Okay, they're not in that group of. I don't know. The county attorney, I have no idea what they did, but I got them from the county attorney. So if we need to back into the schedule. Uh, I can't agree that the documents that are not in the certified bundle yeah. are properly admitted <laughs> as part of the exhibit. Okay, uh, Ms. Merchant, would you like to repackage and present to Ms. Cross at Defense Exhibit 14? Um, I don't, they're exactly what I got from the county attorney. <clears throat> Apparently they didn't want to testify. So they gave us a certification, but didn't put these in. So they're going to have to testify if they're disputed because I got them from them. Uh, the documents that the difference between the two document productions is what is the difference? They didn't even credits, get these. Bank records, credit card statements, things like that, that um, wouldn't uh, ordinarily be part in course of the Fulton County records. Mm -hmm. But I got them from the open records portal. So, that, I mean, that's where I printed them. No, I understand. And, and, but the difference in production, Ms. Merchant, you've taken, a, you've taken a look at them and they're actually material to your case? Yes. In what way? They're all of his invoices, Judge. And then he has like a, it's just, this is what I got from them. It's all of his invoices. And one of the invoices is a reimbursement that he printed some things. And put like for the reimbursement. Okay. I mean, I don't really care if they take the reimbursement out because they actually are already admitted in the other exhibit I did. I, I don't have any problem with the invoices. The invoices are clearly the records and contained in the certification. So if we remove the items that, mm -hmm. that they're already are in. in dispute, then I don't have an objection to the exhibit. They're already in and included. So you're removing them? Yeah, that's fine. You want to take them out? All right. So again, let's sure. have opposing counsel look at a revised exhibit 14 and then I'll hear whether there's any objection. Thank you, Millie. The revised exhibit number 14 contains only the invoices that were submitted and the state has no objection. To All right, then uh, not seeing any other issues from other council, we'll Note exhibits 14 through 18 have been admitted for the record without objection. Uh, I think at this point it'd be good to make sure we've got, I think, one through 18 with the court reporter. Others, but do you want me to give them to the witness? Let's, uh, well, I don't, if he's done looking at them, let's just get them all compiled and organized and with the court reporter in case other defense counsel are going to reference them. No, it wasn't for him to have them all. Was, we just need to have one through 18 oh, organized sorry. with the court reporter. Yeah. So you want me to take all the exhibits back from him? I think we ought to do that. Thank you. <clears throat> is that stuff? Yeah, that's not. That's not. This is most. Okay. I'll organize. <clears throat> all right. As Ms. Merchant is doing that, let me go down the list. Mr. Sadow. Mr. Gill is going to ask. 
some uh, questions that I was going to ask. I'd like to be able to just follow up if there's anything that's a job that will work. Let me just let me just to keep it consistent. I'll go in order. So, um, the Mr. Say now is deferring. Then I'll go to Mr. Stocks. Mr. Durham, on no, Zoom. No, Your Honor. All right, Mr. McDougald. I will defer to Mr. Gillen. All right, Mr. Rice. Defer to Mr. Gillen. All right, thank you, Mr. Gillen. Thank you, Your Honor. <clears throat> uh, good afternoon, Mr. Wade. Good afternoon, sir. A few uh, follow-up questions. I'd like to start off with the exhibit number four that you should have up there. Those are the interrogatories. No, sir. They're, they're not up there. We remember I asked her to compile them all. So I'm now sorry. you can grab them. Yes, sir. Okay. Now, these are the interrogatories that you had filed on uh, May the 30th, 2023 in your divorce case, correct? Yes, sir. Now, you went over in part some of those interrogatories, but I, what I want you to do, because I, I, I want to get down to the specific language to clear up exactly what the interrogatories asked for, and exactly what you answered, okay? Yes, sir. Now, if we look on the interrogatory that uh, I believe, as we indicated, they're, they're really, I think, on page two, uh, the one that's, that starts off, describe each instance in which you've had sexual relations. You see that one? Yes, sir. All right. Now, that interrogatory uh, begins, describe each instance in which you have had sexual relations with a person other than your spouse during the course of the marriage, including the period of separation. You see that? Yes, sir. Now, these were filed on May the 30th, 2023, correct? Yes, sir. Now, at that time, uh, you had had sexual relations with Miss Willis, correct? Well, Your Honor, I'm going to um, object to the question as phrased. I think the question is properly at that time, um, certainly asked about his answer, but I... I, I Object to you. Right, Mr. Gillen, I just ask you to rephrase, but I think you can make the same point. Well, Your Honor, it's a specific interrogatory, and I would, you know, so the words do matter. And I would like him to answer uh, whether or not he'd had sexual relations with Ms. Willis, because uh, if he answered yes, then this interrogatory is a, uh, is a false interrogatory. So I would ask the court's indulgence. I'm not here to jump into some salacious um, bedroom situation. But this is an inter interrogatory that matters, so I would ask the court's indulgence. Ms. Cross. These questions have been asked and answered several times. I understand Mr. Gillen is coming at it uh, from a different way, but this question is not substantively different than those that have already been asked and answered in the information that he is seeking. All right. Um, Mr. Gillen, I'll, uh, I'll allow maybe this question in one more, but uh, I think you are asking it in a different way, and I'll ask you to stick to the point. All right. Now, as of May the 30th, and may, may, may I... Ask the question that I, uh, the, okay, thank you, Your Honor. Um, as of May the 30th, 2023, you had had sexual relations with Ms. Willis. Isn't that correct? The, the interrogatory, sir, asks during the course of the marriage and the period of separation. Excuse me. My response. Your Honor, I would ask that the court direct the witness to answer my question, yes or no. As of May the 30th, 2023, had you or had, had you had sexual relations with Ms. Willis? Yes or Mr. No? Gillen, I, if. Let's start with uh, at the higher level whether he believes he answered it truthfully, and then we can get, uh, drill down into why or why not he doesn't, and maybe we'll end up exactly where you left us. Well, it, but again, Your Honor, the point of it is is that the words matter, and that we have to establish what did and did not happen, and then he can give whatever uh, explanation he chooses to to what apparently yeah. is a false answer. But I would like an answer yeah. to my question. And you may get one. I just would ask, I would like us to start at a high level before we drill down into specifics to see whether he actually contradicted that interrogatory, if I'm making sense. Well, uh, the interrogatory is rel relatively direct and explicit. Sexual relationships with a person other than your spouse during the course of the marriage including the period of separation. That's pretty simple. Sure. Let's uh -huh. let's see if uh, 
If that's something you can get him to admit. You did have sexual relationships with someone other than your spouse during the course of the marriage uh, and during the period of separation, which included up to May the 30th, 2023. Isn't that correct, sir? The, the, my answer to this interrogatory is none, is no. So you're saying that you did not have sexual relationships with anyone uh, outside of your marriage, and the period of separation is during the period then you're answering the question to this interrogatory, correct, sir? I'm saying during the course of my marriage, I did not have sexual relations to anyone, and this answer is no. Well, again, Your Honor, I, I understand. Need to, you can proceed, Mr. Gale. I need to. We need a yes or no. <clears throat> Let's just get down to it. Did you or did you not, by May the 30th, <clears throat> 2023, have had sexual relations with Miss Willis? Yes or no? Yes or no? Yes. Okay. Now, <clears throat> what you did is you answered no to that question, didn't you, or none, correct? I didn't answer no to the question you just asked. I answered no to the interrogatory question. And the interrogatory stands uh, that you answered as a pleading in a, in, a, uh, in, a, in a civil proceeding, your divorce case, right? Yes. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> excuse me. The next interrogatory, let's move there. That interrogatory states as follows. Identify any and all occasions in which you entertain a member of the opposite sex other than your spouse who is not related to you by blood or marriage. Um, you see that? I do. You, uh, now, uh, there are two parts to this. The second part is, I read on, or in which a member of the opposite sex other than your spouse, not related to you by blood or marriage, entertained you. And then it goes on to say, including but not limited to dining, drinking, <clears throat> in restaurants, bars, pubs, hotels. You see that, correct? I do. Now, as of May the 30th, 2023, when you filed this interrogatory, you had, in fact, entertained Miss Willis on many occasions, had you not? Again, during the course of the marriage, the marriage was irretrievably broken in 2015. Well, the, answer's, the answer's still no. Let's read what the interrogatory says about the time period required to answer the interrogatory. Because what it says is, uh, it goes on to say, including you, including but not uh, limited to dining and or drinking at any restaurants, bars, pubs, hotels, or persons' homes from the date of marriage to the present. Do you understand what the word present means? I do. And present means the filing on May the 30th, 2023. Isn't that right? It is. So as of May the, tw the 30th, 2023, you have done a lot, or you had done a lot of entertaining of Miss Willis, had you not? I had done some, yes. And in fact, under your testimony, uh, you would have said that she had also entertained you. Isn't that correct? Yes. And so your answer to this interrogatory is false, is it not, sir? No, it's not false. Uh, well, I hate to dance around the, you know, you, 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 the answer is yes, you did entertain Miss Willis, correct? Right? Yes. She's not, she's not uh, your spouse at that time or any time, correct? That's correct. She's not related to you by blood or marriage, correct? That's correct. But she entertained her, right? Yes. And during the course from your marriage, the period of time up to the press. So the answer would have been, yes, I did entertain somebody, correct? During the course of the marriage, no. Mr. Wade. Uh, Mr. Gillen, I think we've, we've made our point. I think it speaks for itself, and we can save that for, for argument. But may, I'll just follow up with one quick question. Do you understand what the word present means? Your Honor, that's been asked and answered. I think we did cover that already as well. Okay. Now, <clears throat> what has happened uh, from the time that you filed this court document in May of 2023, let's go over some of the things that you uh, had been involved in in terms of being entertained or entertaining. Prior to your filing on the answer on the, the interrogatories on May the 30th, 2023, we've already established, have we not, that you had paid for a uh, Royal Caribbean cruise to the Bahamas uh, with Miss Wells, correct? 
Yes, sir, with Miss Willis and my mother. Well, uh, your mother's not a part of this interrogatory. I'm talking about Miss Willis, okay? <laughs> so you paid uh, and, and, and caused to be paid approximately $3,335 on that trip, Bahamas trip from uh, October the 28th through October the 31st, correct? Your Honor, no. objection. I think we've said this ground several times already. Mr. Gillen, let's, let's cover new ground. Well, I am I'm just trying to establish with specificity the things that he had done to entertain or be entertained prior to May the 30th 2023, I'll try to move through it quickly. Sure. Well, uh, that's already part of the record in, in terms of his prior testimony. And so if you want to link those things to those two things together, you can do that during argument. Well, uh, so let me then let me discuss this. You indicated that during the course of your explanation concerning the Belize trip, that Miss <coughs> Willis, pay, uh, that Miss Willis paid you all that money back in cash. Remember? Yes, sir. Now, the Belize trip had just happened, hadn't it? That occurred in March 18th, 2023, right? Yes, sir. So you're filing this maybe two months after you have gone to Belize with Ms. Willis, correct? Yeah, again, I believe all of this is our- I think, I think you might be getting somewhere new. We'll see. Yes, sir. So we've got the trip in, we've got the trip in uh, to Belize on, on March the 18th, 2023. You and Ms. Willis, correct? Yes, sir. Now, two months later, you file the interrogatories that speak for themselves that we've gone over in a few a few minutes ago, correct? Yes, sir. Now, the March the 18th, 2023, to state the obvious, is before March, excuse me, May the 30th, 2023. Will you agree with me on that? I do. Okay. So then you tell us that Miss Willis uh, paid you in cash. All the money for the entire trip. That was a gift for you for your birthday, correct? Yes, sir. And I'm sure you probably have the deposit slips where you took the cash and deposited the cash into your account, don't you? I did not deposit the cash in my account. You don't have a single solitary deposit slip to corroborate or support any of your allegations that you were paid by Mrs. Willis in cash, do you? No, sir. Not a single solitary one? Not a one. Now, uh, when Miss Willis would pay you in cash, would you scamper down to the T uh, ATM with her and as she drew money out of her account Your to Honor. pay you these thousands of dollars? Mr. Gillen might scamper, but there's been no evidence that uh, Mr. Wade does. I object to the phrasing, the argumentative nature of the question. All right, uh, on that issue overruled. Did you and Miss Wade scamper down to the ATM machine and have her dry out? Uh, for example, on the Belize trip, just on, on uh, your payment would have been uh, $2,794. Miss Wade? For Claire, yeah, thank you. Pardon me? Miss Wade and I didn't didn't go to Belize. No, I'm, excuse me, uh, Miss Willis, I'm, I'm sorry. Did you go down to the ATM with Miss Willis while she drew out $2,794 mm -hmm. to pay you in cash that you did? did that, did she? Did you go to the ATM with? with <laughs> no, sir. She didn't go to the ATM. She carried the cash. Oh, and so she would give you the cash. And do you have a little place in your house where you just stack up all this cash that you apparently got to repay you for these benefits that you bestowed on her? No, Mr. Gillen. If I answered that, I'm putting myself in jeopardy. That by if I tell the world that I have cash someplace in my home, don't you think that? Could be problematic. No, I don't. I want an answer as to whether or not you have a little cash hoard in your house where you have allegedly taken the money that you got from Mrs. Willis and went and put it somewhere. Where'd no, you put it? No, sir. Now, just put it on the hip and kind of walk around money? Did I put it on my hip? And, and, yeah, just and, walking around money where you would spend the cash yourself? Let me finish. Did I put it on my hip in Belize and walk around with no, it? When you got paid back, would you take the money, the cash that she gave you, and would you just carry it around with you for spending money around town? So we, we have to break down each trip because, for example, for the cruise, she paid me the money before we took the cruise. So I was here and I could put the money in my pocket or put it away wherever I wanted to do with it. Um, other trips, she would give me the money there. So at that point, I could either spend it or put it in my pocket or put it in the hotel safe. 
there, there's no special place that you would have all this cash that you would be getting from her that you've told us about that, to pay back for the benefits that you have bestowed on her? The only special place that that cash would have gone would have been to one of my children. Okay. Now, are you aware, um, ha have you discussed these pleadings with Ms. Willis? No, sir. So there's been no discussion between you and Ms. Willis about uh, the allegation concerning the benefits that you have bestowed on her. Is that's that correct? The phrasing the benefits bestowed upon her, I don't believe that's an accurate reflection of the testimony, and I don't think that's an appropriate question. I think overruled. You can answer the question. Okay. When you said proceedings, are you talking about the divorce proceedings? Because we were talking about the interrogatories. To that no. question, the answer is no. If you're at, go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead with your answer. I want, I'll hear the complete answer, then I'll follow up. Okay. If you're asking me about <clears throat> this hearing, the proceedings of this hearing, have we discussed the, the financial piece based upon Mr. Roman's motion? Yes. So you have discussed the financial piece. When did that, where did that discussion take place? Conference room. Were you other people there, or were you and Ms. Willis discussing this about what your position was going to be? The relevance of this. No? Mr. Gillen? Yeah, the relevance has to do with, with uh, suddenly we have a declaration from, from Mr. Wade in this case, where he says roughly equal and then shows one uh, alleged payment by Ms. Willis. No mention of cash, none. So I need to find out a little bit more about how suddenly we have this, this, this revelation about cash uh, from the witness stand today. All right. Overall. So, so we part company there when you say no mention of cash. Um, if I provided one receipt that didn't amount to what you would think was roughly equal, the rest of it is cash. Well, did you in your declaration, sir, that was filed in this case, did you tell the court in that declaration that the expenditure that you had provided on behalf of Ms. Willis was paid for uh, back by her in cash, yes or no? I believe that I did when I said that the expenses were split roughly evenly. If you could point to me any place in your affidavit where you used the word cash I would appreciate it. Take I didn't, your time. I, I didn't use the word cash, no, sir. No, you didn't use the word cash, did you? But I didn't say give it to me in cash. Uh, no, you just didn't tell anybody that you allegedly got paid back in cash, right? No, I, I, I told everyone who asked. Today? Yes, sir. Now, uh, who else was, uh, was with you, if anyone else, when you and Ms. Willis were discussing how you would be handling the financial component of the motion here today, that is the I'm personal gonna, benefits. I'm going to object to the relevance of that, Your Honor. Mr. Gillen. Well, the relevance is if they know that they're going to be called as witnesses, they've been subpoenaed, and they are discussing what they're going to say, we need to know that. The court needs to know that. It goes to the veracity of Mr. Willis and, excuse me, uh, uh, Ms. Willis and Mr. Wade. Overruled. We didn't discuss how we were going to handle testimony. My, my question was, when you were discussing with Ms. Willow in the conference room, when you were discussing what uh, you perceived to be the situation concerning the, the, the benefits for the payments, yes, sir. was there anyone else present? No, sir. How long did the meeting take? Probably five or ten minutes. Did Ms. Willis tell you what she was going to say? No, sir. Did you ask her whether she had any with, uh, bank withdrawals that would corroborate the, uh, the assertion that, uh, that she would uh, pay you back in large sums of cash for these, uh, these trips to the Caribbean, Belize, California, on and on and on? Your Honor, again, I object. The proffer when the last relevance objection was made was that Mr. Gillen needed to know who else was there. These could be potential witnesses that he could cross-examine. That, that question has an objective relevance. Okay. I think it's still exploring possible bias or motive to shape his testimony. So overrule on that ground. Thank you. <clears throat> uh, now, 
Now, Mr. Willis, uh, excuse me, Mr. Wade, when uh, you were having this discussion, did you ask her, did you ask Ms. Willis, do you have anything to support uh, these cash withdrawals? No, sir. Did you ask her uh, where she got the cash? Here, this, this is the conversation. I produced my credit card statement that showed what Ms. Ms. Merchant in her filing was representing. That was the conversation. We uh, okay. So when she would pay you back in cash, were you aware of what her financial situation was? Do you know what? <laughs> no, sir. No, no, I object to the relevance. So. Well, Your Honor, it's relevant because um, we've been uh, bombarded with a book, Find Me the Votes, in which... Uh, What's at issue is the financial benefit, and if that plays a material interest in an actual conflict of interest. So I think that's relevant. Thank you. Now, uh, have you read the book, Find Me the Votes? I have. You have? I have. Okay. Uh, now, in that book, uh, Ms. Willis uh, is telling the authors uh, uh, about financially uh, uh, destitute she was or uh, kind of hitting down on, on, on the bottom as she was running for DA. Do you remember that part of the book? So let me qualify the response. I've, I've read the, the, the book in, in parts. I, haven't, I, I hadn't had the time to sit and read the book in its entirety. Did you read that part about how she's telling the authors about how uh, little money she had and how her, financially she was in bad shape? prior to when she was running? Did you, did you read that part? No, sir. Did you ever have discussions with Ms. Willis about her uh, financial situation, which was, um, which was uh, in, in, apparently in rough shape prior to her being elected DA? No, sir. Ms. Willis made it clear that her financial business was just that. It was her business. I, I, I know nothing about her financial status. I know nothing about how she was faring before or after the election or even now. I know nothing about her finances. She's telling us that she didn't share that with you, but chose to share it with the authors of a book that's been uh, published and printed yeah, and sold nationally. I think that's a fair question for Cross. I, I, I don't know that she shared it with the author. I don't know that the author is telling the truth. I don't know the author, so I don't know, sir. Okay. Now, did you give an interview to, um, uh, to the... Uh, Authors of that book? I've given no interviews, sir. You, so you haven't talked to them at all, correct? I haven't talked to any media. All right. None. Uh, now, as it relates to the... I'd like to, though. As it relates to... Uh, again, from your, from your bank records that you're aware of, there'll be no, there'll be no cash deposits, right? I didn't say that. Are there I, I, cash it, deposits which line up with the money that you have allegedly received from Ms. Willis to, quote, pay you back for her part of the trips? So, so here's the thing. In my bank records, you will see cash deposits. You will see check deposits. I can't say that you, you look through the bank records and you won't see cash deposits because I have two sources of, of income, sir. I, income comes from my private practice, my firm, and income comes from the, the contract here with, with Fulton County. Um, during the course of practice, occasionally I will have occasion to deposit cash into my account. And in preparation for this hearing and your testimony, did you go through your bank records to find out if you could locate any cash deposits that would corroborate your, your testimony? No, sir. I, I didn't go through my bank records at all. Now, uh, so what you would do, the money that you received, of course, the, the money that you received from your work for Fulton County, that's public funds, correct? No, sir. That's private funds. It's my public funds pay you to do work for Fulton County, correct? Tell me what the definition of a public fund is. A public fund would be your funds, as in not fund, but funds money, public money, as in money from taxpayers 
by the Fulton County or the state of Georgia pay you to do the work that you're doing here in this case, yes or no? One or the other, I'm certain. You know which one? the case. I don't know which one, no, sir. Uh, now, those, you would take those public funds and those public funds were then used, deposited in your account, and they were then used to pay for the, on the credit cards for the trips that you would take with uh, Ms. Willis, correct? I, I object to the question so far as the characterization of public funds. The witness didn't testify to that, and I don't believe there's been any evidence to that. Once it's paid to Mr. Wade, it's private funds. Well, the point of it is, is that you got money. Right, Mr. Gillen's rephrasing. Yeah, I'll, I'll rephrase. Let's break it down. You got money from Fulton County for the work that you do here, right? Yes, sir. You would send in invoices, and they would pay you money, correct? Yes, sir. Those money, that, the word private money, that money was money from either the citizens of Fulton County or from the state of Georgia, correct? Pub that's what I mean by public funds. Agreed? Well, so I, I, I guess I'm having trouble with the, 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 the notion that the, the, the citizens of Fulton County have paid me any funds. I'm not certain the funding source. I can tell you that either the state of Georgia or... Fulton County has written me a check. So that would be, those two entities are public entities, correct? Yes. So would, that would be public funds, right? Right? Yeah. Yes. And that, those public funds are from the same source that you would then use to pay out uh, on your, uh, on your, uh, your expenses for the trips that you took Ms. Willis on, correct? No, sir. As as I testified to moments ago, I I have income coming in from my law firm. I also have income coming in from the the funds that we're here discussing now from either the state of Georgia or Fulton County and or both. I'm I'm not certain what it is. So to say so to say Sorry, that I didn't mean to cut I'm, you off. Go ahead. So to say that I'm paying a credit card statement with funds coming from Fulton County or the state of Georgia would, would not be an accurate statement because the funds could have very well come from my private practice. What percentage of your income in 2022 came from money for your working on this case or from your partners working for the Fulton County office? In 2022, I would, I would say 50-50. You think 50-50 in 2022? Yes, sir. What about 2023? Probably 60-40. 60-40. Yes, sir. So uh, the money that would be in those accounts, yeah, at least 60% of those, in your view, would be public funds, that those monies were then used to pay for the expenses that you had incurred for the trips that you took Miss Willis on, the cruises, the, uh, the Napa Valleys, the... Uh, the uh, Bahamas, correct? Right? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, and now, what you what you did is that when you when you signed on in the in uh, November first uh, of twenty twenty one, that's when you signed on to be uh, counsel for the anti uh, anti corruption matters, right? Yes, sir. Now. As you know, in your engagement letter, it doesn't say that you're signing on and your scope of work is to work on the, uh, the Trump special grand jury investigation, does it? No, sir. It says that you're signing on to work on anti-corruption, uh, anti the anti-corruption unit matters, correct? Yes, sir. Matters with a, pl with a plural, correct? Yes, sir. So in your contract... There is no specific reference to any specific case. Isn't that right? That's correct. Okay. Now, um, but you didn't sign on for the duration. There was a period you have a contract, and then it would uh, then expire, and then you would have a new contract, correct? Yes, sir. Now, of course, the, the extension that you received, the first one was in November of 2021, and then... Uh, you filed, or excuse me, there was a renewal in, in November the 15th of 2022. Is that, is that right? Sounds right. Oh, okay. Now, 
that was right after you got re re upped by Miss Will uh, Willis, right after uh, you took uh, Miss Willis uh, to Aruba. Uh, isn't that right? On that November the first, 2022 trip to Aruba, and through November the fourth, 2022. Correct. What, what does re up mean? Well, re up means that you came back. Your contract was up, and then on November the 15th, you and Ms. Will signed a new contract for you, right? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, when you were in uh, taking her to uh, the Aruba and on the, on the cruises, and the, excuse me, the resort there, did you discuss your re-upping uh, of, uh, of signing an extension on your contract? No, sir. Uh, so but you... But you make an excellent point. Um, I'm, I'm glad you pointed that out. So the, 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 the trip to Aruba, the, the contract was not in existence then. So you're saying, so you're saying that you were not under contract. In, in, in your contract, did you send any invoices in for work that you did after your contract, your first contract expired? No, sir. You didn't. No, sir. So uh, when that expired, that was it. So then you're saying that after the Aruba trip, you get re-upped with a new contract, correct? I signed a new contract, yes, now, sir. Was there any modifications on that contract? Did you get uh, an, ex an extension on the cap that you were limited on the first one? Were there any modifications at all, Mr. Willis? Excuse me. I've done that again. I, I apologize. <laughs> I, I've been called worse. Wait, I'm sorry. Uh, I've, I've been called worse. Uh, um, now, were there any modifications on that? Um, do you do you have the contracts in front of you where you could? Uh, I don't have it in front of me, but I think that uh, it's Murchie's thing. Because I believe the, as the work gradually, um, as the time of the work gradually increased, the the hourly cap would would increase. In other words, starting out. Um, starting out the investigation, it was impossible to anticipate um, the level of uh, cooperation from during the course of the investigation from some of the witnesses. So if you assume that there would be great cooperation um, with the witnesses um, in terms of interviewing and speaking and being vol voluntarily speaking with you, it doesn't take as much time. Um, so after getting into it, realizing that most of the witnesses um, were not willing to speak or willing to turn over evidence or information, um, quickly you figure out that this is gonna take a little more time than originally anticipated. And because of that, you have to uh, compensate for, for those hours. And that's why there was a compensation on your extension? Yes, um, sir, the, the caps. The cap. now, did Mrs. Willis, uh, excuse me, uh, did Ms. Willis review your invoices with you when you would submit them? Never. Uh, did anyone ever question whether or not you worked 24 hours in one day and billed 24 hours in one day? I've never worked 24 hours in one day and billed 24 hours in one day. Okay. And I'm glad you asked me that question because I, I like the opportunity to talk about that. I think you should go ahead. So... If you look at that invoice where, where it says 24 hours in one day, it, it actually doesn't say one day. If you look at the top of the invoice, it says date completed. The date that's reflected on that invoice reflects the date that the work was completed. It doesn't say when it started. It just says this is the date that is completed. So if you go through the invoices, probably around the first five or six, you'll see that that's the billing format. I would bill only after that particular task has been completed. That's why you see a 24 hour period with the one day there. I kind of wish some of the experts who had opined on that had called me and asked me the question, but there was never a billing of 24 hours in one day. Now, probably around the sixth or seventh invoice, you see the format changed. I started using a range so that it got less confusing, right? I'm confused, so maybe you can correct it. Okay. Um, in in exhibit uh, 14 you've got a uh, you've got down uh, a specific 
day mm -hmm. prepared cases for pretrial. November the 5th, 2021, 24 hours at $250 an hour, 6,000. So this wasn't about, this wasn't about a range. It was about the work that you did on November the 5th, 2021. No, 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 Mr. Gillen, look at the top of the invoice where it says date completed. What I want you to do, Mr. Wade, is focus on the, on the date that you have down there and tell the court what you billed for on November the 5th, 2021. Are we gonna do this? I thought it was already in. I Sorry, thought 14, uh, 14 is in. Uh, again, Mr. Gillen, it says completed date, date completed. The dates that you see here are the dates that that work was completed. So on November the 5th, I completed the task of preparing the cases for pretrial. That's the date I completed it. Just then read it took you, me. Just read if you would. Then my question was, read out loud the entry for November the 5th, 2021, and how many hours you billed that day. Just just do that for me, if you would. You know, I, I can't do that. Excuse me. I believe the witness is entitled to answer his that. question. That certainly wasn't the question that Mr. Gillen asked me. All right. Well, the question now is to read a certain entry. So right. I, I, I just question. read into the record, Mr. Wade. On November the 5th, 2021, how many hours did you bill the citizens of Fulton County for on that day? Just read it out, please. I completed the task on November 5th, 2021. 24 hours was billed at $250. Now, when you were... You talked about your relationship with uh, Ms. Willis, and your testimony is that it began in 2022. Do you remember that testimony? No, sir. Our relationship began in Our, your 2019. Your romantic relationship began in 2022? Is yes, that sir. That's yes, your sir. testimony? Yes, sir. Um, okay. Now, when you were re-upped on this contract, you had a romantic relationship already established with Ms. Willis. Yes or no? In 2022? Yeah. Yes, sir. When you re on November the 15th, 2022, you had a romantic relationship with Ms. Willis. I signed the second contract. Yes, sir. Answer my question, please. On, I'm not going to use the words re-up. Signed up uh, on the we, we, we re up or whatever you want to call it, your contract on November the 15th, 2022, you had a, a romantic relationship already existing with Miss Willis. Yes or no? I signed the contract, the second contract, yes, sir, during the course okay, of no, a romantic me, relationship. Yes or no? You had a romantic relationship with her at the time that you signed up the extension on no, November the 15th, 2022. Yes or no? The answer to that question is yes. Thank you. Now, uh, the, this was before the special purpose grand jury uh, uh, re released any, uh, uh, any a report. Isn't that correct? Correct? Are you asking me if it's before the work was completed or before the, the, the special purpose grand jury actually released, publicly released the report? When they released two different the report. Your relationship with Ms. With Ms. Willis it already existed when the special purpose grand jury released its report, correct? At the time the report was released, yes, sir. But and you understand that the report, had, the, the, the work had been completed prior to the release of the report. You understand that? And uh, your relationship with Ms. Willis, of course, was prior to the indictment in this case, correct? Yes, sir. Your Honor, if I may just ask uh, my uh, folks over here whether there's anything I need to clean up on. That's all the questions, Your Honor, I have. Thank you. Your Honor, I do have one. Well, I think we went through. Well, I had asked you 
the permission that he was going to go first on this and that I was going to follow up. That's the deferment, which would allow him to go first. That's what I thought I had. All right, let me... All right, with, with the understanding next time, we're going to keep going in order and not skip around the order. All right. That's why I brought it up, because... I, I thought that's what okay. I was All right. Um, Mr. Sado. I'm going to try to keep my questions very specific. Yes, okay? sir. Yes, sir. And I'm going to also, of course, try not um, to go back into specific questions that have already been asked. Okay. Yes, sir. When did your relationship with Ms. Willis end? 2023. Can you give us an approximation of, not by date, but by month? Uh, summer 2023. Um, forgive me. I'm, I'm a man. We don't do the date thing. Um, summer 23, I would say... June, maybe. Okay. okay. Using the euphemism, personal relationship, did you have any personal relationship at all with Miss Willis after the summer of 2023? I want to make sure that I'm answering your question. Are you, because... I, uh, let, me, let me rephrase if I might. The way it has been characterized in... For example, the response of the state, and I believe in your affidavit, is there's a difference between a personal relationship and a professional relationship. Correct? Yes, sir. Okay. I'm not talking about a professional relationship. I'm talking about the personal relationship. Have you had a personal relationship at all, and you know what I mean by that, after the summer of 2023. Are you asking me if I had intercourse with the district attorney? I, I was trying not to, but I, I guess the... If you're going to characterize it as that, the answer would be? The answer would be no. So it's been purely professional since the summer of 2023. So, so that's where we're having issues. Um, okay, I, you'll have to explain because I don't know what the issue would be. No, I, I will explain to Thank you. You. Um, the, the, you say personal. Um, we're very good friends probably closer than ever because of these attacks. But if you're asking me about specific intercourse, the answer is no. How about if I change it from intercourse to romantic? No. Okay. During the direct examination, you made a statement, at least I believe I heard it correctly, that you, personal relationship, and now I'm talking about that characterized the sexual romantic relationship was not a secret. Is that correct? Wait. <laughs> if you're asking me if people knew that we were having sex, no, they didn't. I'm asking you whether the people knew that you were dating, whether you were romantically involved. You said that it was not a secret. Oh, it wasn't a secret. It was just private. My, my, my mother knew, obviously. Did anyone my, in the district attorney's office that has worked on this case know that you were dating or had a romantic relationship with District Attorney Willis? I don't know what they knew. Well, did you tell anyone? No. Do you have any knowledge of whether Miss Willis revealed it to anyone? I have no clue. Okay. Uh, so as far as you know, as far as you know from personal knowledge, no one in the DA's team knew, correct? That's correct. Okay, so if it was a legitimate relationship, is there any particular reason why it was kept secret or private? It wasn't kept secret, it was kept private. And the purpose for that was? It's what we chose to do. I'm asking you why, though, not just because you chose. Why, if you're dating someone, why keep it private? So, a few reasons. The first one is, and I want to say this respectfully in the right way. Um, there are some people who are in the public eye who just don't like it, don't wish to be there. Um, I have tried to have lunch or dinner with her publicly, and I, I can't count the number of people 
that would approach the table or would accost us as we're trying to walk into a restaurant and just have lunch or have a meal. Um, it is not secret, it is private. We don't want the world, the world uh, asking questions or, or interrupting that time. So we weren't trying to keep anything as say that. Um, okay. There's nothing secret or salacious about having a private life, nothing. I'm not suggesting that there was, I'm asking the questions. When you went on the various trips that have been outlined by both Mr. Gillen and by uh, Ms. Merchant, did anyone in the district attorney's office know that the two of you were traveling on personal trips together? To my knowledge, Mr. Sadow, no. Okay. And again, that was for privacy, according to your testimony. Privacy, yes, sir. Okay. Did you and Ms. Willis go to the Hapeville condo prior to your relationship starting at the beginning of 2022? Prior to having physical contact, prior, prior to having intercourse, did we go to the Hapeville condo? Again, you keep going to intercourse. I'm trying not to, but fine. The answer to that, my well, question would be yes. Did you and Miss Willis go to the Hapeville condo prior to what I want to say November 1st of 2021? Yes. Okay. And the purpose for going to the Hapeville condo with Miss Willis prior to 2021 been what? Or prior could, to November 1 of 2021. Could have, be been, what? could have been any number of things because at, at that time... At, that's what I'm asking, to tell me. Yeah, could have been any number of things because at that time, um, she had a friend living in that condo. Miss, Miss Yerdy lived in that condo. Okay. So, <clears throat> it maybe was my question was poorly worded. Let me try again. Your answer is yes, prior to November 1st of 2021, you would have gone to the Hapeville condo and been there with Ms. Willis, correct? Yes. And you would have been there, as you indicated, for many reasons, right? Yes. Can you give me, just list a few of the reasons. Ms. Yurdy resided there, went to visit her, um, maybe went to talk about uh, a, a document that I received. Um, you would go to the condo I and talk about a document that you received? Absolutely. Okay, go ahead. Absolutely. Any other reasons? None come to mind. None come to mind? No, sir. And uh, would you say that was frequent? When I say frequent, do you think prior to November 1st of 2021, you were at the condo more than 10 times? No, sir. 10 times? Yes, sir. So if phone records were to reflect that you were making phone calls from the same location as the condo before November uh, 1st of 2021, and it was on multiple occasions, the phone records would be wrong? If phone records reflected that, yes, sir. They'd be wrong? They'd be wrong. Okay. Did you, where did you live during that time period? The same place I live now. Which is not in Hapeville, correct? It is not in Hapeville. It is north of Atlanta, the city of Atlanta, correct? It is. Okay. So, and the other, any other reasons why you would be in the Hapeville area? on multiple occasions prior to November 1st of 2021? Let's see. The Porsche experience is there. I'm sorry? The Porsche experience is there. Okay, so that would have been one. Any other um, Yes, sir. The, the airport is there. Airport in Hapeville. Uh, yes, sir. Delta Airlines is okay. Okay. headquartered there. Um, let's see. Restaurants there. Okay. Um, if you have, if that's your recollection, that's fine. I'm not asking you to try to remember everything, but if oh, that's okay. A, okay. Uh, did you discuss your affidavit filed in connection with the response with Miss Willis? No, sir. Did you? No personal knowledge, whether Ms. Willis um, put your affidavit before it was included with the response. I have no clue. So as far as you know, personal knowledge, Ms. Willis did not know what you said in the affidavit. I didn't give it to her. That's what I said. You have no personal knowledge. No personal knowledge. And as far as you know, 
No one else has told you that she did or didn't. I hadn't asked anyone. The, and we, we've kind of worked this up a little bit, and the numbers could be off. But according to our numbers, um, $10,000, give or take, would have been reflected on your credit card statements in connection with things um, of potential benefit to Ms. Willis, okay? I want you just to assume that. Of the 10, assuming that there was $10,000 that you had on your credit cards, is it your testimony that Ms. Willis paid you back $10,000 in cash? <laughs> not, I'm not acting about- Can I, can I uh, object? Uh, the characterization of $10,000 for Ms. Willis's travel, I don't believe is an accurate reflection of what the numbers, at least the summary that I've been provided by the defense would reflect. I think that's joint travel. Um, and so I, is that right, Mr. Sato? I'm sorry. To no, it's, it's, it, it's not joint travel. But all, right. so, all I'm trying to understand, I, I, I'll rephrase because I don't want to get bogged down on it, specific numbers. You would have received thousands of dollars in cash from Ms. Willis, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. And the thousands of dollars in cash from Ms. Willis, do you know, not, I'm not asking you whether she took it out of her pocketbook or she took it out of a suitcase. I'm saying, do you know the source of the cash? J just that, out of her pocketbook. Yes, sir. You don't know where she obtained the cash? I, I didn't ask her. And the whole time that you, she was paying you in cash, you never said, hey, why do you have this amount of cash? Well, Mr. Mr. Sadow, in my practice, people come into my law firm all the time with cash. I never question where they got it. Yeah, but we're talking not about people that come into your law firm. We're talking about the district attorney of Fulton County, who I'm assuming receives a paycheck. She doesn't get paid in cash. So just like you assumed, I assumed she got it from her paycheck. I don't know. Okay, but of course... It's already been, and I'm not going to go back into it. You've not seen any records indicating withdrawals of cash from Miss Willis at all. Why would I ask her? I didn't no, ask. No, sir. All I said is you haven't, right? No, sir. Okay. Now, can you explain why you filed for one day after you were hired by Miss Willis? You filed on November 2nd of 2021. You're hired on November 1st of 2021. Why this, the day after? You, you mean one day before? So you filed for divorce one day after you were hired, right? Okay. I'll, I'll, I'll answer your question. Okay, please. So in 2015, um, when my wife had the affair, um, we had a conversation that we would divorce right then. Again, the better practice, um, at least for my children at the time, was to stay in place until the youngest could graduate and matriculate into college. We did that. When she graduated, matriculated into college, at the time, my wife had moved back and forth to Houston, to Texas. So she's in Texas. We take our child off to college. We come back to Georgia for a brief period of time. Divorce gets filed. She gets served. There we go. Now, the reason that date was selected. Yes, sir. That's, that's what I asked. The, the, the specific reason that that specific date was was because she was only in town for a brief. Your Honor, this is attorney-client privilege. Why he decided to file his. And why do you have the right to object on his behalf for attorney-client privilege? Because. It, well, well, I'll make the formal objection. All right. There we go. Uh, and. I, I believe that she, he's already attempted to answer this question and there was no privilege raised. So he's given a partial answer and, and now he's about to finish that. So first of all, I don't think it's covered by attorney client privilege and, and I'll deal with that if you want me to, but otherwise he's already answered part of it. So he doesn't get to say, now I'm going to stop. So. Well, it was a long preface, but I don't think it ever actually got to what might've been at issue there. So if you can lay the foundation, we'll deal with the objection. Okay. Take a step back, okay? You realize that an attorney-client privilege is the privilege of the client, correct? Yes, sir. And you, in connection with your representation, at least has been um, proffered to the court by Mr. Bradley, that it's up to you to decide whether you want to raise the privilege, right? 
Yes, sir. It's not up to Mr. Bradley. Yes, sir. So you have the power in order to get to the truth of the matter. You have the power to waive Your the attorney-client privilege, Your do you Honor, not? I believe that's an appropriate question. The, certain, the privilege is there. The Whether he uses it or not, it doesn't matter why. Mr. Stato, I think if we're trying to get to the answer to your question, let's figure out whether it covers the question you were trying to okay. get to. And your, if I may finish, and your position is you have no intention of waiving your attorney-client privilege, correct? That's correct. All right, so now, um, can you answer the question why you waited until November 2nd, the day after you were hired by Ms. Willis to file for divorce? I, I can. Okay. So, uh, again, Joycelyn had relocated to Texas, and she had been in Texas for months. She was only here for a brief period of time to drive my daughter's car back with her. And when she came here to do that, I was able to then get her served Okay, so your answer as to why you waited until the day after you were hired by Ms. Willis on November 1st, 2021, to file the complaint for the divorce on November 2nd, 2021, your testimony under oath is because your she was here. wife was here. Was here. But had not been here in October, had not been here in September, had not been here in, Oct in August of 2021. She, she had been in Texas taking care of her a ailing mother so and your an aging father. So the first opportunity that I had after sp speaking with my lawyers to take care of that was the date it was filed and served because she happened to be here. It had nothing to do with, that was purely coincidental, that contract. I understand it's purely coincidence, your testimony. You yes, like sir, and, and understand that this was by agreement between, between she and I, she being my wife and I, that we would divorce when the children uh, matriculated out and that uh, there would actually have been an agreement attached to the filing. Um, it became apparent that the agreement wasn't wasn't going to happen and things got a little contentious so that's when the the privilege will kick in and and i was forced to do it when i did it so if i understood correctly again you tell me if i'm wrong is it your testimony that your wife was not in atlanta georgia or the metro area throughout October of 2021? No, in October, in October of 2021, she was back and forth between here and Texas. So she was at least on some occasions in the Atlanta area. But that was during the time when we were working through the consent agreement that, that fell through. Yeah, I think we're pretty far afield on, on relevance. The answer to the question about the timing of the divorce filing. I understood, Ms. Cross. Uh, Ms. Stato, where are we going from here? <laughs> yeah, we're, we're about to finish this area since I'm not going to be able to go any, any further about. If we want to call the X, we'll call the X for that purpose. Well, we might have to discuss whether that's a collateral issue altogether. No, I'm just saying if. I didn't say we will, but we'll. Okay. All right. So um, you said that you were aware of the contracts that Mr. Bradley and Mr. Campbell had with the Fulton County District Attorney's Office, correct? Yes, sir. And how did you become aware of those? Just through conversation, they with told who? me. Conversation with who? Mr. Bradley and Mr. Campbell. So you were discussing matters with Mr. Bradley which were not related to attorney-client privilege, correct? Related to the contract, yes. Okay, but you were having conversations that would not, even though, if I understood correctly, Mr. Bradley was your attorney at the time, correct? At what time? At the time that, that Mr. Bradley received his contract from Fulton County, which would have been the beginning of January or in January of 2021, right? Is that the date of his contract? Pretty close. I don't know what the date of his contract was, the, but if, if it, if it was after the date of the filing of the divorce, then, then, then yeah. I'm not, talking about, I'm not talking about after the date of the filing of the divorce. It's been represented to the court that you had an attorney-client 
relationship with Mr. Bradley from 2015 forward. Yes, sir. Correct? Yes, sir. That is correct. When Mr. Bradley received his contract with Fulton County, that was in 2021, correct? I don't know. We can prove that through other evidence. But at the time that Mr. Bradley was doing work for Fulton County, if I understand, you still had an attorney-client privilege, at least you're claiming one, with Mr. Bradley, correct? Yes. Okay. So when you talk to Mr. Bradley about matters with his contract in Fulton County, those were not covered by your attorney-client privilege, correct? They were not. Okay, and that meant that not all communications with Mr. Bradley were covered by attorney-client privilege, correct? Well, those certainly weren't. Well, but my question was, not all communications with Mr. Bradley were covered by, at least as you've been represented to the court, by the attorney-client privilege, correct? Those communications were not. So there were communications outside of the attorney-client privilege, correct? With Mr. Yes. Bradley. If you're asking me if I ever communicate with him outside of the attorney-client privilege, the answer is yes, okay. I've communicated with him outside of the attorney-client privilege. Um, let's uh, finish this up. And did you call it um, Roman number four, or is it just defense? defense? Okay, in defense exhibit number four, and Mr. Gillen went over with you your responses to certain interrogatories on May the 30th, 2023. You remember that? Yes, sir. Uh, I'm not going back into those. The words in the interrogatories are already in evidence, so we're not going to do that. But the ones that we've gone, that were gone into, there were two of them. And your answer to those was none, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, on January 25th of 2024, yes, sir. you again were in a position that you answered those same interrogatories, the two that we're talking about. I can get specific if we need to, but as long as we understand we're talking about the same two, yes, right? Sir. Yes, sir. Okay. And they are in defense exhibit number six, and they are interrogatories number four and number five. Okay. Okay. Go ahead. No, I want you to be able to see it. So it's a defense exhibit number six. I don't. See, so you have six up there. Yeah, okay. I'm told. I'm told that you have six. Okay. Ah, uh, here we are. Okay. You would agree with me that in defense exhibit number six, and we're talking about interrogatories of January 25, 2024. Yes, sir. That for that's the same interrogatory, same words that were in the interrogatory that Mr. Gillen went over, which was dated May 30th of 2023, correct? Yes, sir. And your original response in defense exhibit number six was none, correct? Yes, sir. Your updated response was, the plaintiff declines to respond to this interrogatory and asserts his privilege pursuant to OCGA section 24-5-505, correct? Yes, sir. Uh, you know that 24-5-505 breaks down into two, two, Privileges, right? Which, which is why I was specific. I said I asserted the privacy privilege. Well, that, that's what I'm asking you. In your updated response, there's no reference to privacy, correct? Yes, there is. In the in the code section, 24-5-505. Okay, but it also... reference to privacy. Just go with me, okay? That code section says, does it not, no party or witness shall be required to testify as to any matter which may incriminate or tend to incriminate such party or witness or which shall tend to raise or public contempt upon such party or witness. You'd agree with that, right? I'm not reading it. I'm sorry? I'm not reading it. I don't have it in front of me. If, if I may, just 
Ms. Sena, we can, uh, I can take judicial notice that that is what the rule says if you want to ask him any follow-up questions. Okay, thank you. You are not claiming that your answer to number four, interrogatory number four, on January 25th, 2024, incriminates you, that is, as in Fifth Amendment privilege, right? That's correct. You're claiming the second part, that it would, it would, um, bring infamy, disgrace, or public contempt, correct? Yeah, I object to that. I don't think that's the full thing, but, and also the witness doesn't have it in front of him, so I don't know how he could respond to that. He asserted several times privacy is why he invoked that statutory privilege. Overruled. I'm claiming privacy. The privilege that you make reference to is to infamy, disgrace, or public contempt upon the witness, right? Or party. That's the section that you were relying on, correct? If that's what it says, yes, sir. Okay, well, I, I could show you, but I, I think we indicated he can take judicial notice of the statute. So you assume that what I'm telling you is accurate, okay? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, how would an answer of none bring infamy, disgrace, or public contempt upon you? So as I explained um, in direct of, of Mr. Roman's counsel, um, the minute she elected to intervene into my divorce proceeding, I then started to understand the bigger picture, which was that all the attorneys in the election interference case were colluding with Joycelyn's divorce lawyer. And because of that, I said, privacy. I don't want my divorce proceeding to bleed into this criminal proceeding. I just didn't want that. So you raised a privilege, if I understand, that indicated that your answer would bring infamy, disgrace, or public contempt upon you, right? Your Honor, I'm going to object to the relevance of this and ask and answer it several times. Mr. Seda, where are we heading with this? Now, um, I, I think I can finish that up by saying you didn't say none again. You asserted a privilege, correct? That's correct. Okay. And you did the same thing, did you not, with number five? That's correct. Is it, you didn't say none again, right? Correct. Okay. Is the answer to the interrogatory number four, as you have it in front of you, is the answer none? Is the, that the truth? The, 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 the answer is to that interrogatory is as I placed it at the time I responded, sir. I'm That's asking the you answer. now, is the answer to that interrogatory the answer is, none? The answer is still privilege. All right. So he's... Apparently electing to apply the same privilege, Mr. Sadow, to that exact same question. And, and I have a case which indicates that we can get beyond that if the court deems that appropriate. And uh, to what end? Hmm? To what end? Where That the privilege actually does not apply and he must, he must answer the question. And where does that get us, even that, if he answers the question? Hasn't he already kind of said everything he has to say about the nature of the relationship, how long it lasted, when did it end? No, I think it would prove, I, I think if he is forced or compelled to answer the question, he will either answer it falsely by saying none, or he answers it truthfully by saying yes, and then telling us what it is. That's what I believe. That's why I'm asking. But the interrogatory you're referring to, though, the, the question contained there. Two, two interrogatories, yes, sir. It's the entertaining one. It's whether there were other relationships, right? With a language that's in the interrogatories sure haven't you already haven't you already covered that in all the other questions that we've had so far yeah, but we have but again the court could if i could require or compel an answer from him as to whether his answer would still be none then we would know whether or not he was telling the truth now if the answer is no then obviously there was a time in the past where he was not it simply requires him to now answer under oath what he refused to answer and claimed what I might suggest is a bogus privilege and that you can pierce that privilege because it's a material fact in connection with this case. Again, it's a call that your honor makes. I have the case law that says you can do that, but it's your discretion. Ms. Cross. Your honor, Mr. Bation on the stand now for several hours and he's asked very, been asked and answered very, um, personal questions that I believe cover the issues. This, Mr. Sato is making argument, and this is probably an argument to make for the um, later to the court and not a question to propound to the witness. 
So as I see it, the only relevance these interrogatories have to this case really whatsoever would be as either prior inconsistent or consistent statement. And to that, and I think the question has been put to him again and again and again, he's answered how he believes uh, he felt his answer should be and, and why he answered a certain way. And as it goes to credibility, I think at this point we're arguing uh, weight, and I don't, I, I don't really see the, the value in pushing this, this issue further. So, All right. Well, then, just for the record, that. the case that I was going to refer Please to do. is State versus Wakefield at 324 Georgia Appeal 587. And specifically, let's see, it would be 590 in which they talk about this specific privilege. This is a uh, 2013 case. And then they footnote to number th footnote three. And footnote three says there are times when the materiality of the evidence outweighs the testimonial privilege. And it goes and explains what that is. That's so, what I'm bringing up. And I see what you're saying, that we could uh, say that you need to answer the question regardless of the privilege you asserted. At this point, though, I think we've covered that ground and we're ready to move on. Okay. Based on that, I have nothing else. Thank you. Okay. Mr. McCulloch, anything on behalf of Mr. Floyd? Moving through defense counsel. Oh, no, no, no. I'm looking behind you. Mr. McCulloch, on behalf of Mr. Floyd, he's elbowing you, sir. Okay. Um, Mr. Cromwell. Ms. Cross. Mr. Wade, have you still got exhibit number 14 in front of you? Uh, the one with all of the invoices, I believe. I believe I have them all. All right. So you were asked, Mr. Wade, about um, a couple of the invoice items. <laughs> and your testimony, I think, was that the percentage of income post special counsel appointment in November, 2021, the percentage of your income roughly after that time was about 50, 50 Fulton versus other income from your um, law practice, correct? Roughly, yes, ma'am. Okay. Sometimes more, sometimes less. Yes, ma'am. All right. How about your time? I'm interested in the percentage of your time from, from November, 2021 to let's say the close of the special purpose grand jury when it was dissolved in January, 2023. You estimate for us the percentage of your time that was spent on Fulton County work versus other work. Oh gosh, 99, one, 99% of the time here in this building working on this case. All right. It was, as I understood your testimony, it was an intense period in terms of hours while that special purpose grand jury was meeting, correct? Yes, ma'am. And uh, who was head or manager of the election integrity case during that time for the district attorney's office? I was. Okay. You were coordinating the efforts? Yes, ma'am. And those efforts included not just the proceedings that were happening in this building, correct? That's correct. Um, and you don't need to go all through it, but... Is your representation that 99.9% .9 of the time, let's restrict it to 2022, 99% of your professional working time was devoted to this case? Yes, ma'am. And the remainder, whatever it was, was to some of your other cases that were ongoing? Yes, ma'am. All right. 2022, I want to focus on that a little bit because if we are looking at, I believe, the financial affidavits, do you have those in front of you as well? I do. The... Financial affidavit that was filed in your divorce case in January 2022. You estimated your monthly income at that time was $14,000 a month, right? In 22? January 22. Yes, ma'am. January 23 number come to? 9,000. What about 2024? I, I don't know. Is that there in front of you? Is that one, that's not one of the ones that's there in front of you? No, ma'am. All right. So as reflected in those financial affidavits, your income decreased as a result of your work in this case, correct? Significantly. The structure of your firm, we talked a lot about that, and I don't want to go through it anymore but, uh, than we need to, but 2022, the structure of your firm changed. Is that correct? That's correct. All right. In the early part of 2022, there were three of you. You and Mr. Campbell and Mr. Bradley, you split expenses. Is that right? That's correct. And you, you profit shared among yourselves, correct? Correct. Right. 
after Mr. Bradley left the firm, then there were just two of you, correct? That is the cause of the significant change. Yes, ma'am. So now you have two people bringing in income, correct? Correct. And one of those people, you, is spending almost all of your time devoted to um, this election integrity case, correct? Yes, ma'am. Right. And your income from this election integrity case uh, is less than what it was the year before. Yes, ma'am. We talked about the monthly caps, or we didn't talk about it. There was talk about the monthly cap that was included in your um, contracts, indicating there was a, a certain threshold that you could reach number of hours a month. And over that amount, you were not going to be compensated, correct? That's correct. All right. And you kind of smile when you said that. That's a little bittersweet there, isn't it? That's bitter, bitter. All right. <laughs> Exhibit 14, is that still there in front of you? It is. I want you to take a look, please. That's a collection of exhibits that includes all of your invoices, as was represented. I want you to take a look at invoice number nine. Yes, ma'am. Is that there in front of you? I have it. Invoice number nine, Mr. Wade, indicates that you performed hours of work that you were not compensated for because your cap had been reached. Yes, ma'am. I want you to take a, And what did you do in those circumstances when the hours that you worked per month were more than the cap, the that was in your contract that you were permitted to be paid for? I, I was forced to, to lose that time. I didn't get paid for it. Okay. And that's what exhibit number nine shows? Yes, ma'am. All right. And in exhibit number nine, you've got a task, hours that were completed, and you just didn't bill for it. You noted the time and then a zero beside it because you didn't bill the county for that time. Yes, ma'am. All right. What about exhibit number, um, invoice number 13? Can you flip to that for me? I have it. Is that a similar situation? Yes, ma'am, it is. And what is it on exhibit, num I'm sorry, invoice number 13? This invoice makes me cry. <laughs> There's so many hours here um, that I worked that I couldn't, I couldn't get paid for. So. And you work those hours anyway, Mr. Wade? Oh, absolutely. This is not the type of job that you could walk away from because you're not getting paid for it. I think there's some professional rules of responsibility to an attorney who's engaged in a, a case. You, you have to see it through. So it's not like I could just throw my hands up and say, well, I reached my, my monthly cap. I'm done. I, I, I can walk away. I can't do that. This, this is ongoing. It's constant. And I have to do the work. Can you look at invoice number 23 for me there in exhibit number 14? Yes, ma'am. Does that reflect a similar situation, the hours, works that you were not compensated for? Yes, ma'am. Invoice number 24 and 27, can you take a look at those and let us know if that reflects the same situation? Are you trying to depress me? No. Look at no. the money I'm looking. No. Okay. <laughs> it's the same, yes. Okay. And there's no workaround to that. You didn't attempt to work around that, that um, contractual cap on your hours. Oh, no, ma'am. All right. You were asked a lot of questions, Mr. Wade, about the affidavit that was submitted, correct? Do you recall those questions? I'm sorry, I'm stuck on this invoice. You know, it, it, if I was gonna get a benefit, I, I'd like that benefit. That, that I want, that, that didn't happen, that but didn't happen. okay. Right. And there was no renegotiating your contract um, to reflect that those hours should be paid or anything? No, ma'am. Okay, all right. Do you have your affidavit there in front of you? I do. The affidavit, of course, was attached to and provided in support of the state's response to Mr. Roman's motion, correct? Yes, ma'am. All right. And you prepared that affidavit? I did. You signed that affidavit? I did. All of the allegations and the representations in that affidavit are true. Is that right, Mr. Wade? Every one of them. Every one of them. You were asked a lot of questions about our line number 34, can you turn to that for me, please? It's on page four of that affidavit. Yes, ma'am. Can you read it out loud for me, please? The district attorney and I are both financially independent professionals. Expenses for personal travel were roughly divided equally between us. At times, I have made and purchased travel for District Attorney Willis and myself from my personal funds. 
At other times, District Attorney Willis has made and purchased travel for she and I from her personal funds. Examples of District Attorney Willis' is purchasing she and I with her personal funds for our personal travel are attached. Funds, Mr. Wade. As you understand the term funds, does that include cash? Yes. Does that include credit? Yes. Does that include um, reimbursements? Yes. You didn't represent in your affidavit, Mr. Wade, that you were including all of the receipts from funds or uh, travel expenses that were paid on your behalf by District Attorney Willis, correct? That's correct. You had, I think your conversation with Ms. Merchant was, you produced the receipt that you had. Yes, ma'am. Are you aware of any other receipts? Well, I'm going to ask it this way, ma'am. I'm going to mark I'm going to mark this as state specific number one. You testify, Mr. Wade, that District Attorney Willis purchased and funded the entire trip to Bailey's. That was her treat to you for a birthday? Yes, ma'am. And you testify that she purchased the plane tickets for you, correct? Yes, ma'am. And while you may not have had the receipts on hand when you filled out the affidavit because they weren't in your possession, are you aware now that there are receipts and um, that it reflects that the district attorney? No, just, 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 we'd like to look at it first. I've got a copy. Do you remember, Mr. Wade, approximately how much? And that's again six. Do you remember how much the flight was um, for you, your flight to Bailey's? <sighs> And if you don't, I'm not tendering it through you. I'm just um, asking you to take a look at that and see if that refreshes your recollection as to the amount that that plane ticket cost that was um, extended by District Attorney. Yes. Yeah. You may keep it. You keep it. Does that refresh your recollection, Mr. Wade? It does. Thank you. Approximately how much was the amount of the ticket that District Attorney Willis purchased for your travel to Bailey's? $887.35. And I'm not tendering it, Your Honor, but I will uh, leave it with the court reporter for reference in the future. All right, Mr. Wade, your testimony here in court today and consistent with your affidavit was that the personal relationship, I think we've called it dating today as well, the personal or dating relationship between you and the district attorney began sometime in early 2022, March, I think was your testimony, is that right? Yes, ma'am. Right. And that March date isn't included in the affidavit. The affidavit is, is less specific, but that was your testimony today? Yes, ma'am. And that there was no personal or dating relationship prior to that time, right? None. All right. Mr. Wade, I'm sorry. I'm going to direct your attention to 2020. In 2020, were you dating the district attorney? No. 2020, that was during the COVID pandemic, correct? It was. Uh, was there a situation for you, Mr. Wade, that made you particularly uh, vulnerable during the COVID? Yes, ma'am. And in, in 2020, um, and a portion of 21, I was battling cancer. Um, and that prevented me from pretty much leaving the leaving environments that aren't sterile. And I just, I had health on my mind. You were particularly cautious during that time? Yes, ma'am. Were you dating anyone in 2020? No, ma'am. All right. Thank you, Mr. Wade. That's all I have. Ms. Marchand, recross on those points only. Yes, thank you. 
All right, Mr. Wade. Um, the state asked you about how much money you're making now versus before. And you said you're making significantly less since you've started working for Fulton County, correct? Well, I, 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 I did say that, but what we're talking about is because this, the now at this point, the splitting of the financial obligations in the firm are now there are two people carrying the weight of three. So that would scale back on the amount of in amount of profit. Well, you're splitting the profits 50-50, though, instead of one-third, correct? The, the profits, yes. Okay. So, um, but you did testify that you're making, you're making significantly less now. We heard about it for a few minutes. Significantly less now that you work for Fulton County, right? Yes. Okay. Um, would you agree with me that $236,000 is more than $184,000? Absolutely. Would you agree with me that $262,000 is more than $236,000? Absolutely. Um, all of these years, despite you saying that you were a three-way partner with Wade and Campbell and Bradley and now a two-way partner with Campbell, all of your corporate tax returns are filed in the law firm of Nathan Wade, though, correct? My returns? Yes, ma'am. Yes. For your law firm? Well, for my law firm, because I also have personal returns. Right. And I'm not talking about your personal returns. I'm talking about your business returns. Yeah, but but the, the question contemplates that my, my bring home money is more or less. So I want to be clear that re is reflected in my personal returns. I didn't ask you anything about bring home money, though. I'm not sure what you're talking about. You, uh, what I'm talking about is you, you, your question was the portion of my testimony dealing with earning significantly less money. No, no. My question is during, <coughs> let me break it down. During 2019, you filed your business returns. I'm not talking about your personal. Your business returns for the law firm of Nathan Wade only, correct? I filed personal and business. Yes, ma'am. And even though you said you were partners with Bradley and Campbell, later on, you filed your business returns, not with them, but as a solo practitioner, correct? Ah, I see where you're going. There's a different return for that Wade Bradley Campbell entity. And I'm not asking about that. What I'm asking about is during the years 2019, 2020, 2021, and 2022, you filed a business return for the law firm of Nathan Wade. Yes, ma'am. And in 2019, you said that the law firm of Nathan Wade made $184,000, correct? No, I, I, don't, I don't know. Uh, is that, does, that, does that sound familiar? Does that sound about like what you made in um, 2019 and reported on your taxes as a business law if, firm? If that's what's on the return, yes, ma'am, you're right. Okay, and I'm happy I, I can bring those up. I've got one copy. I'm not planning on admitting them for tax returns, but... Okay. All right, may I approach, Judge? May. Thank you. So in 2019, gross profit for the law firm of Nathan Wade is $184,000, correct? Let's see. The second line, number two, gross profit. Yes, ma'am. 184824 yes, ma'am. And then in 2020, you also filed Nathan Wade, attorney at law, and your gross profit was $230,000, correct? Yes, ma'am. In 2021, you also filed as a solo Nathan Wade PC attorney at law, and your gross profit was $236,000, correct? Yes, ma'am. And then in 2022, you filed as a solo practitioner Nathan Wade, and your gross income was $262,000, correct? Yes, ma'am. Okay. I'm, I'm not going to admit those because they've got your social on them. Um, but nowhere in these documents do you document that you receive cash payments from this Willis, correct? I don't, <laughs> I, I hadn't looked through them. I, I would be surprised if, it, if there were something in there that said Did that. Did you want to look through them? Listen to the answer. I'd be shocked if there was something in there that said that I received some cash from Ms. Willis. But there is um, itemized expenditures for travel in here. You did itemize that. I didn't itemize anything. My your accountant, accountant itemized it. I, I, I hope so. But you're responsible for your taxes, even if your accountant files them, right? I agree. Um, and so you itemized your expenses for travel on all these documents, but you did not itemize. You didn't put anything in there about you being reimbursed for half of that travel. Well, those are those are business returns. Yes, you I, use your business I card would, to pay for the travel, right? Yeah, but but I I wouldn't put a, a personal expense on a on a business return. But you so, used a business card. 
to pay for these I use a personal travel. I use a business card to pay for everything. And what I do is turn over the statement to the accountant, and the accountant then says, okay, this expense, that's personal. We'll put that over here. This expense, that's business. We'll put that here. And they reconcile it. So you wouldn't find a reimbursement from Ms. Willis on a business return. Okay, so they're not anywhere there. N nor would you find, well, go ahead. No, I'm just asking. So there's no, there's nowhere for any of that cash to be reconciled there, right? On the business returns, no, ma'am. Okay. Um, we talked a lot about the, the financial affidavits. I know the state asked you a couple questions about them. You filed one in um, 2022. In that one, you stated that you only had $5,000 in cash, correct? I believe you. Yes, ma'am. That was sworn under oath. At the time of the filing, yes, ma'am. Okay. And then in January of 2024, you filed another one that also swore that you only had $5,000 in cash, correct? At the time of the filing, yes, ma'am. Okay. So in 2022 and 2024, you only had $5,000 in cash. At that time, yes, ma'am. At that time. I'm sorry. Um, and then you also, all of those interrogatories, I'm not going to go through them in painstaking detail, but every single interrogatory you filed, there are four of them, all verified ones, every single one, you said you didn't have any cash stored in a safe, a safety bo deposit box, or any other location. Plaintiff rarely carries cash. If plaintiff does carry cash, it's a nominal amount, correct? That's correct. Okay. So we've got what? 2021, you said you don't have cash. 2023, you said you don't have cash. Again, in 2023, you said you don't have cash. And then in 2024, you don't have cash, right? So, so you're assuming that I, I received the cash and I stored it. I received the cash and I saved it. Well, Why, what's, it wrong bank, right? what's wrong with receiving the cash, Ms. Merchant, and spending it? Nothing's wrong with it. But so you didn't then that, it would, that would contemplate why the response is on the interrogatories. So you spent the cash. That's because before when, when it was asked, you said you didn't want to disclose where the cash was. No, 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 no. Privacy the, reasons. No. Well, I said that if I were to store cash in my home, then why would I share that with the, the world is what I said. I didn't say that I had some cash stored up in some place because that's not the truth. And you've talked a lot about this. Um, I split with a third. I split with half. Um, from, let's see, from the check you received from Fulton County, July 15th, 2022. So back all the way back for July, 2022, not a single check that you've received from Fulton County has gone into a joint banking account. Every single check has gone into your own personal banking account, correct? All of them, with the exception of the checks that were going into the WBC firm, went into my business bank account, which is solely in my name. Right. Your I've, business, your, your WBC account that you're talking about, that account was closed, though, in June of 2022. Correct. Okay. So, so everything I would, after June of 2022 was put in a Nathan Wade bank account, not a corporate bank account with I'm gonna partners. I'm going to ask the witness to come in to... I think the, the, the question right before that only needed a yes or no. So, so, so no, no ma'am. Checks were deposited into... Firm accounts, law firm accounts. Law firm of Nathan Wade PC. Yes, ma'am. As a solo practitioner. Yes, ma'am. Okay, so they were not deposited into accounts with Campbell or Bradley. No, ma'am, they okay. were not. Thank However, you. there were checks written to Campbell and Bradley that will reflect the third, the third, the third. And we've tried to get those bank records, but you've objected to those, correct? You've tried to get what bank records? We subpoenaed bank records and you've objected to all of those, right? Your Honor, I'm going to object to the relevance. It's relevant if he's saying he has all these records, but yet we've tried to get them and he's trying to keep them from us, but he doesn't bring all of the records. And you can make an inference if he's, there's a, there's law that says you can make an inference if, if some documents are within the party's control and they won't provide them, that there's an inference that they're not positive. Ms. Cross. Your Honor, there was no obligation for Mr. Uh, Wade to produce evidence that Ms. Merchant couldn't find an admissible way to produce. Uh, I, I believe it's irrelevant. We've covered the ground, and I, I um, object to any further questioning in this line. All right. I'll uh, sustain that. Ms. Merchant, let's find some new ground here. Okay. Thank you. Um, are you willing to waive your privilege with Mr. Bradley so that he can testify? I, I am not willing to waive attorney kind privilege. Okay. Thank you. Only on the question, the health questions that were asked. And I can ask it from here. It'll be very short. I don't want to get into the type of cancer. I don't want to get into the medical condition itself. Did I understand you say that you had cancer in the year of 2020? Yes, sir. And you explained 
that because of that in 2020, you were or kept yourself in a sterile environment? That's right. Yes, sir. Now, what about 2021? 2021, just focusing on my health, trying to get back to myself. Remember I asked you some questions about hate bill? Yes, sir. The condo? Yes, sir. And you indicated that prior to November 1st of 2021, you had spent time at the condo, the hate bill condo? Yes, sir. With Ms. Willis, right? Yes, sir. And with someone else? You said Ms. Yerty? Ms. Yerty, yes, sir. Okay, so... You were not concerned. That was not a sterile environment, was it? Are, are you inferring that Ms. Yerdy and no, D.A. Willis right. is not sterile? Of course it's a sterile environment. It's, it's a, a condo. But don't you remember that I followed up and said, where else might you have been to show your cell phone records from Hateville? And you said, the airport, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Not a sterile environment, though, the airport. You agree? It is not. Okay, what about restaurants? Not a sterile environment. Right? They are not. And the Porsche, you said something about a Porsche what? The Porsche experience. That doesn't sound very sterile to me. Is that a sterile environment? Well, you're inside of your vehicle. Yeah, but don't you mingle with others? You can. Yeah, and you were doing all that in 2021 before November 1st. That's what you testified to, correct? Yes, sir. So there's no reason why you couldn't be dating in 2021, is there? Give me 2020, Mr. Sadow. Uh, 2021. All right. Correct? Dating? No. No reason. No reason. Uh, thanks. All right, Mr. Gillen. Uh, I definitely not. Okay. Mr. Stocks. Stockton. Stockton, excuse me. Just real briefly, you said you started dating early 2022 and you also use the term personal relationship uh and there was no dating and no personal relationship prior to early 22 is that correct help me understand i want to make sure i answer you so so let let's let's be clear 2022 was the start of any intimate sexual relationship with a district attorney. That's what I was wanting to okay. clear. In your affidavit, you use the term personal relationship. Got it. They use the term dating. And your testimony today is that that includes the term basically physical or sexual or intimate relationship. Is that correct? Yes, sir. And there was nothing, according to your testimony, there was none of that prior to the early point. That is correct. All right, not seeing anyone else. Ms. Cross, any redirect? All right, Ms. Merchant, can this witness be excused? Um, Judge, we'd ask, ask to keep him under, you know, we might need him to come back after the next All right. All right, you may step in and uh, please don't discuss your testimony with any other witnesses. She mentioned subpoena, Judge. Let me just say this. That was an, a, an inference made that I was somehow evading uh, service uh, of a we subpoena. Can, we can take that up. That, I don't think we need to have it on the record in this hearing. Understood, though. Thank you. All right, Ms. Merchant, any other witnesses? Yes, we would call Fonnie Willis. Okay. All right, Ms. Cross. Your Honor, I am going to uh, eject and remove to the um, motion to, to quash the district attorney's there's been now uh, lots of testimony from Mr. Wade. I don't believe that there can be a showing for the need for the district attorney to testify as well. Uh, uh, for all of the, the reasons that were cited in the state's motion to quash initially, it's a tremendously high burden to call opposing counsel. I don't believe it's been met, particularly given the cumulative nature that would be um, the subject of, of personal details that Mr. Wade's now testified to. All right, Ms. Merchant, why, what do you think you can establish and have through the testimony of Ms. Willis? Um, and well, let me put, let me start there. Conflict in the evidence, Judge. Um, now that how Mr. Wade has testified, there's a conflict in, in multiple different issues. I'll just go through all the different issues. Um, the first one is the re reimbursement issue, um, the cash. Um, that opened the door in and of itself to Ms. Willis testifying. 
Um, well, what's the what's the conflict there? Oh, uh, that he that he testified that she, that he didn't have receipts, but we don't know if Miss Willis has receipts. So that's, that's one issue. That's so we don't we don't know. So there's no conflict. We don't right? know. Right? Okay, don't so it's a question, not a conflict. But what yeah. what? Um, the first one would be the receipts, um, you know, whether or not these cash payments, if there's any cash payment receipts, um, the Belize trip, whether or not she paid for the entire thing in cash. Um, Mr. Wade doesn't have knowledge of that. He couldn't remember a lot of things he couldn't remember. So now it goes to Ms. Willis, unfortunately, um, that he testified that she insists on paying her own way, gave him some cash. That's the quote, some cash. Um, Miami trip. She booked it, but thought it would balance out. Um, a couple of other trips that we didn't get any information about, Tennessee, Alabama, Georgia, all of those um, could be financial benefits. We don't know. He didn't know. He could. He was very vague about that. Um, Yuri, her best friend, testified that it happened in 2019. And now Mr. Wade has testified that the a relationship began to become romantic in 2022, I think is what his testimony was. So that is a conflict in and of itself. Um, right there, that's a big conflict. We've also got... Um, Let's see, more receipts. Um, but the, the biggest thing about the conflict is when the, the relationship started. Um, he said he talked with Willis in the conference room after we filed our motion. Um, he specifically didn't use cash, the term cash in the affidavit, but he told anybody who would ask about the cash. Um, and he specifically discussed this brief with her and the response. So I think we have a right to go into those issues. All right. So you've highlighted the areas you'd like to go into. Uh, I think the central question may be, what is it other than, I'm just really curious what she has to say you have to put on the record. And so that's, that's what I'd like to go through. Ms. Cross. I, I think you've identified Ms. Merchant hasn't, hasn't um, itemized inconsistencies for you. She's identified areas of inquiry. The testimony in the record from Mr. Wade is it's not inconsistent. It's, Unrebutted. Excuse me. And so that I, I don't believe, given the testimony of Mr. Wade and the um, extent of the questioning of him, that there is any reason at this point to go into the district attorney herself. Again, I, I, I know the court's read all the pleadings. It, it really is such a compelling need, is the language of the case law, a compelling need to call opposing counsel. Given the record that's now before the court, I, I don't believe it's been met here. You, Your Honor, uh, Mr. Gillen, uh, very briefly, Ms. Uh, Willis needs to testify. Uh, her best friend or good friend has directly contradicted the declaration that was made by Mr. Wade attached to the government's response. And it wasn't just the declaration of Mr. Wade, it was filed by the district attorney by and through her, her, uh, her assistance here. She owns that. And so that affidavit is owned by her and, and there are deep concerns that that affidavit is false and that Ms. Willis knew it was false, and that she needs to come in here if she wants to tell us about the cash. First time we've heard about the cash, oh yeah, we got cash. Uh, don't have any deposit slips, don't have any record of it. Maybe Ms. Willis can say, here, all my records where I paid $10,000 in cash back uh, to Mr. Wade. We need to know that. Also, uh, Ms., uh, uh, Ms. Willis's uh, financial disclosure, we, we, let's not forget that. We're talking about two people who went to extraordinary lengths to hide their relationship, to hide the nature of their relationship. Extraordinary. The district attorney needs to take the stand and she needs to tell this court and this courtroom why she filed uh, financial disclosures in 2020 identifying uh, prohibitive sources, which Mr. Wade clearly is a prohibitive source. Did you get gifts and benefits? Now we've seen all this. We've seen the trips. We've seen the all of the things that, that total up to around ten thousand dollars in cash. Yet on on the for the financial declaration for 
2021, which was filed in April of 2022, and the financial declaration uh, for 2022, which was filed in April of 2023, there is no listing of any uh, any gifts whatsoever over uh, over $100 from a prohibited source. It cries out for her testimony. She needs to be able to get up there and say, why didn't you tell uh, the, on the disclosure form so that people will know uh, the nature of the relationship between prohibitive sources and the public official, in this case, the district attorney, who happens to then make a decision to hire someone that ends up being paid hundreds of thousands of dollars or his firm and him, and none of that is revealed. And the answer is, oh, it's unrebutted. He's explained it's all in cash. Let her get up and let's, you know, and, and obviously, uh, you know, we are advocates on uh, from that explanation of cash does not pass the smell test or the straight face test. She needs to go on the record. She filed this motion with his uh, declaration. We've seen what happened here. And I'll, I'll just two or three more sentences. We need to, uh, to have the full picture as we've gotten from Mr. Wade of his false interrogatory, serious business for a lawyer or anybody. And then suddenly he's changing it. She files her financial declarations, same problems. We need her in here to go over all of this and to explain exactly what happened. So we would ask the court uh, that, 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 the, that uh, the court allow Ms. Willis to be called and interrogated uh, on these matters. Can I wait to your honor? Uh just a moment, Ms. Willis. Uh, so, Ms. Cross, I don't know if you want to speak with Ms. Willis now. It's sounding like maybe they're withdrawing the I'm objection sure. to the motion. I believe the motion to... Um, or or does Ms. Willis want to take the lead here? We'll withdraw the motion to quash Ms. Willis. Based on the... I'm ready to go. Okay. So, the um, position of the district attorney at this point is that she's no longer uh, contesting the subpoena. Ms. Version is there's the next witness. I would ask, um, I need three documents in front of me, and they're the three filings of Miss Merchant. Three filings? Oh, sorry. <clears throat> Three filings. Oh, okay. Does anyone have the three filings of Ms. Merchant? Does the court have the three filings of Ms. Merchant? When you say the filings, you mean like the pleadings? The pleadings, yes, Your Honor. Okay. I think we could locate those for you. I mean, the supplemental. I want the one filed on January the 8th, the one filed immediately after we filed ours, and the final one. If you want to take a break to get them, I can make a copy. I think we have one. You know, the only copy I have is going to have my notes on it. So if we don't have a clean copy. Have a five minute break. You're on let's take five. Doctor. All right. I'll sit here and wait for him. I don't know where to hop on. Can I have some water? Water. Yeah. And who's, did we elect someone who's actually making the copy? Hmm. You got it? Okay. Ms. Cross is doing it. Yeah. Is there a I can't mm -hmm. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. He's building this. 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 He's building this.
whatever the record still is.
Just have a flush of up this one now. This is this It's not true that I paid Thank you, Your Honor. I appreciate the courtesy. They should be here in just a second. Thank you. All right, Ms. Cross, if you can bring everyone in. Thank you. Thank you. 
Do you swear me, Your Honor? You'd like you me to? Whomever would like to. We We've got Deputy Scott usually. So let's go wait a minute, let everyone get situated, and then we'll go back on the record. Thank you. Sir, do you have like tissue in here? All right, we are back on the record. Deputy Scott, if you could swear in our next witness. I would, and I do apologize. Anna, do me a favor. Tell them I'm going to need some reading glasses. After you swear on them, tell them I'm going to need some reading glasses. But swear, you can go ahead and swear me so I don't hold up the court. You swear I'll fall into the testimony. You should be able to call it. Help you? Yes, sir. Can okay, you spell your first name? Like district, first name for the court? district attorney, Fani, F-A-N-I. Last name is Willis. Um, Ms. Willis, when, how did you know to come into the courtroom right then? There were people I was pacing in my office. Okay. And um, I heard someone yell, his testimony is done. Um, it only made sense to me that I would be your next witness. And I've been very anxious to have this conversation with you today. So I ran to the courtroom. So as soon as um, you heard that Mr. Wade was done testifying, that's when you just assumed you would be the next witness? It only makes sense. Um, did you listen to any of the testimony? I've been in my office pacing, ma'am. Okay. Um, did you listen to any of the arguments? I did hear the, the arguments this morning. It's ridiculous to me that the, you lied on Monday, and yet here we still are. And I did listen to that argument. Um, um, all right, so that was it, just the argument, no testimony. Right, I listened to the argument this morning where Adam Abadi, I thought, did an excellent job pointing out how dishonest you were with the court on Monday. And um, I'm actually surprised that the hearing continued, but since it did, here I am. Great. Um, so let's talk about, first, let's just talk about what you did in preparation for today. Um, did you meet with Mr. Wade at all? Once the, mo once the motion was filed, did you meet with Mr. Wade and talk to him about the motion that I filed to disqualify you? On January, this first January motion? But, yes. I don't know if you could say talked about. Um, I probably had some choice words about some of the things that you said that were dishonest within this motion. So I don't know that it was a conversation. As you know, Mr. Wade is a Southern gentleman, I mean, not so much. Okay, but my question was, did you have a conversation with I didn't him? have a substantive conversation. You did not? I read this motion, skimmed it, more so, and um, I've probably said some choice things to him about some of the lies that were told. Okay. And then printed in the media because, you know, we used to be in a day and time where you had 60 minutes and people did stories and they verified information um, and you had this great reporting. But it seems today that a lawyer writes a lie and then it's printed for all of the world to see. Well, I just want to make sure that you answer the question I asked though. So my question was- I'm going to object and ask an answer. Overruled, Mr. Abadi. Um, I told you what happened. I read the motion. I am sure I've told him what my opinion of it is. Okay. And past that, we had no substantive conversation. You did not. Okay. Is there um, something you didn't understand? No, I just wanted to make sure that, that okay. you did not have a meeting with him in the conference room to discuss the motion. All right, next question, no. Ms. Merchant. So in the, in the conference room of my office within this week, you produced some financial that financial document was given to me, some thing, and I'm not even sure it was given it to him by me or Mr. Abadi gave it to me. Um, and I think he showed me a document in our conference room. But as far as a substantive conversation, I would not have, I don't believe I've had any conversation with him that is substantive related to this. Okay. Um, I have had conversations with him um, since you filed the motion, but they wouldn't be substantive to this. He sent me a very nice uh, sermons that that have been done. And so we've had conversations about, did you listen to that sermon? Do you, you know, things of that nature. And I would say they were in relationship to this because I think he did it to be kind. Okay. Um, let's start back in 2019. Yep. So um, you and Mr. Wade met in October 2019 at a conference? 
That is correct. And I think in one of your motions, you tried to implicate I slept with him at that conference, which I find to be extremely offensive. I stayed at that conference. Mr. Wade was my teacher. I did not meet him when he taught the class. I was standing outside talking to Lisa Reeves, who is a judge. Me and her were just having a conversation. Mr. Wade walks up. I think they hug each other. They have some brief conversation, introduces us. Your Honor, I'm, I'm going to object. We kind of thought that when you ask a question, you can answer the question, not a speech. So I object to the speech made. Okay, I agree. I'm able to explain my answers. I believe she's able to explain her answers. And that's that's Ms. Merchant, that's okay. I can handle it. Ms. Willis, I'll ask you just listen to the answer, or excuse me, the question, and keep the answers confined to the question as best you can. I think you'll have more than enough ample opportunity on uh, when the state is well, able it's to highly offensive when someone lies on you, and it's highly offensive when they try Judge. to implicate that you slept with somebody the first day you met with them, and I take exception to it. All right. Well, Ms. Willis, you'll be, have the opportunity to explain all of that when it's the state's turn to ask more open-ended questions. Yeah. Ms. Merchant. Thank you, Judge. Um, so, again, my question was, you all met at that conference, though, right? We did. The meeting, okay. He, as I stated, he taught the class. I did not actually meet him when he taught the class. I walked out of the class, and I'm not sure if it was that exact class or we had went to lunch, but we were standing in the vestibule, like outside of the class. Me and Judge Reeves were having a conversation. She had worked at a law firm I worked at back in 1996. We're getting way far. I mean, I don't mind her explaining her answers, but I literally just asked if they met at that conference. Explaining how she <laughs> met Mr. Wade, which was exactly the question asked by Ms. Merchant. It was, These answers are more than appropriate. Um, Ms. Merchant, if you want more concise answers, perhaps you could lead the witness. I will. Thank you, Judge. Um, isn't it true that you met Mr. Wade October 2019 at a judge's been, conference? We haven't gotten to the point where Ms. Willis should be treated hostile under 6 I, I think we have. I very Mr. much Everybody. want to be here, so I'm not a hostile witness. I very much want to be not here. Not so much that you're hostile, Ms. Willis. It'd be an adverse witness. Your interests are opposed to Ms. Merchant's. Thank Ms. You. Merchant's interests are, per are contrary to democracy, Your Honor, not to mine. All right, let's Judge, proceed. Just we can, ask keep, that we... we can keep things moving. Ms. Merchant, <laughs> next question, please. Um, okay, so we've confirmed when you met. Um, after that, isn't it true? No, I, I need to explain this, and I think I get to explain my answers. When I met him, Judge Reeves introduced us. He handed me his business card. I'm unsure if I handed him my business card, but we exchanged information. He said, if you ever need any help, give me a call. And he walked to the parking lot. Um, so after you started dating shortly thereafter, correct? The lie. That's okay. one of your lies. Okay. Um, do you know Robin Yurdy? I, I know her as Robin Bryant. I, I knew her. Uh, so Robin did not go to my college. She okay. went to the college of, uh, I went to Howard University. She went to Morgan State. Uh, I met her through some people I knew. Um, in college, we hung out a bit, not much because she was in Baltimore and I was in Washington, D.C., um, but we hung out a bit. After college, I lost contact with her. I probably didn't see Robin again until maybe seven or eight years ago, a chance meeting here in Atlanta, but we did not have a consistent relationship from when I left college and came to Emory Law School here in Atlanta. But I, eight to 10 years ago, um, just by happenstance, I ran into her. So she was in Atlanta. You have been friends with Robin for 30 something years. Did you hear my answer, madam? Yes. And I'm asking if you've been friends with her for 30 something years. I've known her for 30 something years. We certainly hung out and party together in college. Um, she was from the D.C. area. She would come home. We party together. Uh, wasn't close, but she was certainly in the girlfriends that party together. Um, and then, like I said, I ran into her about 10 years ago in Atlanta, Georgia. So but we didn't talk throughout that time period. I didn't see her. I didn't even know where she was. When I ran into her, I was surprised she was in Atlanta. And so, yes, I have known her probably since 1990, 1991, but we have not maintained a consistent relationship that whole time. For the last 10 years or five, whatever you'd like to classify it as, have you been friends with her? I have not spoken to Robin in um, over a year. I certainly do not consider her a friend now. Um, I think that she, you know, there's a, a saying, no good deed goes unpunished. And um, I think that she betrayed our friendship. So let's narrow it down the it. timeline now. So my questions are going to be from the time period of 2019 until she 
no longer was employed for you the last time you all talked. So all of my next questions are just focused on that time frame, okay? Yes, ma'am. Up until she left your office. Yes, ma'am. Um, during 2019, you all were friends, correct? Yes, we knew each other in 2019. During 2020, you all were friends, correct? We were, we knew, yes, we were friends during that time period. During 2021, you all were friends, correct? Yes. Okay. And such good friends that when you needed a place to stay, you asked her if you could take over her lease. That's a lie. You did not, not move the, into her apartment? I did, but that's not the way you characterize it is wrong. I asked if you asked if you could take over her lease. Did I did not know? ask if I could take over her lease. Did you move into her apartment? I, m I moved into her condo in April of 21, but the circumstances around that were that Robin met her husband. They wanted to move into a, another and space. She wanted to get rid of her condo. My father was living with me, with me at the house. Because of this case and because of my stance on gangs, my life was being threatened regularly. My father urged me to leave our home. At the same time, as luck would have it, Robin wanted to give up her lease because she wanted to move in with this new man she met who eventually became her husband. And so as life circumstances worked, my dad was begging me to leave the house. He was afraid for me, for, afraid for his grandchildren. She wanted someone to take over her lease so that she didn't, you know, have to pay a fee or get abandoned. And so I don't remember when, but probably March or April of 21, I move in and take over her lease. And did you pay her, her or did you pay the um, leasing agent? No, I don't even know who the leasing agent was. I paid her. You paid her. Did you pay her cash or did you use a card? Um, there were some times that I would give her cash, and there, but mostly I paid her via cash app. That would be the most convenient thing. So I would not only give her her rent, but then like when the utilities would come in, whatever the utility was, she might be like, I need 70 bucks, I need $100, whatever it was. And um, we never had a problem with money. I, whatever she told me it was, I never asked to see a bill. I never questioned her. I just gave it to her. What, um, what percentage of you paid cash versus cash app? Oh, most of the, the vast majority was cash app. I, cash I don't app. know what percentage. I'm not going to guess that. But the vast majority was cash app. But there will be times she would say, you know, this bill came in at 70 bucks. Here goes 70 bucks. Um, did you have a monthly rent amount that you paid her? I can't remember. It was fourteen, fifteen hundred dollars $1,500. I can't remember what it was. And it would vary, which I, I don't understand to this day. But like I said, I, I never questioned her. When Whatever did you move she out? said it was, that's what I paid. When did I you move abruptly out? moved out in February, uh, either late January or early February of 22. Of 22. Yes, February 2022, is that what you said? January, February of yeah. 22. I, I believe it is January, but um, I, I paid her half the rent of February of 22 is what I remember. And because um, I was offering to pay the whole rent, even though I didn't live there, I didn't think it was right. Um, and she, she I didn't I ended up just paying her half the rent. Um, so that's after you moved out. You yes, said you paid her half of that. Okay. And um, the time that you said you had to move out of your house because you were scared, um, did your dad stay there at your house? I was, my father was concerned. Yes, we were both concerned. Okay. But he's, he remained there. My father was 80 years old. He would have been 79. He was scared to death of COVID. You have to go back to when this was. My father's an old man. Um, I wanted him to move out. We had some discussions about him moving out and what he decided was the risk of COVID was more dangerous than the risk of the people that were threatening. Um, typical man, more worried about his daughter and his grandchildren than his own safety. Uh, you'll get to meet him and you'll understand he, he doesn't scare too easily. So your grandkids or his grandkids were living at the house as well at that time? Well, I don't know how old your children are, but when you have adult children, they leave and they come back. They leave and they come back. So there have been periods of time that they're there. They come. They do whatever they want to do. Children do what children do. As long as their mother has a house, they'll come to it. Unfortunately, now the threats because of this case have gotten so extreme. I just pay a mortgage and no one lives there. Um, and that's what I was going to ask you. So when you moved out in, I think you said April 2021, you left your dad and your two kids at the house? My dad and my two kids were not at the house. They were not. Okay. So they didn't still live at your house? My youngest daughter certainly did not live there. Okay. My oldest daughter would come back and forth. I can't say month for month when she was there or when she was not there. I know that she has been there um, post me moving out. At this time, no one is at my house. So at some point after you moved out for, for the safety reasons, your 
at least one of your children did come Ms. back. Ms. Merchant, to can us. we get to either the relationship yeah. or the sure. financial benefit? Yes. Um, so, um, let's see, we were back at 2021. So you were still friends with Ms. Yerdy then. Um, were you also friends with Mr. Bradley? I don't, I've never been friends with Mr. Bradley. You've never been friends with Mr. Bradley? No, I don't, um, I don't consider us to be friends. I certainly, I don't dislike Mr. Bradley, but I don't consider us to be friends. Um, is he someone that you would have in your phone and you would message with? Uh, I might have text messaged him. Okay. Um, would you text message him and Mr. Wade on the same conversations? I don't recall doing that, but if it happened, it, it wouldn't surprise me. Okay, so that, that wouldn't surprise you, mm -mm. the three of you. Okay. How frequently would you think that the three of you would have text, texted? Not very. I wouldn't think very often, but you're asking me to recall. I don't even know what time period you're asking me to recall, but I, I'm not going to speak to that because I just really don't know the answer to that. And so I don't want to speculate as to how often that would happen. Um, but it's not out of my practice to text two people on one text message. So if you told me that happened and showed it to me, although I have no recollection of it. But there would be some rec rec record of it in your phone or the phone records would have some record of those texts. Perhaps. Um, talk about, you know, you said that sometimes you paid Miss Yerdy cash. Um, I don't when think you I, went, I'm sorry, I'm sorry when you went on vacation with Mr. Wade, um, Let's let's just go one by one. Let's um let's start with the first one. What's the first time you went on vacation with Mr. Wade? I think the first time we went on vacation was around April of 22 and it's a vacation is a stretch, but I'm trying to be comprehensive. Um I recall April of 22. His birthday is March the 18th. Um so that would have been his 49th birthday. Um I took him to like Tennessee for the day. I think we went to a museum. I think we might have stayed the night. I'm not sure. But I mean, Tennessee's kind of hard to call a vacation, but I just am trying to be inclusive. And it, like I said, I don't think, I know it wasn't more than a day. Um, so you didn't spend the night? I think that we did. So that's what I'm telling you. I think that there's a possibility that we stayed that night in April of 22. Who paid for the hotel? I think I did. It was his birthday. Um, and would you have used a credit card? Probably maybe a debit card. A debit card? Mm-hmm. Do you remember what town you stayed in? No, I don't remember. And um, you all start, when did you start dating? When I started dating Mr. Wade? Mm -hmm. It was right around then. Um, that April 2022? 22, yes. 2022. It was a, around then. I don't know, like, you know, it's not like when you're in grade school and you send a little letter and it says, will you be my girlfriend? And you check it. I don't know the day that we started seeing each other, but it was early 22 is my recollection. OK, early 22. And you all went to Florida on vacation as well? I don't recall going to Florida on vacation with him. You never went to Florida with Mr. Wade? We went to when we went to get on the cruise ship. We went to Miami. Okay, that's the um, only time that you went to Florida with him? I think we went to Miami and spent the night. That's my recollection. Okay. I think we spent one night. That's my recollection of our vacation. Paid for that hotel. In Miami? Mm -hmm. I don't remember that. Okay. And how'd you get to Miami? We would have flown. Okay. And we've done that so that I'm clear. We've done that twice. I think one time we stayed, and I honestly can't tell you did we stay when the ship left or did we stay when the ship came back? I also can't tell you. So there's two cruises out of Miami. There's one that's in that October time period that was with his mom. And then there was another that was a New Year's Eve trip. I know I paid for the New Year's Eve trip because the tickets were six ninety seven each. And I thought this is ridiculous that the tickets are seven hundred dollars to go to Miami. But when you travel during New Year's Eve, you know, they get you. Um, so let's let's just back up and talk about the first time that you went to, to Florida with Mr. Wade. Um, that was the time that you said you stayed in Miami at the hotel the first night? That's the time I told you. I am not sure. So I'm not sure of two things. So I want to make sure that my testimony is clear. I'm not sure if we stayed in Miami on the October trip. I'm not sure if we stayed in Miami on the December trip. I just can't remember that. And I also don't remember, so that the record is clear, I don't remember if the necessity was as we got on the ship or we got off the ship. But I do remember there was a night spent in Miami 
whatever. I don't remember. But I think that there was a night spent in Miami. That cruise is um, the one that you took in October, right? Ma'am, I, I, if you have a, a something to refresh my recollection, okay. I'm intentionally trying to not be difficult with you, but I don't want to make up something. Right. I know that on one of those two trips, you stayed in Miami. I am not sure right now. You're asking me about... Oh, I think... I'm sorry. You misunderstood. I wasn't asking you which... I was not asking you which night you stayed in Miami. I'm asking if you took a cruise in October 2022 with Mr. Wake. Yes, and his mom. And his mother. That's what I was asking. Yes. Is that the first time you met his mother? Yes. It was on that cruise. And that was Royal Caribbean, I believe? You too. I honestly don't remember what ship. I know we've taken two cruises. I don't know what the ships were. Um, but he paid for the flight and the cruise on Royal Caribbean that time. So, yes, he paid. He is the original one that does it. He has something called Mr. Wade is a world traveler. Um, I'm not as versed as him. He's been to six of the seven continents. Um, and so he has both a personal travel agent and he also has a cruise travel agent. I don't know anything about either of those kind of travel agents. So he is the one that would book the travel. We need to be clear when we're talking about just because he booked it doesn't mean, like, I don't consider him having taken me any place. Let me just be honest. The only point that's ever taken somebody someplace is for his 50th birthday. I consider that I took him to Belize. And I took him to Belize because, um, you know, I don't want to discuss his personal business, but I'm happy Mr. Wade is still here with us. And I did 50 big, very big. Um, so still on that October Royal Caribbean cruise, um, even though Would he you, had a travel agent. I'm sorry. You say? If you do me a favor, mm. I don't know what cruise ship, what time. That's so if you'll help me and say October cruise with mama or the New Year's Eve trip with his sisters, I'll be able to, we can no communicate. I just don't know what ship. October cruise with mama. That's what I'm talking about. Yes. He paid for the cruise and the flights for that trip. So he called his cruise agent and he booked that through them because he has a cruise agent. Right. He also has a regular uh, agent. I don't know the cruise agent's name. So I wasn't asking about his travel agent. I was just well, asking. But I'm he trying paid to. For those. He did not, though. Okay. Because the reason I consider that he did not is I gave him his money back. And I was about so to I, ask that. But initially he paid for them. Yeah, he, he called his cruise agent. Like, I think they have his card on record. They do whatever. OK, so initially he paid for the cruise and the flight to Miami and the Royal Caribbean cruise. And my understanding of that October cruise is like it was a package the lady did for him. Um, so and I'll get to the reimbursements and all that. I'm just trying to confirm he paid for the flight and the cruise in October. And I think that when you say things that way, I want this record to be initially. abundantly clear that he calls his travel agent. He calls his cruise agent. They do whatever he tells them. He's like on a first name basis with these people. They do it. And then he tells me how much it is. And I give him the money back. I don't, just like you're asking me about the money with Robin. I don't do my friends like that. So if you tell me it's a G, then you're going to get $1,000. If it, Whatever it is, I didn't ever make him produce receipts to me. Whatever he told me it was, I gave him the money back. Isn't it true that he paid for the cruise and the, um, the flight on his credit card? I'm not asking about reimbursement or after. He used his credit card to buy the cruise and buy the flight, correct? I have no idea how he paid for it, okay. uh, if it's a credit card, if it's a debit card. But certainly he called his uh, cruise agent. You know, like how many people have a cruise agent? He calls his cruise agent, tells them where they want to go, um, what's booked. And you have to remember, he didn't just, he paid for that initial was me, him, and his mother. Um, and then after that cruise, you all flew to Aruba and spent a couple of days in a hotel there, correct? Right. And his mother was not happy he that we left her behind. Paid for that. He initially paid for that. For Aruba. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So let's talk about both of those. I know he initially paid for it. Did you pay him back? For the cruise and for Aruba. Yeah, I gave him his money before we ever went on that trip. You gave him cash before you ever went on the trip? Mm-hmm. Okay. And so when you got cash to pay him back on these trips, would you go to the ATM? No, lady. You would not go to the ATM? No. Okay. So um, Fulton County pays you direct deposit, I assume? Yes. Fulton okay. County and the uh, state of Georgia both pay me direct deposits. Okay. So the cash that you would pay him, you wouldn't get it out of the bank? I have money in my house. You have money in your house. So it was just money that was there? When you meet my father, he's going to tell you as a woman, 
You should always have, which I don't have, so let's don't tell him that. You should have at least six months in cash at your house at all times. Now, I don't know why this old black man feels like that, but he does. When we were growing up, my daddy had three safes in the house. So my father's bought me a lockbox, and I keep cash in the house. Now, I don't do it to the degree that my father would do it, so he would probably be uh, ashamed with me, but I always have cash at the house. That has been, I don't know, all my life. If you're a woman and you go on a date with a man, you better have $200 in your pocket. So if that man acts up, you can go where you want to go. So I keep cash in my house and you should have cash in your pocket. So my question was, where did that cash originally come from? If it didn't come out of the bank. Cash is uh, fungible. I've had cash for years in my house. So for me to tell you the source of when it comes from, when you go to Publix and you buy something, you get $50, you throw it in there. When It's been my whole life. When I took out a large amount of money on my first campaign, I kept some of the cash of that. Like, to tell you, I just have cash in my house. I don't have as much today as I would normally have, but I'm building back up now. So you just put money in. It's a very good practice. I would advise it to all women. So you can't identify when you came into this cash or where the cash came from? I didn't say I couldn't identify it. No, nobody gives me anything. I am sure that the source of the money is always the work, sweat, and tears of me. What you asked me for is when did the money go in there? What I am trying to tell you is, so I got divorced in 2005 from my husband. And, and no, 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 it's important. You said where did the money come from, and I need to tell you where the money came from. And so for many, first? many years, I have kept money in my house. That money in my worst days has probably only been $500 or $1,000. At my best days, I've probably had $15,000 in my house at cash. At all times, there's going to be cash in my house or wherever I'm laying my head. The money that you paid Mr. Wade, the cash, in October of 2022, you do not know where that money came from. I do know where it came from. It came from my sweat and tears. You know which job it came from. Did it come from Fulton County or did it come from a private job? It came from, I don't, I'm not a, what are you talking about? So it could have come from a, a private job because before I was DA, I was in private practice. So I earned money during that time period that's probably in there. You don't it know could have, from. what do you mean I don't know where it came from? I, I absolutely. I understand the situation. We can move on. Okay, thanks. Um, same with Aruba. You don't know where that cash came from either, right? Ma'am, you are mischaracterizing my testimony greatly. Um, I'm not going to allow you to mischaracterize my testimony. I know that I keep money in my house. The amounts of money I gave Mr. Wade, it was never that serious. I don't think I've ever handed him more than $2,500 in a reimbursement. So we're not talking about $20,000 in cash. I don't have $20,000 in cash right now. The most I ever gave him, I know I gave him $2,500 when we went to Belize because we went to one um, hotel and then we went to a second hotel. That $2,500 I actually gave him while we were still in Belize. I know that the Aruba trip, the one that you described with his mom, I think I gave him about $2,000 for that trip for like total. His mom uh, went to Aruba with you? The Aruba trip. So I consider that to be one trip. So okay. we got off of a cruise ship. And then we went to Aruba, which is why I cannot remember is that the time that we had to stay in Miami to wait for the flight for Aruba. <laughs> so I consider that one trip, but we didn't like come back to Atlanta and leave. We went, we flew down to Miami. We got on a cruise ship. We spent a couple of days with his mama. We came back to Miami. When we came back to Miami, either that day or the next day, we flew to Aruba. We spent a few days in Aruba and we came back. That was really one trip. Uh, even though we went two places, it was one trip. Um, so let's talk about the California trip. Napa. Um, is that when you were moving your daughter out to California? When you all went, or did you have two trips to California? My daughter doesn't live in California. Did she ever live in California? I'm not discussing to you the location of my child. Um, so how many times did you go with Mr. Wade to California? Once. And you all stayed in Napa Valley and he paid for the plane tickets and the hotel? He paid for the plane tickets and the hotel. Um, and what did you pay for on that trip? I gave him much less cash that time, probably four or $500. And then I paid for uh, a bunch of stuff. I think we did two different wine tours that you do, which are pretty expensive. Um, I think I bought him, he likes wine. I don't really like wine, to be honest with you. I like Grey Goose. Um, I bought him a bottle of wine while we were there. 
and the sippings that you do. I, I can't remember how many, like four or five different places you go. I remember we went to um, to this place that they do pairings. Um, that was the most expensive thing that I think that we did while we were there. So they would pair uh, they they would pair uh, champagne, chocolate, and champagne, chocolate, and caviar. It was a three, and it was like three different things: Sweden, Russia, someplace else. I'll make that up. But um, that that was the most expensive thing we did that trip, and I paid for I paid for that. You pay cash for us doing that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I. But I, that trip did not cost me a lot of money. I might have took like seven hundred and fifty dollars in cash on me because we weren't gone very long. I was and just, then I. I'd only asked if you paid in cash. I don't need to know the amounts. So when I well. travel, I always take cash. Um, and is the cash that you keep in your house, or do you keep it at the condo that you were living in? So at that point, it wouldn't be at my house, and I'm sorry if. I was not clear. The money would be wherever I laid my head. So I wouldn't leave the money at the house. So if um, I was unclear, no. Money's going to be where I stay. How much did you pay for your trip to Panama? To where? Panama, I believe. I didn't go to I Panama. The, I may have the location wrong. I never went to Panama. So Mr. Way went to uh, Panama with his frat brother. Oh, he went to Panama with his frat brothers. So tell me about, let's see. So I want to make sure I've got them. I've got Belize. You already covered Belize. You covered the... So let me tell you our real trips. In October, we went with, uh, we went on the cruise with his mom. We got back from the cruise with his mom and we went to Aruba. I consider that one trip. Second trip, New Year's Eve, we went on a cruise to the Bahamas. That's the second trip. I want to make sure I get this right. Third trip... 100% on me. I think he might have spent $200 on that entire trip. Uh, we went to Belize. That was my trip. That was, you know, his 50th. And then Napa Valley, we went around May. I don't know the dates, but it seems to me like it was close to Mother's Day. And those are the only trips? Um, so that the record is complete. I can remember one time driving to... Where were we? South Carolina, and we met my sister for lunch with her man. Um, when we was didn't that? stay the I don't know, but we didn't stay the night there. But I guess people would consider that a trip if you drive somewhere and you come back. That was insane because it was like five hours to drive. We ate lunch and we drove right back. Um, I can remember driving to some little town in Georgia. I don't even know where I was. Um, I had never been there before or after. There's some boat you can get on over to when there's like a slave thing, if that gives anyone any reference. We didn't do that. Um, I remember doing that. I remember driving one time to Charlotte. We had lunch with one of my very close girlfriends. And again, we drove to Charlotte, met my girlfriend for lunch, and drove right back. So that's a trip. We didn't stay the night there, but I just want to be complete in my testimony. We drove someplace, had lunch, drove back. Um, I don't remember another driving someplace distant for um, lunch and coming back to Charlotte to see a girlfriend, to meet my sister uh, in South Carolina. We went by ourselves when I told you about that remote place in Georgia. We could have driven someplace else and had lunch and came back, but that's all that comes to my recollection right now. There could have been another place we drove and had lunch. My um, security team was very clear to me. I'm not to be out and about in Atlanta without them. And so for me to do something just very normal that a normal person would get to do if they weren't prosecuting this case, I got to drive four hours to do it. And that's what I was going to ask you. Your security detail, did they take you to and from your house? They take well, so I haven't been able to enjoy my home condo. I'm since sorry, in March of where you lay your 20, head. Do they take you to and from where you lay your head? Ninety nine percent of the time. Would they take Mr. Wade to and from wherever you laid your head? That has never in the history of ever happened ever. OK, your security so, team has never taken him to from my house. That's a lie. That's I'm another if they have ever taken him. Anywhere. And I'm telling you that that's never happened. So your security team has never taken my Mr. Wade security anywhere. team has never taken Mr. Wade from any place where I have lived and brought him here. Never. Not once. Not ever. Have they ever taken the two of you together to where anywhere? Well, we've left this building and um, 
for going to lunch, but I go to lunch so rarely that that is a very rare occasion, I am sure. And let me be clear, it wouldn't just be Mr. Wade. So I'm sure my security team has taken me to lunch. Probably been a time I've left here, seven o'clock, gone to get something to eat. And I don't even know that they would have taken him or if he would have driven himself, but they've taken me to do that. But we're talking very few, very far in between. Most days I don't even eat lunch. And when I do, it's because my assistant has heated up some bag, something, and I, I eat through meetings and eat in my office. It's not a practice of mine to go to lunch. During the time period that you were dating, would your security team ever take you two together anymore? No. Never? If there was a lunch that occurred that I just described, if there was a meal that occurred that I just described, anything outside of that, and it needs to be very clear, not often, once, twice, because I want to be uh, over-inclusive, I'm saying once or twice. I'm not certain that it happened, but I'd rather be over-inclusive with you. So your office objected to us getting um, Delta records for flights that you may have taken when Mr. Wade. Well, no, no, no. Look, uh, I object to you getting records. You've been intrusive into people's personal lives. You're confused. You think I'm on trial. These people are on trial for trying to steal an election in 2020. I'm not on trial, no matter how hard you try to put me on trial. So my question was... Do you have any problem? I object to getting any personal records of mine. We're not dealing with privilege through a witness. And I'm not, no, 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 I'm not dealing with privilege. What um, we had offered to put them in camera for the court to review. And I just want to know if she has any That's problem. That's not something you deal with with a witness. <clears throat> okay. Um, you have to file as part of your job something called an income and financial disclosure report, correct? That's correct. And you filed your first one. So you filed two to date. Is that right? Is it two or three? I probably would have filed 21, 22. And maybe I haven't filed 23 yet because isn't it due like June of the next year? April, I believe. So you filed, let's see, you filed your first one. It looks like April 15th, 2022. And your second one, um, April 17th, 2023. Does that sound familiar? That, I don't remember the dates, but you're an officer of the court. I'm going to hope you're telling the truth now. May I, may I approach the witness? You may. Thank you. Um, I already gave the state a copy, Exhibit 20 and 21, if you take a look at those. They are part of the certified records. <laughs> Can somebody bring me some? Yeah. <laughs> These eyes are getting a little old. Yes. Okay. Yes, so ma'am. Those are the ones that you filed? This, dep this looks like me for sure. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Judge, we'd move to admit 20 and 21. I think you need to delineate which ones, which, which 20 ones which. is 2021. So it, it accounts for the time period, Your Honor, January the 1st, 21 through December the 31st, 2021. That is Defendant's Exhibit 20. Um, Defendant's okay. Exhibit 2021, it accounts for the time period, January the 1st, 2022 through December the 1st of 2022. All right. Any objection to Exhibits 20 and 21? Nope. I'm oh, sorry. From other counsel? Admitted without objection. Yeah. Um, when did your relationship, your personal relationship with Mr. Wade end? Our personal relationship ended in um, this year. So let's be, let's be very clear so that we don't mix words. I, I don't want to mix words in here. Mr. Wade is my friend right now. Um, Mr. Wade, I would say, has been my friend since 2020. I think he started out as like a mentor and a professional colleague. Um, he became my friend and somebody that I, I really respected. Um, I feel very indebted to Mr. Wade uh, for taking on the task of this job. And um, he is certainly my friend and one of the people that I respect the most. Um, so if you ask about a personal relationship, I consider myself to have a personal relationship right now, Mr. Wade. I consider myself to have a personal relationship with Anna Cross. I consider myself to have a personal relationship with Mr. Abadi. I consider myself to have a personal relationship with Andrew Evans. Okay, let me just so clarify that. I have a personal relationship with him as we speak right now. A romantic I don't think that's what you're asking. I think that's what you're asking. When did your romantic relationship with Mr. Wade end? My when did it end? Me and Mr. Wade... Um, we are good friends. Uh, 
my respect for him has grown over these seven weeks of attacks. Uh, we are very good friends. I think, but for these attacks, it would have been a friendship that as life goes, you would have stopped having. Um, I think that you have cemented that we'll be friends to the day we die. Right. <clears throat> that, uh, let's, we just have an answer to the question. I'm, I can handle Mr. Seda. Let's she, have it. She asked about a personal relationship. She asked when the romantic relationship ended. That's the question. It, it Sometime in, um, I'd say late summer of 2023. So I don't believe me and... Um, what, this is what you're really asking about. This is the salaciousness of all of this, right? No, I'm just uh, asking about your romantic relationship. When you stopped I, dating. I, I'm asking. I, I think that me and Mr. Wade, so he's a man. He probably would say June or July. I would say we had a tough conversation in August. And so that men in relationships at the end of physical intimacy, women in relationships when that tough conversation takes place. And where, um, when did he come to, I guess the condo, I'm not sure what you called it, condo apartment. Um, would he come and stay at that condo or visit you there? I'm sorry, visit you there. What condo, what apartment? I want to be clear. So not your house. I know you classified one as house and one as condo. So I'm trying to use those terms. So um, but there's been more, I don't understand this because of this case, I got to move. And so I, I need to, if you could ask a more precise question, yes, please give me the time period that we're Mr. Talking Wade about. visits you at the place you laid your head. When has he ever visited you at the place you laid your head? So let's be clear because you've lied in this. This let me tell you which one you lied in right here. I think you lied right here. No, 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 no. This is the truth, Judge. And this it, is, it, it is a lie. It is gonna, a lie. Right, Ms. Willis, you, Mr. Sena, thank you. We're going to take five minutes. Be back in five. May I go to the bathroom? Well, we well, don't use one next door, so there's no. That's like not where Mm. Well, come to order. Thank you, everybody. Have a seat. Well, yeah, one of the 
No, that's bad. <laughs> Ready, Judge? Yeah. Miss Taylor, you good? Oh, All right. All right. Thank right. you. We're back on the record. Before we proceed, though, uh, I would advise everyone here, um, this being a room mostly full of lawyers who have spent their lives in and out of a courtroom. We all know what professionalism looks like, what decorum looks like and devoting ourselves to the rule of law and proper advocacy. I would urge everyone to keep those principles in the mind, starting with the fact that we won't talk over each other. And from there, we'll get through this. Ms. Merchant. Thank you, Judge. <clears throat> How often did Mr. Wade visit you at a place where you were living between 2019 and 2021? So you want to start with the lie that he lived with me in, in South Fulton in 2019, a home he's never been to? That's one lie you told in Judge, your document. I, no. You, Judge, I didn't ask her about that. Miss um, Merchant, I want you to ask a very precise question. I think she's saying and answering that he did not live with her. So why don't we break that up into smaller ever. parts? And I, I didn't ask about living. But you put in your, did, while we're talking about professionalism, no, while we're talking about professionalism, she put in three different documents he lived with me. Full opportunity to respond. In and filed that with the court. In 2019. He's never been to South Fulton. In 2019, I lived in South Fulton. He has never been to my residence in 2019, ever, not once. In 2019, he's never been to your residence, any place. I lived in my home in South Fulton before I started getting the threats that were here, a house I 
paid for with my own sweat and tears. I'm no longer able to live there. But in 2019, I did. And in the two months of 2019 that I knew Mr. Wade, three months, the beginning of October, all of November, and all of December, Mr. Wade never came to my house in South Fulton. Let me help you out. I lived there in 2020. He never came to my house in 2020, let alone live with me, as you put falsely in these documents. In the first three months of 2021, when I could still enjoy my home, Mr. Wade never came to South Fulton, and it is certainly a lie that he lived with me. So in 2020, let's, so you said 2019, 2020, did Mr. Wade ever visit you at a place that you He has in? never been to my home in South Fulton. 2020 was before I knew that a phone call was going to be made and I was going to have to abandon my home. As a result thereof, he never visited, lived at, came to, or has seen South Fulton. You qualified that with your home in South Fulton. I'm That's asking, where I lived in 2020. In 2020, did he ever visit you at a place that you resided? Okay. I don't understand. You're going to have to give me guidance. In 2020, so I lived in South Fulton. Okay. That's the only place I lived in South Fulton. That's before I had to abandon my home, Judge. All right. And at my well, home in South Fulton, we'll miss, I never, he never came there, okay? So okay. if you Ms. don't Wells, come someplace, you can't live there. Ms. Wells, that's, I'm going to have to caution you. That's, this is going to be my the first time I have to caution you. We have to listen to the questions as asked. And if this happens again and again, I'm going to have no choice but to strike your testimony. So... We need to break this down. Ms. Merchant's question, I believe, was uh, asking whether you lived anywhere other than South Fulton. I did not live anywhere but South Fulton, Georgia, in 2020. That is before I began my prosecution of this case, and I, it was my plan to only live there. Did Mr. Wade ever visit you at the condo that you leased from Ms. Yerdy? He visited that condo, yes. He did? Yes. Did he ever spend the night at that condo? No. Just visited? Yeah, but he did visit for sure. Did you ever go out to eat together other than the lunches you talked about In during 2019 or 2020? I would think that we probably went to lunch, but it wouldn't have been. Let me think. 2019. I'm going to say, I don't know. I'm, I'm going to say we probably broke bread someplace in 2019. I, I'm, I don't remember it, but it seems like we would have broke bread sometime in 2019. So I'm going to say yes, although I have no recollection. Um, but it seems to me like I, I go out to eat and drink with pretty much everyone. So I'm going to say yes. So outside of the vacations that we've already talked about, did you ever go out to dinner with Mr. Wade? I, I mentioned to you that I have to object as to what time period, like we're, we're asking very vague questions. I thought we were treating the witness as hostile under 611. We're no longer doing that. So are we going to go back and forth? We need to be more specific with our questions if we're going to treat her as hostile. <coughs> All right, Ms. Merchant, it's not so much. I think you can elect between leading and open into questions, but I think we are still wondering. And I think we need to get back on track of focusing on the financial benefit or the relationship. And my next question about if you did go out to dinner, who paid when you went out to dinner? He paid. I paid. You both paid. Uh, okay. So let me be real clear. We didn't say, oh, the bill is $102. You give $51. I'll give $51. I don't operate like that with my girlfriends. I don't operate like that with anyone. He caught the bill. I caught the bill. Whomever. Did you ever pay him through Cash App? No. You only ever paid him through cash? Well, yes, uh, but we're talking about, I'm very confused You've now. You've never like, given Mr. Wade money through Cash App? No. The only money you've ever given him outside of a contract is cash. I didn't give him money in a contract, so that was cute, but I didn't give him money outside, uh, in a contract. What happened, at, no, we're going to answer it since you said it. He worked. He worked more hours than he was paid, and the county paid him for the work that he did. So don't be cute with me and then think that you're not gonna get an answer. And I will ask you about the contract in a minute. I asked you about cash. Did you ever pay him anything? And I'm trying to qualify my questions. I'm not talking about the contract with Fulton County that, that was paid, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about outside of that, did you ever pay him anything other than cash? 
I've only given him cash a few times in, in the course of what we're talking about. So you've if we would go to dinner, let, let her finish her answer. If we would go to dinner, I wouldn't give him cash because he paid for dinner or I paid for dinner. I've given him cash only a few times in life, probably four. Okay. Probably the most money I've ever handed him is twenty five hundred dollars. The least amount of money I've handed him, probably between five hundred and a thousand dollars. You never wrote him a check. Ma'am, I don't have checks. Okay. Um, so you have no proof of any reimbursement for any of these things because it was all cash, right? The testimony of one witness is enough to prove a fact. So my question Are you was, telling me you that I'm lying proof? to you? Is that what you're intimating right here? I'm asking if you have any proof that you paid him any I mean, of these The monies. proof is what I just told you. You have no written proof. Is that correct? So I have some... Um, probably some transactions like in Belize. I probably spent $500 on my card uh, in Belize. I spent 800, I can't remember, 900 bucks on each of our tickets to go to Belize. I did the $700. I probably got some minor expenses in Aruba that would be on a card. But for the most part for those trips, other than, so the two cruises, I gave him money for those before we ever left because um, they were pre-booked. Let me answer. Well, the, the, the question was if you had any written proof. And so... So I've answered you that I've had written we proof. We can move to the next question. If you've answered if we had any written proof, and that was my question. Um, I, I want to make sure that we're clear that for the two cruises... Judge, and that's I the asked cruise if she gave him written proof. We weren't, we're not going to talk over <laughs> each other. Ms. Merchant, she answered your question, so we can ask the next question. Ms. Willis, Ms. Cross will have plenty of opportunities to let you clarify your answers when it's her turn. Thank you, Judge. Knowing your role as district attorney... You know that public funds are scrutinized and money is scrutinized and things like that. You understand. I've never, I'm sorry, go ahead. You understand you're under a microscope. You have reporting requirements, all of those types of things. Um, you have no record other than your testimony of the money that you've given Mr. Wade. You've already asked that question. Let's keep going. Um, when you took office, you had a tax lien of $4,600. Did you pay that with cash when you made that tax lien hole? I probably paid through uh, however you pay. Okay. So, but you were saying that you had amounts of cash. You still had that lien in 2022 when you were dating Wade and going on these trips. So the cash that you gave him, that could have been used to pay this tax lien off? You going to tell me how to pay my bills? That object is not relevant as it relates to why we're here today. Mr. So Merchant, um, if you, are you trying to establish that she was insolvent in some way? Um, I... Definitely was trying to establish that, that she did not have these mass amounts of cash that she's talking about. Yes. All right. Ask the, re -ask the question. Um, you had a tax lien in 2022, $4,600. If you say I did. And you did not use this cash that you had to reimburse Mr. Wade to pay that off, correct? No. Okay. I went shopping, too, when I didn't pay it off. And you talked about, uh, you, you, gave an, you gave a lot of interviews to some authors of a book called Find Me the Witness, right? I would not characterize it as a lot. I probably have spoken to them you know, two gonna, or three gonna, times. My question is, is relevant as to... I, I think it's already come up that finances are discussed in the book. I'll overrule that. Thank you. Ms. Wilson, you can continue your answer. What came up with Mr. Wade as it relates to hearsay statements that he was asked about in relation to what Ms. Willis may or may not have said in relation to an author... So it's not relevant to the testimony that's occurring at this time. I think Ms. Merchant has said that it, inside the book, she also makes statements as to her own finances, and that's at issue. So you gave interviews to the authors of this book, correct? Once or twice. Okay. Let's and three times, um, just to be comprehensive. I don't know if it was three times, two or three times, I think. You were quoted in the book, and I will give you a chance to say if this is a misquote. You are quoted, I when they asked you about if you wanted to run for office for DA, you were quoted, I really don't want to be financially effed up again. Do you remember saying that? So what that refers to, so that- My we're question there, first is if you remember saying that. I remember saying something similar to that, but I would like to be able to explain what that's, that's in fine. reference to. That's not um, in reference to anything else. It was a huge sacrifice to be district attorney of Fulton County, huge. I was doing just fine. I had a municipal court judgeship that was paying me a hundred something thousand dollars a year. And like, you got to show up twice a week. It, easiest thing I've ever done in life. I also had private clients that were um, paying me to represent them. So I was able to have a law practice and that. Um, raising two daughters by myself, 
there were times in life where things were hard. And so I was telling people, I don't really run for DA. I don't want to run for DA. I'm in a good position right now. I got this easy job that I enjoy being the chief judge of the city of South Fulton. I'm making money at uh, the law firm. And I'm not sure that I want to make this sacrifice. And why does it always have to be me? Um, eventually, I prayed. I think that I was the appropriate person. I think that I did that. So when you're referring to that, what I'm saying is, I, why should I make a sacrifice again? And what I was not talking about is being district attorney. Once you get elected district attorney, you're, you're in a fine financial position. I make over $200,000 a year. What I was talking about is I ran for judge. When I ran for judge, I took $50,000 of my personal money out of my retirement. And that money ended up being lost. And I know when you bet on yourself, you're going to have to bet money on yourself. And so what I was talking about was not wanting to go through the personal financial expense of running for office. By no means did I think that I was going to uh, be financially in a bad position once I won. Let's talk about what I was up against because it's important to understand that comment. I had a district attorney who had been here for 24 years. And Judge, People, no, no, no. This is her, it's very relevant questions. as to what my mindset was about this. So I'm trying to answer your question. It's so really what I was saying is I Taylor so it's a finance. Right, but it, it is about my finances. Right, if about if I finances. I didn't nobody put me in this seat. So I had already run for office once. I had spent fifty thousand dollars of my own money running. And it was vamoose, nothing. And so when I'm talking to those offers, I'm talking about the contemplation of the sacrifice of the run, not the sacrifice of once you become DA. The odds were against me. I was likely going to lose uh, the election based on who I was running against. So that needs to be in the, the appropriate context. Isn't it true that the authors also wrote, and you can just beat us if, if you'd like, um, that you were broke after that race? The 2018 race. Yes. Yeah, that was, that was a hard race. I wasn't broke like I didn't have any. So broke is relative to depending where you are, but uh, that hurt to lose that $50,000. So I'm sure my mental mindset was like, I just gave $50,000 away. Right. So they characterized it from their conversations with you that you were broke. You had poured your own money into the campaign and you weren't able to pay your own bills because of your, oh, I'm sorry, your clients couldn't pay their bills to you and you had a paltry array of family and asset forfeiture cases. It says you were trying to make it month to month. Um, is that an accurate depiction of your financial situation at that point? I would want to read that, but I, I don't I don't remember clients not being able to pay their bills or may I approach Judge? You can. You may. Page 13. I have not read this book. So, so like this fact here, her ex-husband Fred had run into a financial. I have no information about I didn't that. I ask you about that. Okay. I just asked about if you were if what they represent from their interviews with you that you were broke and that you had clients that weren't able to to pay their bills. Can you show me where that is? Because this is where you put the tab. So that's where I read. Broke, couldn't pay their bills. Yeah, that that. Uh, I'm sure I characterized myself as broke as leaving that fifty thousand dollars. I don't know that I had a. Uh, her nascent law practice at Paltry Rev. Well, you just I didn't have mismanagement. I, I didn't. I test. I thought I had a law practice. I so this is not correct. I'm okay, sure. So. It's just I. I, I didn't have any asset forfeiture cases. So that, I had one case where uh, they had took one of my clients' air, money at the airport. That's. I don't know if that's what they're carrying. I don't know. Um, Paltry Array. I did have family law cases. I guess that's what they're talking about. And I. Clients who couldn't pay their bills ain't clients, so no. So my question was just if this was a fair and accurate representation where it says you were trying to make it month to month at that point. No, I don't think that that is actually a fair and accurate representation, but I am certain that after the 2018 election, um, I'm still not really happy about having given up that 50000 You know when you paid your tax lien? I don't. You don't? Do you know if you paid it? I know I've paid some taxes. I don't know. I don't want to speculate. Okay. Um, did you tell anyone at Fulton County Board of County Commissioners about your relationship with Mr. Wade? No. Did you disclose your relationship to anybody at Fulton County? No, I don't think so. 
Um, and as the chief law enforcement officer of Fulton County, I assume that you're familiar with the county code and warden ordinances. I've said we're not going to cover that in this hearing, Ms. Merchant. Um, I'm sorry, Judge? We, I th we said we weren't going to cover the uh, county regulations. Okay, and I, I, I won't. Um, let me ask you this then. So are you aware that you're required to disclose any relationship with someone that you contract with in Fulton County? You're going to object to the court prior ruling that you made this morning. You made Would this be different because it's a potential for impeachment? Yes. What did you ask me? I'm um, Ms. Merchant, if you could re-ask the question. Okay. Um, <laughs> are you aware that Fulton County requires you to disclose any relationship with someone that you're doing business with? I'm not aware, and I'm, I know often that time things are confused with state constitutional officers in county, but I'm not aware. Okay. So it's not your, so it's your understanding that you don't have a duty to disclose the relationship. She's answered that question. Fine. Let's keep going. Um, Did you keep track of this cash that you paid him at all? What are you talking? I don't understand. Did you keep track? Did you keep a ledger? Did you keep track of it? So I've only given him cash, as I mentioned, three or four times. There's no ledger. This is friends handing money off to each other. So the answer is no. You I think, and I think you've already asked whether there was any written proof whatsoever. And she's yes. answered that. Okay. So we've covered this. Let's move on. Um, Who are you referring to when you suggested that Mr. Roman's motion to disqualify was racially motivated? We already said we're not talking about the forensic misconduct that's been alleged. Okay. And okay. And just so the record is clear, I don't believe I said that his motion was racially motivated, so I don't want that to stay there. I've never said his motion was racially motivated, so that, uh, that should not be Lewis, true. I think it would be that. best if we don't need to go down that road. Uh, we're going to save that for argument. Um. You once said that you would not engage with a personal relationship with anyone that worked for Fulton County. Is that correct? Uh, an employee? Anyone that worked for Fulton County. I think I said an employee. Okay. So that's the qualification you give an employee? You would. I think that's the statement that I made. So if you want to quote me, quote me accurately. So it's your position because Mr. Wade was not an employee? Or it's your position he wasn't an employee, correct? Mr. Wade is not an employee, and he will tell you that over and over again. One moment, Judge. <clears throat> I'm sorry, this statement, just so I make sure I accurately quote you. What you said was you won't work, you won't sleep with people who work under you. Do you not consider Mr. Wade working under you? I consider Mr. Wade to be an agent. Agent? Yeah. All right. And a pointee is what I really re re think of him as. Your point, whatever merit it has, uh, Ms. Merchant, is on the record. Next question. All right. Do we need any moments in, in a minute? Mr. Sadow. No, I'm ready to do your moment. All right. I'm going to try to ask you questions that you can actually answer without having to explain, OK? Yes, sir. My comprehension skills are pretty good, so we should do all right. We shall soon see. If I heard you correctly, you moved into what I will refer to as the Yurti condo in either March or April of 2021. Is that correct? Sometime between late February and April. Yes, I don't. Just so we're clear. Yes. But in that time period, you're, you're in the ballpark. We're in the ballpark. Okay. And is that... Yerti condo, would you say that it is in Hapeville? It is in Hapeville, yes, sir. And you moved in there for safety reasons? My father, uh, <laughs> yes, I moved in there. My, we were concerned. My father was terribly concerned about me continuing to live at the house. And it, so they were clear, people came to my house at 5 o'clock in the morning um, about the police brutality cases, saying I was going to have a wake-up call. Uh, there were security threats due to gang cases. And there were concerns due to the, um, that was at the very beginning of this, looking into that. And so for all of those reasons and what was happening, my father wanted me out the house and um, begrudgingly I left. Okay. So the answer to the question was yes, for safety reasons. Correct? 
those were all of the things that caused the safety concerns. I, I, I'm sorry. I'm not if, questioning whether they are or are not safety concerns. I just ask that you moved into this condo, the RT condo, right. for safety reasons, right? Yes. Okay. At the time that you moved into the condo, be it from February to April of 2021, Yes. Was your father still living in your house? Right, because my father... That, that's yeah. all I ask you. But I, I get to explain the answer, sir. I, I don't know if there's an explanation. If I ask you, was your father still living at your house, the answer is either he was or he wasn't. Yes, but you are going to get to argue at the end of this, as we both I'm know. I'm not going to argue and so anything. I would I'm going like to ask, be able to explain right. why. I'm going to so, okay. yes, okay. because my father is an older gentleman, Ms. he Willis. was worried about COVID, and he stayed. Ms. Willis, I'm going to have to say that's... Second time, whenever we have to put a pause, we stop testifying, okay? You'll have a chance to explain yourself. The question was whether your father was not staying there at the time, and you're clarifying that in your answer as well. You can have a brief clarification, but it shouldn't be something that reaches well beyond the question. All right, Mr. Sado, you can re-ask the question. We'll see where it takes us. Okay, thank you. Was your father still living in your house at the time you moved to what I would refer to as a year T condo? Yes, sir, he was due to his concerns related to COVID. Okay. The safety concern was that there was potential danger at your house. Is that correct? Yes, my address had been exposed. So, yes, there was concerns about potential danger at my house. Okay, so anyone staying at your house in the time period after you went to the Yerti condo was still in danger, correct? Yeah, what? Well, no, no, no. He, 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 I think you have to. Uh, it's your attorney, Ms. Willis. Um, sorry, Mr. Body, your objection is speculation. Yes. To the question I of. Speculation. Whether someone was still in danger at her condo? I can read. Just let her answer the question. Or Mr. Uh, Sadon wants to rephrase. So he's no, yeah, I, I, sure. I was able to I've understand got, it. I've got the objection, and then I have. I'll withdraw the objection. You can move forward. Okay. So, and I am remember the question, so I can answer it. Well, you, you can now that the objection's been withdrawn. Can you try to answer that question? Yes. Is there still a safety concern I was... for people staying at the house? I, yes, I was very concerned about my father still living at the house. However, if you have dealt with an older gentleman, he was not leaving the house, despite my urging him that I thought he should leave as well. He did not want to leave the house because he was particularly worried at his age about COVID. But that became, a, a, I don't want to say, a, a, I was not happy with that decision of my father's, but I can't ultimately make him leave, and he stayed there too long, in my opinion. Okay, thank you. During that period that you left to go to the Yerti condo, yes. did any of your children stay at your house? So I don't, um, I don't think that they were there at that point. Certainly my baby wasn't there. I'm talking about this entire period. We're talking about, if I remember correctly, and you'll correct me, I'm sure, you said that you stayed there at what I would call the Yerti condo until January of 2022, correct? Yes. Okay, so I'm asking you in that period, which would be February to April of 2021, until January of 22, did any of your children stay at your house? And you don't have to yell at me. I'm able to understand. I, so I would ask you to not yell at me. That being said, I don't actually expressly remember, but I can tell you since I have left my home, there have been times my oldest daughter came in, but I can't tell you with certainty the time window that you've said, if they did or not. And so I don't want to speculate to that, but there was some time that my oldest daughter came back, whether it was that period or after I left the Yerdy residence, I'm not sure. Okay. Okay. So the, if, if I continue to go into more detail on this, you're not going to be able to give me an answer of whether or not, in fact, any of your children were still at the house or stayed at your house during that time period, correct? What I can give you clarity of so that we are clear is from the time I moved out in February-ish of 2021, um, after I left there, there was a time period that my oldest daughter came back. But if you're asking me, was it in that window or after, I just don't have a recollection of that because, you know, your kids come and they go. And so I don't remember the specific time period, and I apologize for that. 
Did your children ever stay with you at the Yerti condo? Uh, like maybe a night. Okay. Like for a girl's night or something, but live with, no. Okay. Did anyone else stay with you at the Yerti condo, okay. including Miss Yerti? Never. Miss Yerti never lived in the condo. She met her husband and they moved. They weren't quite married, but they moved. Nobody ever lived with me in the condo. That was a, my a word lonely was, period. My word was stayed, not lived stayed with you at the condo? I guess I don't understand the distinction, but no one ever, my, I think my baby, my oldest child, I think she spent one night with me, maybe my oldest and my youngest. But I think that whole time I was in that place, other than that one night, I don't think anyone ever, um, that was a very lonely period in my time, life. I don't think anyone ever spent the night other than maybe one night. I remember a picture of my baby sitting on the couch in that place. And I'm thinking she spent that night, but just a very lonely time in life. Okay. Now, we'll stay with the lonely theme just for a minute. Did Nathan Wade visit you at the Yerti condo from the time you moved in until he was hired on November the 1st of 2021? So I moved out uh, of that condo, but during that time period, he, yeah, I'm sure he came to visit. Uh, he came to visit. I can remember us going, I think the restaurant's Lickety Split. I can remember him picking me up, going to Lickety Split and eat, ordering some food and coming and sitting at my table and eating. So I remember times that he visited me at that condo. Yes. Okay, could you give us an approximation of how many times Mr. Wade visited you at the condo between the time you moved in and prior to November 1 of 2020? I don't think often, but I don't rem I don't want to speculate. Can we say more than five, more than 10? I'm gonna tell you the problem I'm having here. Let's say more than 10, but I'm not sure that that's even accurate. Uh, he certainly has come and picked me up, gone and grab some food to eat. I don't remember him being in that condo a lot. That's your, I, I don't, I'm sorry. You want a number and what I don't want to do. Giving me your, your current domestic. and best recollection is all I'm asking for. That's all I can give you, sir. How many times did any of the prosecution team, how, how many times did Anna Cross come to that condo between the time you moved in and November 1st of 2021? I don't think Anna's ever been to that condo. What about any other prosecutor that's involved in the prosecution of this case? I don't think any of them have. Just Mr. Wade. That's correct, sir. <clears throat> but it was a lonely time. Oh, my God. That, yeah, that 2021. Uh, I have a lot of guilt about this time period in my life. Let me tell you why. But it, yes, it was a lonely time. Okay. I was very appreciative to the citizens for giving me this responsibility and this duty. But what I very, very quickly learned is that this is a very isolating job. And 2021 was a lonely time. I turned 50 in 2021. That's probably one of the worst birthdays I've ever had. I, I spent it alone. So I have a clear recollection of 2021 being lonely. Okay. Did Mr. Wade ever um, visit you at the condo in the time period I'm talking about prior to November of 2021 when Ms. Yerti was at the condo? So Ms. Yerti and me, were, we didn't share the condo at the same time. So the answer would be no. But we never stayed there together. So it's an well, impossibility. Saying, it's an impossibility. Yeah. Okay. Now, Ms. So that you, Ms. Yerti, because we need to get clarification on this. Ms. Yerti stayed in that place. There may have been a time that me and Mr. Wade visited, like went and saw Ms. Yerty, but me and Ms. Yerty never lived there together. Just so we're clear. Uh, well, maybe that was clear, but I'm going to have to try again. Okay. Was Ms. Yerty still living in the condo when you moved in? Not a day. Okay. So what I'm talking another misrepresentation in this. We never lived together. I, I never lived with Ms. Yerty. My question, though, I'm trying to understand okay. that after you moved in, to the condo. Mm -hmm. Miss Yerti had been, she was out of the condo, right? She got a house. Uh, That's all I'm asking. She's not in the condo. She is, we never stay, Miss Yerti and I never stay a day together in the condo. Yeah. All of her stuff was out of the condo 
and all my stuff, some of my stuff, not all of it, obviously, was moved into the condo. So we never stayed there together. No, sir. All right. So when I ask you about Mr. Wade visiting the condo yes. when you were staying there. Yes. Ms. Yerty wasn't staying there, correct? That would be correct, yes. She wouldn't be at the condo, correct? No, she would not have been. It would be you and Mr. Wade alone at the condo, correct? Yes. That is, there weren't any other witnesses to Mr. Wade and you at the condo, correct? Yes. No security, none of your security detail. Without object, she said it was just her and Mr. Wade. You made your point, Mr. Sado. Let's move on to the next one. Yes, Your Honor. Who in the prosecution team prior to, I guess, the <clears throat> motion being filed by um, Defendant Ro Roman, who in the prosecution team knew of your personal relationship, and now I'm talking romantic, with Mr. Wade? So, sir, I am extremely private. All I ask no, no, is no, no. who knew. It, it's not a, if you, the answer is no one knew, that's fine. No, I ask you who knew. You answer Let me it, just tell answer you it and then explain this, Willis. I am very private. When I supervised Mr. Body and Mr. McAfee, they didn't know who I was dating, but I can assure you I was dating somebody. So that I kept something private, that's my private life, is not any mystery to anyone. It, it's, so, it, it's, it's like a, a woman doesn't have the right to keep her private life private. Mm -hmm. And I'm speaking on this because there have been all these in, intimations. You still haven't answered the question, Ms. Willis. I'm sorry, what was the question then, Your Honor? Is there anyone else who knew about it? And then you can explain. I, I don't know. I don't think so. I certainly didn't um, go out telling my business to the world. Okay, so the best of your recollection, you didn't inform anyone on the prosecution team that the individual that you had chosen to lead the prosecution team had a personal relationship with you. So I, is that I correct? That's inaccurate. Your, your question is inaccurate. What? Because you, you stated that the person I chose we had a personal relationship. So we had a friendship. We have, to, we have all these distinguishing factors. Remember, when I chose him in November of 21, first of all, let's get this straight. Mr. Wade was not actually my first choice. That's no insult to him. Your Honor, no, 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 I, it I is. You, because of the way you phrased the question, you said, when I chose him, I didn't inform people of a personal relationship. We have defined personal as romantic. It is an inaccurate way to state the question. Then I will as... certainly restate it so it is very accurate. Okay, and please do not yell at me. <clears throat> you hired Mr. Wade for the first time on November 1st of 2021, correct? Of 2021, yes, okay. sir. Your testimony is, whether one accepts it or not, your testimony is that at the time you hired Mr. Wade, there had never been a romantic relationship with Mr. Wade before you hired him, correct? Yes, my testimony is that we were very good friends, but not, well, we're talking about a sex, so let's just don't. Well, no, I'm not talking about, I'm saying romantic relationship doesn't necessarily have to be just sex. Well, it can I be don't... dating, it can be holding hands, it can be any of those things that one might call romantic. I'm asking you whether or not prior to November 1st of 2021, there was a romantic relationship with Mr. Wade. That's very simple. It's either a yes or a no. I don't consider my relationship with him to be romantic before that. I'm not a hand holder, so no. Okay, that's fine. Now, let's move beyond November 1st of 2020. Yes. 2021, excuse me. If I understand your testimony, there was no romantic relationship with Mr. Wade until early in 2022, whether it be January or February or March, early in 2022, correct? I would say sometime between February and April. Yes, sir. Okay. Now I'm asking you about that time period when it became romantic. Yes, okay? sir. Thank you. Okay. You didn't see the need, if I understand, to tell any of the people on the prosecution team when you had established a romantic relationship with Mr. Wade that the lead prosecutor, that is the, people, the man that was basically giving orders to others, was dating or having a romantic relationship with you, correct? I'm going to object to relevance at this point, Your Honor. Just sit down, relevance. It, just to, to, to prove 
or attempting to show that there is an issue on the credibility about the relationship. The failure to have informed anyone, anyone on her team that she was having a romantic relationship with the lead prosecutor, I suggest gives rise to that inference. That's the relevance. The inference that... The inference that that they were concealing this because it was not as it's been characterized to the court. And that it in fact, it started earlier than what they say. All right, overall, Mr. Seda. I just want to make sure that we're clear from at least 2020, me and Mr. Wade were friends, at least that time period. Okay, I'm not talking okay, about- so No, 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 I just, I want to be clear because my credibility is being evaluated here, right? We were friends, we hung out prior to November of 2021. In November of 2021, I hired him. I do not consider our relationship to have become romantic until early of 2022. Because I don't know a date and time, I'm saying sometime between February and April of 2022, and very early April of 2022, because I know that trip that I discussed with you was like the first week of 2022, that the relationship had become romantic. I hope that answered your question, but I can't have it where... You know, we're saying something differently. All right. So you've established the timeline, as you put it. The question originally was, uh, at the time, at that time, did you tell any other prosecutors uh, on the prosecution team? I never tell people at work who I'm dating. All right. Mr. Sado. Okay. Did you take any trips to D.C. with Mr. Wade? Never. Did you ever, did you take, okay, so do you have no, what I would call personal trips or business trips to D.C. with Mr. Wade? I never went to D.C. with Mr. Wade, personal, business, otherwise, never. Okay, so I've never okay. been in the District of Columbia with Mr. Wade or Maryland, Virginia, the DMV, as they call it. So as I understand it, just to be clear, that's any trips that you would have taken to see D.C. That was, would a pretty, not have, that was a pretty clear answer. Huh? That was a pretty clear answer. No. She just said no. Twice. So do you have a variation or something new to bring up? I'll ask it and we'll see. Did you take trips to D.C. that were non-business during the time period that this case or this matter was under investigation? I'm going to object as to relevance as it relates to the matter that we're here before your honor today. Well, again, the, the question already asked was, did you take personal or business trips? And she said, but I, but that was with personal Mr. Wade. Or business. That was with Mr. Wade. This I asked her alone whether she took. Okay. What's the relevance? And what would be the relevance of that? I, trying to understand whether or not we we have an ability to show a personal trip in which Mr. Wade is there at the same time. I understand her answer. Okay, I understand her answer, but we have documents, we have records that. Your Honor, I'm going to okay. the documents, the things that have. Happened. Well, this could be something that's maybe not part of the record yet, but as if he has a, I think there have been other things discussed in this case, and they have evidence that Mr. Wade may have been in D.C. at the same time. If you want to ask about that exact specific date, Mr. Sadon, you can do that. I would I, reference to the court that that was not asked of Mr. Wade, uh, anything about any trips to D.C. Sure. And so that's going to limit its uh, merit and impact and on credibility. So, Mr. Sadon, ask the question. So, so there, I understand your testimony is you never took a trip to D.C. with Mr. Wade. That's correct. Personal or business. That's correct. Were you ever in D.C. at the same time as Mr. Wade? I was not. On personal or business? No, me and Mr. Wade have not been to D.C. at the same time. However, uh, since Mr. Wade has been on this case, he's been to D.C. Since Mr. Wade has been on to this, this case, I've been to D.C. What has not happened is we have not been in the District of Columbia at the same time. Now, the only thing I'm not sure about with what you asked me is if I've been to DC personally, because I've got a lot of personal friends in that area, but I know that I um, have been to DC. Uh, I did an interview at Howard University. I went to DC for that. Seems like I've been to DC one other time. Oh, I went to DC for the Global Summit. Actually, yeah, those were two separate trips. My next question is based on her opening the door, and therefore I'll just ask it, and Your Honor can decide whether or not it's appropriate. When you went to D.C., did you go to the White House? Yeah, yeah. I did not go to the White House. No. Well, apparently well, I'm going to get the answer anyhow. There you have it. Next question. Okay. You indicated 
your best recollection was that your relationship with Mr. Wade, the romantic relationship, uh, ended, um, you left it at August of 2023. That sound right? That's the hard conversation. That's not the... Uh... We've covered this. Next question. And you characterized it as a tough conversation, correct? Yes. Okay. I'm not going to get into the conversation per we se. We should. Well, if he doesn't want to, we won't go there. So, Mr. Sado, next question. <laughs> you know, it's kind of hard to say no when you've got that opportunity. But all I'm going to say is, it was it pre-indictment in this case? So we know the timeline that the indictment was delivered. Okay. Well, but, actually, and, and, and so that so we're clear, the okay. physical relationship ended pre-indictment. And is that when you were talking about the tough conversation? But was... I, the, I'm not sure that the tough conversation didn't happen until after, but the physical relationship. So I'm sure if you ask Mr. Wade, because he's a male, he would say we ended June or July because physical contact ended then. Just in my mind, being a woman, it's over when you have that like hard conversation. That's, I just think women and men think differently. And I think the answer, Mr. Sado, to your question was she's not sure whether it was before or after the indictment. Well, I'm not. I'm not sure that that was her answer, but let's see if I can get specific. That is what I said. That's what I said. I'll let you. Next question, Mr. Sado. If you need to clarify, want to say one more? One. The romantic relationship ended before the indictment was returned. Yes or no? To a man, yes. Well, to a man, yes. To you, no. She's explained this, Mr. Sado. She's explained this. <laughs> And did the and the did the forthcoming indictment have anything to do with that, oh, or was it just a coincidence? Mister, let's go on and have the conversation. Now, I'm just asking you whether or not it was a coincidence. Had absolutely or... nothing to do with this. It's interesting that we're here about this money. Mister Wade is used to women that, uh, as he told me one time, the only thing a woman can do for him is make him a sandwich. We would have brutal arguments about the fact that I am your equal. I don't need anything from a man. A man is not a plan. A man is a companion. And so there was tension always in our relationship, which is why I was give him his money back. I don't need anybody to foot my bills. The only man who's ever foot my bills completely is my daddy. Is there anything else you would like to add to that? No. Sure. But I'm sure we'll talk about it further. No, we're not going to talk about it further. I, All right. No back and forth. Let's stay down. Next question. Uh, my next question is something that I would that has to do with the what I've characterized as the church speech. Let me just tell you what the question is, because I know that's not preserve something. it for the record. Huh? You can preserve the question for the record, but we'll, then we'll move on. That's correct. Thank you. When you gave what I've referred to as the Martin Luther King weekend church speech, you know what I'm referring to. A great honor of mine. That's a historic African-American church. Yes, I do. Okay. Did you have handwritten notes with you that you were reading from during the speech? And, and on second thought, Mr. Sadow, because you might have a number of questions about this, why don't we just bullet point what you would want to cover on this to preserve for the record, and then we'll move on to the next topic. Okay. Since I had laid out before that the forensic misconduct isn't a subject so do I, of the do I not hearing. get an answer for that? That's, That's right. Okay. Uh, did you read your speech? Well, no, Mr. Sado, for everything related to any forensic misconduct. Oh, you just want me to stay out of it now? We're just not, it's, we can do it in a bullet form if you just want to cover what you would have asked, but it's not in a question and answer format. Okay, so I should do that at this point or do it sure. when you're ready? We can do it right now so it's fresh right. on you. I'm going to ask her about did she prepare the speech? Did she have notes on the speech? Did she read the speech? Um, when did she do this? When did she write the speech? Who was she referring to when she was talking about um, others? Who was she referring to when she said they? Who she was referring to when she spoke in terms of their, that is. Their, I would their, love to answer those questions. Well, Ms. Willis, uh, you could certainly do that in some other format. But for today, that's uh, what we've decided we're not going to cover. Who was she talking about that was playing the race card and why she didn't tell the people at the church that she, was ha that she had had a personal slash romantic relationship with the, I'll do respect the way it was characterized, the black man that she was referring to and was the black man she refer 
referring to was that Mr. Wade. Okay. That's that area of inquiry. Noted for the record, Mr. Stadow. Next topic. Okay. I realize that you've testified that you have no records um, that with regard to cash payments. Yes. Correct? Mm hmm Would your bank records reflect that you withdrew cash from your bank accounts during the time period of 2020, 2021, 2022, or 2023? I'm not asking you, I'm just asking whether they would reflect that you withdrew cash from any of your bank accounts. Uh, so the exact amounts? No, that you, but, just but yeah, that of, course, you did. I, of course, I withdrew money throughout that time period, throughout my life. I've, I've withdrawn money from the bank. Yes, of course. Talking about cash from, that is that you go to a cash, bank right. or you go to an ATM cash. and you take cash out. Either that way, or you go to Publix and you overpay, or you go to another store and you overpay. So yes, both through that, yes, uh, of course they will reflect that at times. Okay, and so those records, if we had them, would show that, correct? That throughout the course of my life, I took no, no, out money. From, I, I was very specific. I said yes, during the course of that time period, I would have taken money out. Yes. So, do you have a problem with? Re I absolutely. With Yes. You, don't, you don't want the bank records to be made available I, for the court and the court alone. I'm going to object this to the relevance, and this has already been addressed earlier as it relates to other records. This is an improper line of question, questioning, and he's doing it for the purpose of harassment, to be perfectly frank. Uh, I'm just going to sustain it on relevance. Uh, Mr. Sadoff, that's something you want to follow up privately? Uh, you can do that. Okay. Uh, last area, briefly. Yes, sir. You had had contact with Mr. Wade in the t year 2020, correct? Ooh, um, I had some contact with Mr. Wade. Would you explain but, when you say some contact? Please tell us the con talking about 2020. I had some contact with Mr. Wade in 2020. Um, one of the reasons your allegations are so preposterous or Miss Merchants that you have joined is. Ma'am, no, no, I didn't no, no, no. ask this... you about the allegations. I asked you about your contact. That's all I ask you, okay? I appreciate that, that you want to say something, but I'm interested in, did you have contacts with Mr. Wade in 2020? And your answer so far has been yes, correct? Very limited contact because um, Mr. Wade had a form of cancer that makes your allegations somewhat ridiculous. And I do appreciate the characterization. I'm not going to emasculate a black man, but I'm, I'm just telling you. I'm that sorry, what? I'm not going to emasculate a black man. Did you understand that? All right. Well, I don't think we should discuss track. further. Mr. Seda, next question. Trying to, Your Honor. <clears throat> Would you tell us on the occasions in 2020 that you had contact with Mr. Wade? I'm sorry. I thought I had answered that. Yes. Yes, sir. There were times in 2020 I had contact, but 2020 was a year I was running for office. It was a year that he was going through some serious medical issues and I did not have much contact, but I certainly had contact with him in 2020. Did you it go out to eat with him? Maybe. Probably. Did you, did you visit him in any location, his office, or did he visit you in your office in 2020? I am sure he, uh, I'm sure, ooh, that's a very good question. I'm sure he came to 750 in 2020. 750 not, is? Was my office. Okay. Um, not often, but maybe once or twice. Uh, maybe I went to his office once or twice, but maybe once. And the purpose for going to his office would have been what? Maybe we would have went to Mellow Mushrooms for pizza, or uh, maybe he would have come for lunch. I'm sure we went by each other's office, though, but not often, not a lot. We, we both grinding, trying try, try to make but, a but living. When, I understand what you've said about the cancer, and I'm not going into that. But when you were going out with him to restaurants, or when he would come to your office, right, those were not sterile environments, were they? Oh, very sterile, because it was- The restaurants were sterile environments? A lot of times we wouldn't eat there. We would pick up something and go in, but they were. Do you, you're, I'm, li I'm listening to you. You pick it, up and take it to where? 
maybe eat at our office, but it did not happen much. That's what I'm trying to explain to you. And my office in 2020, nobody was coming in. I was stir crazy, so I would still go into my office. If you remember, when I started this, I said, I am not even sure if we came to each other's offices, but I am trying to be over cautious. So I think I can recall him at 750 a couple of times. Um, I actually think I can recall him at 750 once, but let's say twice. I have seen his office. So I remember all the awards in the lobby, but I'm not sure in 2020 I, I went. I'm not even sure I went in 2020 at all. I just want to tell you, yes, because I'm not sure. But I, I, have a, I have a distinct recollection of him at 750. I actually don't have a distinct recollection of me at his office in 2020. But maybe I went to his office in 2020. Maybe. Did you have ongoing phone conversations during 2020 with Mr. Wade? Oh, yeah, I talked to, yes, absolutely. Yes. Yes, no question about that. No question, I talked to him on the phone in 2020. <clears throat> uh, I understood, and this is, I, maybe I was confused. The Belize trip was for- His, his 50th birthday. His 50th birthday, and that was in- March. He, he turned 50 March 18th of 2023. If you look at the dates of the trip, I think we were there about six days. Um, we stayed at two different locations. Um, so and you paid for it? 100%. He said, not only, I mean, I paid for the hotel, I paid for the flights, I had a birthday luncheon for him, I paid for massages, I paid for everything. And would those payments be reflected on your credit card? I paid card? for the cash. You cabs. paid them in cash? Cabs, cabs. I was telling you all the different things I'm I paid. And for. I'm asking you whether or not those payments would be reflected on credit card bills of yours. So there was about $500 that I think is reflected on a debit card. I, what my recollection is I took about four in cash with me to that. 400 or 4000 4000 I But I remember I handed him 2500 and then the rest was just the money we spent. I probably gave three or four hundred dollars to uh, this guy who was a taxi driver. He would drive us every day around the two or three days we went, took him to eat like it was my it was my trip money. And you had just to be clear to end this up, the four thousand that you've just told. us. But I didn't give it all to him. Remember, I only gave the twenty five hundred to him. I, I didn't ask you that. I was going to ask you that four thousand is part of your my words cash hoard that you had collected over time. Cash what? Hoard. H-O-R-D-E. Well, I thought you said something different, sir. No, I'm afraid I wouldn't say that. Um, in any circumstances to you or in All court. right, back on track. So hoard, cash hoard. I, I would not classify it at, in that way, but I have money at my house. Yes, sir. Okay. And the money, when you had money at your house. My, when I, and look, I'm speaking too loosely. I had money wherever I was staying. So I was not referring to my house in 750. I'm saying I had money wherever I was laying my head. Yes, sir. I, that was my fault that I wasn't clear. So when you were at what we've said, the Yerti condo during the time period we've always discussed, that's where you would keep your cash. When I stayed there? Yes. Okay, that's all I have. Thank you. All right. I want to see if we can get through a few more defense counsel possible for breaking for today. Mr. Stockton. Madam District Attorney, I'm Alan Stocks, and I don't think we've had the pleasure of meeting. It's a pleasure to meet you, sir. Um, Madam DA, you described these various trips, and uh, Mr. Sadow asked you about going to Washington. Did you and Mr. Wade go to New York? I've gone to New York. Um, I've gone to New York twice um, since I've been District Attorney. <clears throat> I'm trying to think if it's two or three times. I went to do a domestic violence thing there for sure. And I was honored and I went to the Apollo there. Those are the only two trips that come to mind. I went. He was not with me. You also said that he was a world traveler and been on many of the continents. He's have been to six. Have you been on any of those continents with him? Um, Besides this one. Uh, where's Belize? What continent is that? I'm not being funny. I don't know. Let's say with the I've exception been to the of Belize with him, 
I've been to the Bahamas with him. I've been with Aruba with him. Don't embarrass me. I'm not sure what continents those are on. Whatever continents those are, that's where I've been. I'm sure if I gave it some thought, I would tell you. But whatever continents those are, that I've been to those locations, sir. But not Australia or any other continents? I don't even want to go to Australia. I do know he took a trip in December to Australia. I have no idea, you know. I don't know anything about that trip. When Mr. Wade began working with your office, yes, he had two other gentlemen that worked in his firm with him. Is that correct? Yes. He, uh, Terrence Bradley worked for him, and Chris Campbell worked not for him. They worked with each other. Did you understand what their partnership arrangement was? I, no. Did he ever make you aware of how fees were divided or anything? No. Now, since you have been district attorney, the two gentlemen that worked with Mr. Wade and his firm, they also had contracts with your office. Is that correct? I probably had two. Oh, I, don't. We already, well, I don't know if we've covered this in as Willis, but I still don't know what the relevance would be of her testifying but, to this. But I've had about 10 people. Oh, I'm sorry. Do you want let's, me to answer or no? Let's figure this out. Judge, respectfully, I, I think based on Mr. Wade's testimony, he had an interest in those contracts. Sure. And then, but how is that then imputed to Ms. Willis? I, I don't know if whether or not she knew she was giving him that benefit. That's what I was trying to explore. Okay. Uh, well, maybe we can start with that question. And then if she doesn't know about it, then the ins and outs of all the contracts wouldn't be quite as relevant. Just to lay a foundation for that, though, I, Let's see where it takes I us. need to. Go ahead. The, the two gentlemen that were in Mr. Wade's office, did they have what I think has been referred to as a taint contract? So let me be clear, and I'm, I may get the names wrong. When I first became DA, this, the office was not properly staffed. And so I did, I'm surprised any lawyer would take it, but I did a contract for like $60 an hour to help us out with first appearance. That lasted a few months, okay? So I can't remember if Bradley or Campbell had that. I'm sure we can have records and I can tell you which one, but I just can't remember now. Um, I liked their experience. One had been... Bradley had been a probation officer and a defense attorney. Uh, Campbell had been a police officer and a um, defense attorney. There's a reason I'm telling you this. Then um, that, that contract, like I said, it didn't last long. It was just I was aggressively hiring, 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 hiring. As soon as I got where I felt like I had first appearance, enough lawyers for that, I let them go. Then we had what's called a filter contract, but it was not filter for this particular case. I do have a lawyer um, who does the filter for this election interference case. When we're talking about filter the contract they had that neither one of them has any longer, um, I now have another lawyer that does that for me. It was only for police brutality cases. It's for what I call the, um, so when I first got to be the DA, I had um, the whole unit was called anti-corruption. It dealt with both elections and police brutality cases. I actually took a trip to Houston and visited the district attorney in Houston. They divided their work up and I thought the way she was doing it was better than my, me. And so I, I made a civil rights unit. And so they did what we would classify as civil rights cases. Those are specifically the police brutality cases. <laughs> when I first took over, I was told Paul had not filtered five cases. That was a joke. It ended up being the 101 cases. They weren't filtered, which is why I hired two of them. Eventually, we got it down enough that it was one of them. Um, and then um, now I still have one lawyer that does it. But now I've been able to cut those cases down to like 30 can you tell me the and help me understand what the purpose of the filter is? Yes, sir. So what a filter is, is police officers make statements in the line of duty, and you are not allowed as the prosecutor to know what those statements are if they're done in the furtherance of their employment. And in fact, if you know what those statements are, you're basically disqualified from the case. You can't have it anymore. So what our policy is, I think I pay them like a $50 flat fee. They pick the case up directly from the GBI because that's where those cases go to. And then what they are to do is to re go through the entire file. So um, the body cam, the uh, which is important because sometimes they'll make a statement to their supervisor on body cam in the police reports where they write things 
things. The, if It would be easy if it was just some statement of the police officer. But what you find out is these statements are embedded in it. And so what your filter lawyer does is they go through it. They either redact it out electronically or they cross it out. And then once it is crossed out, then they provide it to my team, and then we're able to look at it. Um, that was not being done appropriately when I became district attorney. I thought that it had only been, so Mr. Howard had some Chinese wall thing that I didn't think worked at all, uh, where allegedly those cases were properly redacted. That ended up being a joke. Um, and so the five cases really turned into, I'm not going to say all 101, but a vast majority. That is the work that Mr. Bradley and Mr. Campbell did for me. They did a really good job. All of those cases that we originally came with, they're done. Those cases are, they're not just done for Mr. Bradley and Mr. Campbell. They're done through my office. But obviously, life is not stagnant. There have been new police cases. Um, I do have a lawyer that is doing that work now. That doesn't work for me. That's same kind of deal. I have another lawyer that does filtering for this case, completely separate. So in the same private office, you had a filter contract then you had somebody else having handling first appearances and so forth and then you had a special prosecutor is that correct i'm i'm just not ultimately the answer to your question is yes but i'm not sure that they did it at the same time the first appearance contract was either 60 or 90 dollars i don't know really how i convinced them to be able to take that but i think because it was for such a short amount of time and then i think i pay my filter lawyers, which I still don't know how I get away with, about 150 an hour. And I want you to understand, the AG pays special prosecutors $1,000 an hour. So um, I'm a tough negotiator. Paul was paying people up to $375 an hour. Um, I won't pay anyone more than $250 is my max. I have a lot of lawyers that, a lot for what I have, that work at $250, and I cap them every month. You can't go past a certain amount of hours. Would you agree that if if Mr. Wade and the two other gentlemen that were in his firm were splitting fees in equal thirds, would you agree that he would benefit from the tank contract and also from the other first appearance contract? I, I would agree he would make money. Yeah, so to make money is a benefit. Judge, that's all I got. Mr. Durham, if you're still with us on Zoom. No questions, Your Honor. Mr. McDougald. I have a couple, Your Honor, but it's a little awkward from back here. Do you want uh, to? Uh, yeah, why don't you go ahead and make your way up. Good afternoon, Ms. Wills. How are you doing? I'm very well. How are you, Mr. McDougal? I think this is our first in-person meeting, correct? Second. Second. Well, I apologize for not remembering you more clear. That's quite all right. Um, I'm referring now to exhibit number 21. Yes, sir. Which was your financial disclosure form for 2022. Yes, sir. <clears throat> and it has a question which requires you to disclose any gifts or favors from a single prohibited source in the aggregate amount of $100 or more. Do you see that? I don't, but I believe you. It would be on page two in the middle, paragraph number three. Yes. And what is your understanding of a prohibited source for purposes of this form? I believe there's some classification of somebody you like don't have a personal relationship with that gives you a hundred dollars. If, All right, if, if you somebody look bought under, under there sorry. at subparagraph two, Romanet two, it defines it as someone that you know or should know is seeking to do or is doing business with the county, correct? Yes, but I, yes, let me, yes. That includes Mr. Wade as of the date you filled out this form, correct? Yes, but he never gave me a gift of $100 or more. Um, the only thing that I would say maybe went over that, but I don't think it ever did, 
is if we went to dinner and my meal was $100, but I don't think I've ever eaten $100 worth of food at a restaurant because I, I would not pay him back if we went to lunch or went to dinner. Um, but trips, I paid him back for. You know, I never thought about the money until y'all brought it up. And I would be less than honest. It says I was giving him the money back because I was the district attorney. Um, I didn't take gifts from him. Um, for a lot of personal reasons. Anyway, I did not take gifts from him. And so your reason for not disclosing any gifts from Mr. Wade on exhibit number 21 is that the aggregate amount on a net basis was less than $100 in the year 2022. Is that correct? I did not accept a gift of him of more than $100 in 2022. The one exception to that, if you, because I, I want us to be clear, is we probably went out to eat multiple times in the year. If you're considering eating a meal, you know, because we went out multiple times, that probably went to the level of more than $100. But if, if we're doing tit for tat like that, I probably paid for as many meals as he paid for. And so I did not receive any gifts from him. The question on the form. I understand the question. The aggregate in excess of one hundred dollars, and your testimony is that you did Mr. not McDougall. receive in the aggregate more than one hundred dollars. All right, Mr. McDougal, you can sit down now. I don't believe she answered that question, Your Honor. She answered as to specific individual gifts. And you're not listening to my answer either, so we're done. Very well. Okay, Mr. Rice. Miss uh, Mr. Gillen. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, sir. Uh, a few questions here. Uh, I want to, you, you saw the book here, uh, Find Me the Votes. That, that was shown to you, correct? Yes, sir. Your Honor, I would like to just, uh, tender this as an exhibit, uh, number 22. Is that, your, is that your copy? It is. All right. What exhibit is that going to be? 22. All right. I'm making the con the, uh, the is that evidentiary contribution here um, to this. Now, well, I guess are you, you're tendering it. Is it with um, position of the state? Then object to the relevance at this point as to if he hasn't. There's no relevance at this point. Uh, Mr. Gillen, are you are using this to confront Could her he? with prior statements? Yes, Your Honor, okay. and statements that she made concerning her concerning her financial situation and laying the foundation for that, and that she gave these interviews uh, to the authors. And so this would uh, document that and ask her, uh, get this in the record, ask her questions about it. Uh, well, we could mark it for impeachment purposes. I'm a little wary of entering an entire 300 page book because I don't know exactly what every single line, if it would pass hearsay or relevance or et cetera, et cetera. But I don't think it needs to be admitted as a, an actual evidence for the record for you to do what you need to do with it. So, Well, uh, Your Honor, I, I understand. I, I just yeah. would. It's, uh, it's marked again, as exhibit 22 and I'll let you, we'll move from there. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Now, you were asked a little bit about this book before, correct? I think Mrs. Mrs. Merchant, Ms. Merchant did. asked me some questions, yes. And, and gave about, what, about six interviews to the authors of this book in a sit-down? No, sir. You didn't? Uh, and no. So, was she, it, she answered how many interviews she gave, in her opinion. How many, do, in your opinion, do you believe you gave, and how long did they last? Two to three, maybe 20, 30 minutes. So your testimony is that most you think that you gave maybe an hour to an hour and a half to interview to the authors of this book? Oh, you mean in total? In total, yeah. Maybe, yeah. Anywhere between definitely not more than two-ish hours. Okay. But you also were telling when, when they were the, the title of the book, of course, is a hard-charging Georgia prosecutor, a rogue president and the plot to steal American election. You, yeah, you, you I had Why is the title of the book relevant, sir? And I no, had no. And then I'm going to ask her the, whether or not that was the the theme that they gave her when they talked with her. What the thing gave her? What do, you, what do you mean by that? Well, because they were they were sat down and they told her why they were there to interview her. And why, and why does that matter? Well, I think it matters because it shows, but the, they they want her to give her version of what 
uh, her life story. This is a life, almost sure. a life story of her. So that's why it's relevant. But if, if the court thinks it's not, then. No, no, it's it, it could be relevant to your issue of the forensic misconduct that has been alleged and maybe some of the, the motives at play when it comes to forensic misconduct. But I'm not seeing, again, what we're here for today was the relationship and or any financial elements of it. Correct. Well, I think it clearly relevant to the uh, forensic misconduct, also relevant to the personal interest in terms of the finances. Let me. If I didn't make I 10 cents off that book. Pardon me? I didn't make 10 cents off that book. I didn't, I didn't ask whether you made any money. Okay, I just uh, didn't ask whether you made any money. Do you have any other statements that she hadn't already been confronted with by Ms. Merchant? Well, other than I want to, to, to focus on when you were telling them about your financial straits and you were living kind of month to month, uh, that is what your financial status was back in 2018 right. after your election. Mr. Gallen, we, we covered that at length. And I'm, you just, you're at the end of the line. I'm sorry about that, but we've got to find new ground. Well, uh, you know, and let, let me move on to, to, to my point here. So the point is that what you're telling us is that uh, you were uh, in financial straits, but really that your testimony today is you had a cash hoard of maybe up to $10,000 in cash where you laid your head at night so that you would dip out and there would be no record of it, correct? That's not what I'm telling you, sir. That's well, not. That's not at all what I'm telling you. What I'm telling you is that throughout the course of my life, I have always kept cash in my house. That cash has ranged from times, you know, my father would probably be ashamed of this because he would say it should be more. But that time, that cash at times has ranged from $500 to maybe $9,000. And he, he would be like, that is not what I told you to do. Um, I've always had that amount of money. What I've told you is that when I travel, you do better negotiating when you travel. If you have cash, you can, you go to get the cab. They say, oh, we're going to charge you 300 for the day. Well, I got American cash. Will you take it for 150? And so it's my practice to take money when I travel. We're not talking about a whole lot of money. We're going to the Bahamas. 1,500 in cash is in my pocket or at the most 2,500. Belize was actually probably the most money I've ever taken. And it was taken because it was a big deal. My 50th birthday sucked. His 50th birthday, it sucked. It was terrible. No. Your Honor, and so I'm get back to, to some questions here. I'm, about I'm trying to answer it. I think it would help if we so, so get, let's, get a let's, question So let's here. move to the specific yes or no here. Have you told us today that you would keep uh, a cash hoard in your residence up to about $9,000? Yes or no? And, and throughout the course of my uh, adult life. And so let's even be more specific than that. Probably from the time. Your Honor, I'm only asking for yes or no rather than. Sure. But, but we, and we have already covered this. So I know you're laying the foundation, through, but it's the, already, the, already been laid. So uh, yes. uh, the, the filibuster is here. I'm trying to move through the filibuster. Yeah, but, but we're not talking about a lot. Of, and so it's, it could be 2000. It could be 1500. It could be 7500. It just depends on how what you're doing at that time. What I'm telling you is when I traveled, I took cash. I find that when you travel, especially to foreign countries, the American dollar does well, and it's good to have cash. You can negotiate with the taxi driver, with the jet skis, with the, uh, and it's not a lot of money we're talking about. Your Honor, okay, we, understood, we Ms. To, Willis. We let's to get to off the let's get to a and, question, Mr. Gill. Uh, and so you have cash in your house, mm -hmm. but you had a lien, uh, a, a tax lien on your property. Is that right? I don't believe I had a tax lien on my property. You have a tax lien on your property. You got to you got to talk up louder, Mr. Hunt. Okay, we we already covered that, Mr. Gillen. I need new ground I'm here. I'm asking the question. Of, uh, I'm trying to figure out how someone can have uh, have a tax lien. Then ask that question. But not use the money that they allegedly said they have. Well, I think Ms. Merchant asked that exact same question. She said she didn't use the money to pay her tax lien. So what's your question? That's new. So so I, I was going to build on that to say no more uh, building. It's already built. All right. It's the same way you pay a bill. So just, just put the top on it if you need to, okay? It's the same way you owe a bill and go shopping. Well, uh, now, you know, have you ever used, did you say earlier the used Cash App? I, when I would pay Robin Bryant, I used Cash App. What is Cash App for the record? I don't need to know that for the record. Let's keep going. Well, so uh, if you're paying Robin with Cash App, why aren't you paying, uh, allegedly paying Mr. It's uh, not alleged here. Why aren't you paying allegedly Mr. Wade with Cash App? I don't think Mr. Wade does Cash App. Did you ask him? 
I think he's told me he doesn't do Cash App. Okay, so that's the reason why you didn't use Cash App. He's sitting next to me. I hand him the money. Because there would be a record in Cash App of your making payments, correct? Yes, right. but I didn't think that I was making a record in a personal relationship. Because when you're filing your, and, and I know that I'm going to you know, move into this uh, financial statement here. You were asked uh, just a second ago about your non-disclosure form, or your, excuse me, your disclosure form of a, an Exhibit 21, where um, we agree that Mr. Wade is a prohibited source, correct? I don't, I, what I agree to is I don't believe he's giving me gifts. You, you would like to classify these trips as gifts, but I've always paid my fair share on these trips, so I did not look at them as gifts. I don't think that what this is disclosing, and they can tell me if they mean something different, I don't think it means that if you go to dinner with somebody over the course of a year and it gets to 100, you're supposed to report it. If my understanding of that is wrong, um, I've probably been to lunches with a couple of people that over the course of a year they paid, I paid. Let, let me, uh, prohibited source means... We already went over this, Mr. Gillen. Mr. McDougall. Well, you, you're on. I have to... I have to uh, lay the foundation here before I can follow up with my uh, next question. I, I don't. I don't know why you can't. You have to. Well, it's okay. all the questions uh, have been made. Then your two, uh, tw uh, 2022 disclosure form did not list any of the thousands and thousands of dollars that Mr. Wade li uh, paid for on trips that you were on. Yeah, Isn't that correct? That. That's because Mr. Wade was paid that money back, or he was paid uh, due to the fact that I bought the plane ticket or I paid for the hotel. There, there was never money that he gave me. That, that wasn't the nature of our relationship. You know, there's so many men, and Mr. Wade is one of them, where the nature of the relationship is they're just paying a woman. The nature of our relationship is companionship and friendship. Despite the way people would like to paint certain women, it's just not true. Final question. And not a single solitary documentary piece of evidence showing that you have withdrawn the cash to pay. Oh, all right. Thank Listen you, Mr. Gillen. That's not accurate. Thank you. Okay. Mr. McCulloch, on behalf of Mr. Floyd. All right. And uh, Mr. Cromwell, on behalf of Ms. Latham. Great thing about coming last is what your question. I had one question, Ms. Wills. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. In the time period between February of 2021 and January of 2022, while you were staying at the Yurdy condo, did your father ever come and visit you during that time period at the Yurdy condo? He did not. That's all I have. Thank you, Your Honor. All right. Uh, Ms. Cross, I would imagine you have a number of topics to cover with Ms. Willis that'll take more than 10 to 15 minutes. I do. Okay then I think we've reached a stopping point for today. And so, uh, Ms. Willis, I'd ask if you can step down now. And I'd uh, also remind you that uh, you're not to discuss your testimony or uh, that of any other witness until tomorrow morning. If you could be back here, and we'll begin again at 9 a.m. 9 a.m.? Uh, we'll do 9 a.m. this time tomorrow. Before we uh, recess for today, I want to check in on logistics. And uh, I'll ask Ms. Merchant. Um, once the testimony of Ms. Willis has concluded, uh, how many other witnesses do you anticipate calling? Um, two, I, um, and then we subpoenaed Delta records, but, um, state objected. So we can, we can handle that now. You, Ms. Willis, you can step, you can step down. You're done for today. You want me to leave the courtroom? Uh, or you can sit at the council table. We don't, we don't need you in the witness box. Uh, all right, so two witnesses and then querying other defense counsel. Um, I know, uh, Mr. Gillen, there was a potential witness that was objected to by the states, so there's another one there, and we can talk about that. Were there any other witnesses anticipated from any defense counsel? All right, seeing no show of hands, and then Ms. Cross, uh, any, uh, any witnesses on your behalf? I expect so, Your Honor, and I expect that to take um, probably four to five hours. Okay, and how many witnesses would you imagine? Without committing myself to a final number, my best guess at this point would be three to four. Okay. All right. 
Uh, know who, I mean, I, I gave them our witnesses. I, I know we're supposed to give witnesses for an evidentiary hearing. I'm guessing that one is John Floyd, but um, I don't know. Even. Yeah. Like, All right. <laughs> no, I understand, uh, Ms. Merchant. Uh, however, I don't think uh, at this point there's any statutory requirement. We have the standing order that, uh, for expert um, witnesses, and if state uh, doesn't want to extend that courtesy, then I think you're stuck with it. All right. I'm certainly happy to represent that Mr. Floyd will be a witness, um, that the other witnesses will be impeaching of Ms. Yerty. Okay. All right. Let's take up these uh, last couple issues here before we break then. Uh, the issue of the Delta Airlines records. Um, Miss, the motion to quash was filed by the state on behalf yeah. of Miss Willis, I believe. I, I did file a motion, Your Honor. Oh, excuse me. But my representation was that I just got notice of them. I think it was yesterday. Okay. Um, and so now that I've had the review of them, I object to the general fishing expeditions. Um, I've introduced a, a new record today that was from Delta. To my knowledge, that's there's going to be no further new production in the Delta records. I don't want to burden the court with anything. If the court wants to take a look at it and see if there's anything um, different than that, I, I don't have an objection. I just I I don't like the idea that we're just looking for anything. I don't want to um, put an obligation on the court, but I'm happy to agree to it in camera if that's uh, court's interest. And so, Ms. Merchant, I take it. All right, so Ms. Merchant, I take it the purpose of this subpoena. I'm gonna need you to step out. Step out, man. Judge, <clears throat> so the purpose is to show travel records. Right. Is it uh, is it because you suspect there are other travel records, or just you think there might be something else in there? It's well, one is to um, prove some of the travel records that they traveled together. And so we have no problem, like I told the state, putting them in camera. I don't need them to be publicly disclosed. I mean, what I'm saying is, is if, uh, we've we've heard about the the trips today in detail. Uh, is there anything else that's in these records that you're saying is going to prove some additional trip, or is it just further corroborating what really is kind of uncontested at this point? Um, there may be some additional trips. But you don't know of any specifically. You no, just I think there might be any. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, then let's uh, continue with that. Then, if you want to send them. Uh, or uh, instruct Delta to send them to us in chambers. We'll take a look. And um, and I think essentially if there's, you can tell us, Ms. Merchant, what you think we should be looking for and what you think is relevant, and we'll do that. Okay. All right. And then when it comes to Mr. Uh, Schaefer's witness, there was an issue uh, raised about this kind of being a summary versus an expert witness. And so... I reviewed the motions, and, and I think there was the um, essentially kind of the summary document that, that Mr. Gillen's witness would, uh, the, the sole purpose of this witness to introduce. Was there something about, I don't know whether it was from Mr. Body or Ms. Cross, was there something about this attachment substantively that you think is inaccurate, or is it just, is it literally just a summary document? I can't tell because the documents to support it were on a thumb drive, and there's tens of thousands of those documents, and so I just, I, I don't know. Um, whether that is accurate or not, I can point to some characterizations on it that I would quibble with. Sure. Um, I think the the result is wrong, but I just can't agree to include the documents or someone testifying from the documents that I, I just can't I can't verify. It may well be that there isn't anything ultimately, but I I can't represent that and I can't agree. Oops. The document itself isn't authored um, or identified as being authored by any particular person. Okay, give me a second while I pull it back up. So what I was provided uh, by Mr. Gillen is a three-page document that starts with a timeline, essentially dates, events, and sources, and it ends with an Excel sheet with some more figures. And... Um, Mr. Gillen, what do you what do you have uh, to say on this? Well, we would tend to call Bill Solinsky as a summary witness, not expert, not giving expert testimony. Uh, and what we've done is that we have, uh, and we got the, the the bulk of sort of what was in the download we got last week as in the shape. Of the so what 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 we have here is the source information over here. If we look at that, Your Honor, 
that's largely, well, all of this information essentially is material that is material of, of Mr. Wade. This isn't something that's some uh, a different uh, company or bank account. And largely what it is, is a, a situation where it, it, is it, it now stands, most of these uh, source documents are already in evidence. And so now whether it's 1006 or frankly, a demonstrative aid under 611. Well, that, that's what I was about to say. Why, why couldn't this just be used as a demonstrative? What, what would the state's objection be then if Mr. Gillen was just to say in closing, hey, I put all these records together and here's my demonstrative? I, I don't think I have an objection to that. I might, again, I might quibble with some characterization in some language. Sure. Um, but to call it a, a summary and to represent that the records is an accurate reflection of the records, I just can't agree to because there are so many records they were disclosed on Wednesday and I, I just uh -huh. don't know. Well, except, Your Honor, if you look at the source... I mean, literally, we're describing things that were introduced today. Uh, they've seen all this. And the documents that, that we have sourced really came from Mr. Wade uh, in his divorce case. So it's not like they're surprised. So we would ask that the, sure. that the, the uh, witness be allowed to testify and just put it in the record, put these the summary charts in the record and have them admitted. And that way, off we go. Uh, it was, this isn't a situation where we have a jury and, you know, they're, they're, they're overwhelmed with whether or not there is some kind of factual uh, misunderstanding here. They could look through this probably at lunch and, and determine whether the source is accurate or not. The, the second sheet, Fulton County payments, they, this came from them. So to say that they can't determine or decipher whether the documents they gave to us is, is accurate, uh, doesn't seem to, to carry the water. This isn't a situation where we have tens of thousands of new and different documents from different corporations and different banks, and then suddenly we've put it on them. We've done our best. We got these things last week. I've gone through them all, and we've called it down to what we think is a very uh, concise uh, summary chart for the court consideration. All right. So, um... Ms. Cross, what I would ask is, it sounds like most of the morning is likely going to be taken up with the remainder of Ms. Willis's testimony, as well as any additional um, witnesses from Ms. Merchant. And so perhaps we can use that time between then and then the lunch break to take a look and see if these sources are inaccurately cited. I mean, the, the characterization isn't something that's going to be determinative. I don't think I'm bound by whatever he describes as the event. But if this is just, I really don't really see much of a substantive distinction between a demonstrative and a witness. But if he wants to put it up through a witness, uh, and it's not something that you need to rebut with expert testimony of some kind, then I, I really don't see this as being much ado about nothing. Right. I'm sure you yeah. understand why I couldn't agree. Sure. Um, no, that's fine. Without having gone um, to but I don't know if it's something that we need to bar outright until you've had a chance to look at it, if you see some incredible inaccuracy in it or something like that. Uh, all right, anything else from the state? No, you're on. Anything else from Defense Counsel, Mr. Let me go in order, Mr. Sadow. One quick question. I understand the court and the <clears throat> point where I was gonna go. Could we need to put into the record the speech itself in the transcript or is it for taking notice of what we're already filed? Uh, I think it's extensively quoted in all of the pleadings. If, if you feel that's something that we need to have officially recognized, I, I think certainly we can do that. I don't know if the, uh, if the state has a particular version or a pleading that they want to double check for accuracy, uh, or it can just be something that's as assumed as a matter of law as pleaded by defense counsel, and then we can make a ruling on it from there. But There's certainly no certified transcript that, that I'm aware of. If they want to give me the version that they believe to be accurate, then I'll certainly take a look at it. Okay. I have a USB that we, um, I probably will download it onto a USB drive if you take it home. All right. And that's also not something I think we need to have done by tomorrow. I'm, I'm not going to be ruling on, yeah, I mean, I'm not, I'm not ruling on any of this tomorrow. I mean, this is something that's going to be taken under advisement on all aspects. Uh, so the forensic issue we can bring up and we may need to bring everyone back if everyone needs an extensive not even extensive but if everyone just wants to be heard an argument in some way we're probably not gonna have time for that tomorrow either um so my goal my hope is perhaps we can just close the evidence tomorrow and we'll take it from there we're going to want to have argument and i've already uh requested depending on how busy the court reporter is between now. yeah the answer is they're all busy and we don't have enough of them so <laughs> good luck I don't know. Uh, this court reporter was giving me a potential of, of a reasonable time period but 
Is that what you just turned over to Ms. Croft? Does that also have a transcript? No. Or is it just a video? It's a video. The USB video. I, I believe that's all it is. The, um, Again, I think that's something I'll just wait for direction from the parties on. I don't think that's something we've got enough to deal with tomorrow. And I think we can handle that as it comes once we've had a chance to take a look. Okay. Um, no uh, arguments on the motion. I, I doubt we're going to reach it. If the state has four to five hours of witnesses and that's fine. yeah, right. yeah, I don't, I don't think that's going to be needed. Okay. Mr. McDougall. It's a very short housekeeping matter. Uh, you ruled on Monday. You didn't want to hear any evidence about the county ordinances. And sure. So the uh, statute 24-2-221 requires that they be put into evidence as opposed to being cited as law. So before the defense evidence closes, I would like to tender certified copies of those. I don't need a witness sure. for that. And then I've got one other certified copy that I want to tender. I don't need a witness for that. So that would just be a little mechanical thing right before the defense evidence closes, Your Honor. Understood. Any thoughts from the state on that? No. Okay. As the representation, if, if that's what the exhibits are, then I'd consider it a proffer more than evidentiary, but um, that's fine. <clears throat> okay. I think we want to uh, upset the court's expectations tomorrow. When I get. Okay. Well, Mr. McDougall, my expectation tomorrow will be that when I talk, I get to take prominence, right? False. Thank you, sir. Okay. Anything else? State, Your Honor. All right. We'll be in recess nine o'clock tomorrow. Thank you all.